basically, if mods can just keep control of the trolls, racists, transphobia, misogyny, like anything that's obviously here to be a problem, just ban them, block them. Okay, like, I don't want to deal with it today. And I already know because this is like a very like conspiracy theory, misogynistic bubble that they have a potentiality for coming into stream. Now, hopefully they're still asleep because it's very early in the States. So hopefully they're still napping in their mommy's basements. But we're going to go ahead and talk about this YouTuber who made a hit piece about me. Guys, I'm officially a big enough content creator that people get views from talking about me. <laughs> now, we're going to be a little extra sarcastic today because it's really hard not to be. Okay, we might be a little extra sarcastic today, but I'm not gonna lie, I have never ugly laughed so loud than watching some people react to this content because it's so funny. And I'm not gonna play, I've appreciated the Discord having some great dialogue about it. But I love this because it's such an opportunity to talk about bubbles and perception. And also misogyny and conspiracy theorists. And don't worry, girls, I have the receipts. Okay, I have timestamps. I have receipts. I have everything. Okay, so don't you worry. Mm hmm. We go get into this girl. Oh my gosh. Who girl? Doctor says, as history shows, trying to cancel Britney and the levels never works. It's just more philosophy for us. It's literally just more bubble popping. And I am so excited to do it with you today. Now, if you, my audience, okay, genuinely have any questions, obviously just ask. We'll go over it, girlies. That's what I'm here for, okay? If you're on the Discord, I'm looking at chat and I see it, okay? <laughs> Discord says not Brittany pulling a JP and doing an early stream to avoid the trolls. You know, girl, whatever it takes, okay? Ingrid in chat says nude earrings on lock. Guys, I thought about these earrings. I wanted to wear some woman earrings, okay? So it's like the shape of a woman's body. This, now, watch out. The conspiracy theories might be coming in. But these earrings were made by Inspired by Mia. I follow her on Instagram, but she is a part of our community. And she reached out to me and said, I love your videos. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Did I buy earrings from another woman with a business and supported her with monetary value by buying her earrings? But she was in my community. Guys, I literally shout out to Mia. She's inspired by Mia. Follow her on Instagram. She makes amazing earrings. And I'm having the biggest epiphany of my life that I'm realizing we are women, guys, men who are here in this audience, we love you too, okay? We love you too. But women support each other. And I'm realizing like they might not know what it's like to support a woman, but let me tell you, as somebody who has bought plenty of Mia's earrings, inspired by Mia, plenty of her earrings, okay? I'm happy to have her in the community, but more, I'm happy to support her in her business. So let's talk about the bubble pop we're about to have right now, okay? It's a lot. And Kayla, I see you commenting saying this guy had previously DM'd you and after you called him out, he conveniently had all kinds of reasons to dismiss me and you he even like DM'd people to try to get dirt on me. I love that. How professional, instead of coming to the source, reaching out to people to see if they can find angry people to talk about me. But don't worry, I have the receipts. Okay, let's go ahead and get started because this is too good and it's gonna take me a while to get through all of these receipts. And I think it's about time. Now, I've already blocked him. This man had the audacity to make a video about me and then claim that he wasn't trying to say any of the things he blatantly said in his video. The thumbnail he made, the the the, the way he like framed the whole video and he has the audacity now to like walk it back and be like, I talked to Brittany if she wants help navigating her brand. Uh, uh, stay out my DMs, freak. Stay out my DMs. I do not consent. Now, have you seen... This <laughs> channel on your on your timeline. Have you seen this thumbnail of me? Super edited. Those are not even my hands or my fingernails, but thank you for like, like making me look so good. It says the Britney Simon handbook, how to exploit your fans. It's basically a whole video about how I'm like a cult leader, which you guys, if you do not know Britney lore, if you are new to my audience, this is fantastic Britney lore. Let me tell you. Okay, a few years ago, I had a run-in with a content creator named Mr. Girl. This lore goes so deep, okay? Mr. Girl, now banned on YouTube, as he should be, okay, quite controversial, accused three specific people of being cult-like, adjacent, or inappropriate with their work. Me, Destiny, and Dr. K. He wrote a manifesto on Destiny in which I supported and backed Destiny during that process because it's within my values and I think Mr. Girl was wrong about him. 
right? He is the one who filed the medical board complaint against Dr. K that after two years of an investigation just basically got thrown out. Okay, so Dr. K at most needs to brand a little bit better. Okay, no one has ever accused me of doing this cult thing until doctor, until Mr. Girl. So Mr. Girl accused Destiny of being like uh, super inappropriate and taking advantage of other streamers. Not true. Manifesto was stupid, dumb. Dr. K, he was wrong. Medical board decided, er, wrong, Mr. Girl. And me, little old me. Now, when I had a run in with Mr. Girl, I misread him, made a huge mistake, completely re- misread my interaction with him. I thought he was like sex positive and open-minded because he did like adult content only to find out he was so sex negative that he like hated himself so much that he had to make this content versus I am a sex positive sex worker, sex positive adult content creator, YouTuber, and woman in general or gender fluid, pansexual, queer person, however you want to identify me, right? Okay. It gets good. So check out. Okay. So see how this guy, we're going to call him Kilo because I I don't know what, you know, we could call him Pound. Oh, my dad jokes are so good today. Okay. So this is Kilo, right? Kilo isn't just a random person. (gasps) Whose community do you think Kilo is a part of? (gasps) This is Twitter. His pinned comment on his Twitter is how Brittany Simon built an exploitative ecosystem. Freddie, whoever that is, says, very good video, video, Kilo. As per usual, Mr. Girl was correct. And Kilo goes, as per fucking usual. (laughs) So I've got a Mr. Girl loser fan who built a conspiracy theory around me because his daddy, Mr. Girl, his cult leader, is like, Brittany Simon is a cult leader. Mr. Girl got banned from me ages ago. And when he was digging up dirt on Destiny for his manifesto, he violated my consent and reached out to me and was like, Brittany, I'd like to talk to you about Steven. And I said, absolutely fucking Luli not. And even Destiny at the time appreciated that because regardless of me and Destiny having beef, he's obviously not a cult leader and neither am I and neither is Dr. K. So Mr. Girl goes around and creates a little cult and then accuses everybody else of having a cult. And he gets kicked off YouTube. He's kicked off YouTube, banned. Okay, okay, thank you. So here we are, Kilo, the giant, Mr. Girl bottom submissive, literally saying Mr. Girl was right as pure usual. So now we can kind of like build a a narrative around why he's doing what he's doing, right? Okay, lame, now. He made 9,000 views off me in the last three days. Congratulations. Very proud of you, honestly. But these people, okay, are like conspiracy theory misogynists. They're sex negative. They think like sex workers don't deserve love. They think all these women are manipulative. They have like all of these negative connotations. They make really big assertions about people. And then can't, and then they have to walk it back, which is why I'm very, very, very specific with my work and using certain words, because again, like, I know you want to protect people, but you got to be careful just calling people cult leaders. That's crazy. Or being like, this person is like a groomer. Like you've got to, yes, we want to save people, but also be cautious with who you accuse of things. Okay. So I have, oh my God, I have timestamps. I have notes. I have so much we're about to go through and I am so sorry in advance, okay? I'm so sorry in advance for all of the people who are about to get their spoons wiped out by how ridiculous this bubble is. So just like hold on to your butts because it's gonna be a lot. It it is gonna be a lot. And I just wanna like tell you to take a breath if you need to because I have been going over information all weekend. I've been trying to figure out like, where did this person come from? Who is he? Why is he making content about me? Like, why is he doing this? Well, okay, he's a Mr. Girl person, got it. Now, there's a lot of lore you're about to learn about me. And I'll try to obviously respect people's privacy. I certainly don't wanna out anybody unnecessarily. And I'll be very respectful to the people that happen to be mentioned in his video, of course, because like everyone's on a journey and everyone has their moments of vulnerability. So let's watch his video. And as we watch it, I'll show you the receipts and how he took me out of context. I'll show you how he just makes stuff up. And that's the irony is like, (laughs) 
they made so much up about me, like blatant lies that are so like so provable as wrong. And he claims he did research like, girl, if this is research, like, ma'am. OK, so let's watch this video. Let me make sure the audio is OK. Let's read Britney's response. Let's read Britney's response. OK, ready? Let's see. <sighs> OK, let me know if his audio is like too low, too high, whatever. Get ready. This is it's a lot. It's a lot. Also, shout out to Tom Fullery and other YouTubers who covered this and saw how funny it was because I needed the laughs. And I just so appreciate that because, girl, the way I was loud is screaming. The accusations that have been thrown my way are so funny. I'm dying. So, OK, let's start. But literally, the idea that I would be running a cult is like the funniest thing. So now the meme on my channel is that join the. OK, first of all, this is present Britney talking. And I know past Britney is going to be talking. It's going to be confusing which one is talking. This is present Britney talking and past Britney looks fabulous in this video. Thank you. Discord, it's a cult, right? It's like a joke. You should pay attention to me. If you think I'm suspicious, hate me for the real me, not the version of me in your head. I don't mind if you hate me, but you got to hate me for the real me, not the version of me in your head. I'm not a cult leader. Nobody's got time to run that cult. But hey, if you guys want to join the cult, join the Discord. Court, court, court. Okay, so I've noticed something, and the same thing I noticed with Think Before You Sleep and Alyssa's video, remember when that scandal happened? I think people don't understand each other. Remember how Think Before You Sleep, like, tried to examine Alyssa and her perspective, but, like, didn't even understand her perspective for a second? Like, could not even fathom it? Everything he said made no sense for who she is. I think it's, this is, like, what's happening, Right. I think like they can't understand my humor. They don't get any of my jokes like you guys know that's a joke. But she or he sorry, can't understand that that's a joke. Or when Alyssa talked about having an eating disorder as a teenager and think before you sleep was like, what's wrong with children thinking about their health needs? And I'm like, she said eating disorder. A child having an eating disorder is not healthy. So why would think before you sleep be like, but what about children who want to stay healthy? And it's because they can't they don't get it. Like they can't process it. And so it's interesting. So, okay. I think that's what's happening here. So, okay. Radical Coder, thank you so much for joining membership. Shout out to memberships on YouTube. Appreciate that. Okay. Let's see. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. My name is Brittany. Oh my God. My hair looks so good there. Hello everyone. Oh my God. I cannot wait till my layers grow in again because I gave myself a wolf cut, which really was a mistake, honestly, because these long layers look so much prettier. Back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. My name is Brittany Simon. My name is Brittany Simon. So if you are new to my content, the thing I want to show you guys or teach you guys, that's why I want to teach you how to play the game. My work is supposed to help you figure out what game and what bubble you're in. My work isn't everything you watch. Because I'm in like the, I guess, self-help bubble, I guess. If you want to become one of my callers, I will help you. Okay, this is like a big joke, right? Because everyone on the internet's like, what are you? How can I categorize you? What bubble are you in? And then you're just going to embarrassly watch me try to figure out my branding and what do I want to do full time? Spoiler alert, I want to make content full time. I don't want to do calls, which is why there's only one call left on my Patreon at the 250 level. And spoiler alert, nobody has it currently. So this call time building, I'm not even that good at it, apparently. So the accusation is going to be around me exploiting people for the $250 call. I don't, I only take one call on, on Patreon for that level and no one has it right now. So help me be a better cult leader, guys. Okay. Help me. But obviously I don't want to do calls for a living. I could have, but I don't want to. I want to be a content creator first and foremost. Okay. So that's the decision I've made. And that's why there's not many calls available for people because I don't want that to be my full-time job. Okay. Would have been a good option. I just don't want to do it. Now, this Brittany here is trying to figure out her branding and what she wants to do. She had just moved to Croatia. She's like in a huge transition. She's figuring it out. Um, obviously, we landed here where you see me now. So just context. I will help you. I am better than self-help. Call me. So obviously, I, the I'm better than self-help is like a joke because people kept calling me self-help. So the slogan was I'm better than self-help. But I'm not self-help. That's the joke. Because then I wouldn't be better than it. I would be self-help. Okay, thank you. I can't believe I'm explaining jokes. I can't believe I'm explaining jokes. Here we go. 
I know I'm expensive, but I'm worth every penny. I'm better than life advice itself, girl, better than self-help. I can give you as many tools that would help somebody else, but it might not help you. I can be actually a hindrance to your journey. True. I could be the bad guy in your journey. Dum, dum. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I want to talk to you guys. This is my work. It is something I'm passionate about, and I think it's really, really helpful. So I hope it helps you today. I don't have a thing I want to sell you. I just have things that I think are interesting and I want to share with you. Meet Brittany Simon. Brittany is a mid-sized commentary YouTuber. As of July 2024, she has almost 90,000 subscribers Thank on you. her YouTube channel. Thank you. And posts almost daily. Officially over 90,000. I appreciate you. Shout out. Daily. She also streams four to five times a week and usually draws somewhere around 200 viewers. Thank you. If we go to her website, we can see that Brittany uses a few other platforms. Yep. She does have an OnlyFans where she posts something called ethereal adult work. I don't really know or care what that means, but it seems like it's just pictures of her in her underwear. Um, It is not just pictures of me in my underwear. Thank you so much for asking. It's actually like 18 plus content because I'm a sex positive adult worker, but thank you so much for trying to minimize my work. But also if you just take pictures in your underwear, that is also cute and we're living for it girls. Okay. But I actually do post 18 plus content. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Brittany also uses Patreon, which is where she makes a good portion of her income. Now the Patreon is interesting and it's going to come. Okay. So check out the Patreon he's showing. Look at limited one remaining. He literally shows a screenshot of the only call spot I have open and no one has it right now. So the whole premise of this video is I'm running a cult and exploiting my fans by making them pay $250 for my calls. Nobody is at that call level. And I stopped taking calls via email, basically like on occasion, returning calls might happen that way, but I literally just have one call spot and there's, look, it says it right here. One remaining. What is this research? How do you do research? And you're like, somebody has a cult. Nobody has this cult level. What are you doing? Like, sir, if you're going to take somebody down, okay, at least fake your screenshots or something. <laughs> Come up a lot in this video. For one, the Patreon is how you gain access to the Britney Simon community discord for $10 a month. True. But for a modest $250, you can book a monthly hour long private phone call with Britney herself. And apparently the purpose of the call is entirely up to you. We'll revisit these phone calls later, but as you can see, a significant amount of Britney's presence online is hidden behind a paywall. So for many of you who aren't direct fans of her, it may be the case that you're unfamiliar with much of Britney Simon's content and body of work. I was too, and out of curiosity, I decided to investigate what Britney's content was about, what her community's like, and what goes on in her private calls with her fans. So today, I'm going to share what I found. From the true purpose of her channel, to troubling stories from her community, Let's see how Britney Simon- Oh my God, this is so much funnier now that I have time receipts. This is so much funnier in hindsight. Wait until I show you the receipts. Oh, why do people do this? Why do drama YouTubers? Like you would be so much more successful as a YouTuber. Like this is what gets you banned on YouTube because you're harassing people. That's why so many people are banned. Mr. Girl and Stock are banned. Okay, you're next, bro. How can you make content like this and not think like YouTube's gonna have a problem with this? You can't just make content, making shit up about people that says they're horrible and you have no receipts, nothing. If I'm breaking 2S, fine. But like, bro, this is so much funnier. Wait until I show you later. Simon has essentially written the handbook on how to exploit your fans and get away with it. Some people get lost in the role of being the good person while they're fucking people over behind closed doors. But because they built this role of being the good person, they can never see themselves as the bad guy in the story. Hi everyone, I'm Brittany Simon. Uh, Hi. I run on the like sort of reactionary. I think this is the first stream I did with Destiny maybe. Look, I even misused the word reactionary. I just meant a reaction content creator, but this was my first jump back into collaborations. Like prior to this, I had kept like a pretty low profile because I had had like collaborations a lot throughout my YouTube career, took a long break from collabing and focused on my podcast. And then I think this was like my first collaboration with Destiny maybe a philosophy side of YouTube and I create content reviewing pop culture and philosophy. And one of my patrons asked me to reach out to him to do a collaboration because they thought it would be interesting. 
which it definitely was interesting and no regrets. I met a lot of great people along the way, but that community was a lot, you know? Well, obviously I think philosophy is the key, right? And introspection is the key to that. And no matter who you are, what your aim is with the introspection, you have to have a relationship with yourself. You have to have a moment with yourself and you have to be honest about the things that are ugly about you and the things that are beautiful about you and the things that are honest. And they just, you have to be so... You have to have such a specific relationship with yourself. Ugh, ew. is that Keffels? What the fuck is Keffels on the screen? So much has changed since that time. And these people don't realize, like, we go back and review my old content and I make fun of, like, oh my God, look where I was and look what I said. How stupid. And then I, like, update myself. These people don't think about that. Because to them, nobody changes in a year because they can't fathom changing because they never do. Right? It's so interesting. It's so interesting. If you want to take advantage of your audience, first things first, you need to have an idea, a product. How dare you associate me with Keffels and Boogie? Ridiculous association. You can sell them. For Brittany, it's easy to identify what her product is. What is it? Brittany's three favorite words are philosophy, introspection, and consciousness. You didn't even put bubbles in there, bro. I literally have hashtag bubble queen on my Twitter. She pitches herself as somebody who's on a journey, who really wants to share the things that she's learned, hopefully to help you along your journey. Through philosophy, philosophy she wants to give you the tools for how to be introspective enough to achieve greater consciousness. consciousness. On its face, this sounds Ooh. fine, but when you start watching Britney's content, it becomes quickly clear that she has no idea what she's talking about. <gasps> a woman has no idea what she's talking about because I can't understand her or keep up with the conversation. That is the argument I'm going to make that these people cannot keep up with the conversation. So therefore I don't know what I'm talking about. The argument is like, you don't know what you're talking about. And so, cause you can't keep up in the conversation. You literally think you know what you're saying or like that. I don't know what I'm saying. Habibi, please. For one thing, Brittany never talks about philosophy in the traditional sense. <gasps> what traditional sense? The white man Western philosophy sense, which I do on purpose. <gasps> I don't know if this man is white, but he's about to sound very white to me. I was going to look at this in a philosophy way. Again, we'd go down to what is the consciousness again. Okay. Therapy helps you with your mental health and like your, which overlaps, but like we're talking about your consciousness and then what is the a uh, commitment we've made to that consciousness that is your husband. When I talk about philosophy or we talk about existential dread or introspection, I'm really talking about the desire to really know the self and then to have a relationship with existence. It's clear that when Brittany uses the word philosophy, she's just using it as a stand-in for thinking about life. Her philosophical teaching- Whoa. Guys, 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 guys. When I say philosophy, I just mean talking about life, bro. Hmm. What is philosophy, I wonder? What do you think philosophy is? Do you think it has anything to do with talking about life? Things are generally just nonsensical chains of words with ambiguous definitions, and she's sort of hoping you're just nodding your head along with her the whole time. Philosophy introspection is different from superficial self-help introspection. Because you're not introspecting in the depth. We're talking about depth. We're talking about more than the ego. If you're introspecting to be the best ball player, that's only in relation to specifically basketball, right? What does that have to do with the, the greater universe, the greater knowing, the greater consciousness? Yet she advertises herself as a philosophy channel. It's okay, wait, doctor, thank you. The slanderous hit piece is just exhibiting how on point your hair game is, cult leader. Thank you so much. Actually, true. Every time I see past me, I think, man, I really, I'm cute, bro. One of the very first hashtags she uses for her content but her channel is almost entirely about dating, drama, and pop culture. My guess is Brittany uses the term because she thinks for- <laughs> Cool says this guy, Eastern philosophy who literally, that's why I'm saying this is sounding a little colonizer to me, like a little bit. Like you don't do real philosophy. Um, I just read meditations and I'm telling you right now, I'm doing philosophy. Okay, bro, relax. Yourself as something of a philosopher. And to call her content philosophy gives her ideas more credibility. Mm, from your, I guess, from your perspective, I guess. Does calling my stuff philosophy make you guys think it gives me more credibility? Also, I cannot wait to show you how women talk about my levels versus men. Oh, you just wait. You just wait. Ingrid said very ear, ear, Eurocentric, very Eurocentric, this guy.
But no, you will never find discussions of traditional philosophy on this channel. Just incoherent ramblings about her face. You know what? And shout out to guys like Alex O'Connor and all the guys who do philosophy stuff. See, they don't do philosophy. They review his story, like his history of philosophy. I don't want to do that. So I don't do YouTube philosophy. So I call it white man philosophy. White man philosophy on YouTube is not like trying to create something new or exploring ideas unless you're like a Verveke, which is amazing. Love John Verveke. But Alex O'Connor and all these other guys who I like a lot, they review philosophy, right? They're just like people who regurgitate ideas, which is great and beautiful. And I love that, right? Super love that. I watch them. I'm subscribed. We watch them on this channel. But I don't want to do that for a living. Like, I don't want to read other people's ideas and do book reviews. Like, I'm not interested in that. I want to explore what ideas come out and what inspires me to have more ideas. Forgive me for being a woman who would like to contribute her own ideas, but that's what I'm doing. And the fact that they don't think I'm qualified to do that, but some guy in his mom's basement is interesting. Favorite three words. As for introspection, this is something Brittany talks about incessantly. She often refers to her journey of introspection and the way she presents it is as though she, through time and hard work, self-reflected enough and eventually discovered a set of tools to be able to better understand herself and other human beings. As you guys know, obsessed with introspection. It's a journey, it'll take a lifetime, but I do think that I'm having a real relationship with myself. Like you guys know, I'm literally obsessed with introspection. What is introspection? It never ends. After I got therapy and then after I went on my philosophy journey and after I- Okay, shout out to Kelsey with the definition from Oxford Dictionary, the study of fundamental nature of knowledge, reality, and existence. Bro, those are like my favorite words. I swear, like how do people make these videos about me and like, if you've never read a book, like it shows genuinely. I went on my introspection journey. I read bosses. I'm surprised you even give them the time of day. I didn't know who this was. Oh, okay. For, for the record, I'm doing this because I got so many DMs from girls being like, Brittany, please talk about this. It's so funny. And I was like, girl, I was not going to talk about it. I literally was not. And then I was like, you know what? Let's talk about it. Because honestly, I was like, what? Is, like, why is that? What? And then I watched it and I was like, oh, Okay, silly. And the fact that he's a Mr. Girl fan and like Orbiter is so much, is so much funnier. Okay. It's so much funnier, but okay. Realized like, okay, I needed to like go of the resentment and bitterness I had for other people's own journey. And I need to recognize like they are me on a journey just like I am. Brittany seems to think that the ideas of self-reflection and subjectivity are novel concepts that she has elevated access to. This is one of her most- Ah, uh, yes. Uh, somebody on Tom Fullery's stream earlier made me gag. I ugly laughed so hard. He was basically accusing me of like creating introspection. Like he, they, like, they're like, Brittany thinks she created like introspection. And I'm like, oh my God. And all these people, okay, are just examples of what is, like, I just want to talk about it, I think, because I'm sitting here like, how could you be so wrong, but also prove my work so right? How is this not bubbles? So these men, because they don't understand the un, like the information, come to a conclusion. It's like conservatives who think trans people are groomers, but not men in general, just like only trans people, trans, only trans, only LGBT people can be groomers, never the cis people. Like these people are conspiracy theorists. They're people who come in this, why don't like conspiracy theorists, they use the worst data to come to the worst conclusions. Amazing. Just like, it's so funny. Okay, let's keep going. It's too good. It's it's a long video, so let's not pause too much here. Recurring character traits. She tries to make very surface level concepts like empathy sound advanced and complicated as if she possesses secret, unique wisdom. My work is to prove that everyone is living in a subjective reality. Everyone is on a journey. It's easier to forgive ourselves and other people when we realize that. It seems that Brittany's years of therapy, studying philosophy and introspection have helped her come to the realization that everybody has their own subjective experiences. Britney's entire channel revolves around providing her viewers the tools to go on their own introspection journeys and discover these same highly normal surface level ideas. Her obsession with this part of her worldview actually leaves her unable to effectively take stances on the topics she covers or give out proper criticism. But more on that later. Finally, when it comes to her third favorite word, consciousness, it's anyone's guess what exactly Britney means when she says it. My Even though I've defined it so many times, can anyone tell me what I mean when I say consciousness? I just watched a Dr. Kirkonda podcast on this. Like, what is the consciousness? 
I don't know if you know this, people are allowed to have opinions on what they think the consciousness is. So his argument is because, quote, science has, doesn't know what it is. No one can know what it is, which is not true, by the way. People are constantly putting narratives on the consciousness. OK, so can anyone in the audience tell me what do I mean when I say consciousness? Because I say it all of the time. OK, this I can't tell if this person is just like brain dead when it comes to listening or if they just don't know, like different bubble. Like, what are you even talking about? What are you even talking about? I work is to talk about the philosophy of the consciousness. That's different than a person who's having a realization of consciousness in relation to all of the universe. Specific consciousness level, and that's the you, you, not even the general you. Are you asking me the like citizen? Are you asking me, Brittany, a consciousness? It has so much to do with existence. So existing is like your relationship with your consciousness and existence is the relationship with everything outside of your consciousness. I think your brain and your consciousness are separate, even though your consciousness is like the computer that like turns the, or your brain allows the consciousness to sort of like ignite. That's my assessment. I have diagnosed her with lack of relationship with consciousness. Philosophy Brittany coming in. She uses that word to describe souls, people, personality. Brother Exodus, the consciousness is just oneself free of any outside influence. Boom. The you, you, the you, you, the most you. Yes. Consciousness is like without the ego. Consciousness is the most you, the thing that is you. That's what I call. And I think we all know is the consciousness to some degree, right? Personalities, experiences, science doesn't know what that word means and neither does Brittany. One okay. First of all, that article was nine years old. It said. This science does this article is more than nine years old. Um, do you want to maybe update your fucking research skills here, bro? Philosophers and science have been at war for decades and will be at war for, for thousands of years. And again, he doesn't like that I'm contributing my voice, right? I'm contributing my ideas. And he's like, no. And I'm like, why not? Why can't I contribute my voice as a person? Where is, where is the like, where is the problem, right? Oh, I'm not qualified enough. Okay. Like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? What, you have to be qualified on having an opinion about the consciousness? My work is to prove like every person has the right to examine themselves and go on a journey. And God forbid the regular person, the average Joe should have to go to college to figure themselves out. Like, God forbid we should ever be able to meditate on our own ideas or come to conclusions about our own ideas. What are you even talking about, sir? Doesn't know what that word means, and neither does Brittany. One pattern of behavior that will come up a lot is that Brittany is constantly talking out of both sides of her mouth. And she often says things sort of like she's winking while she's saying it. Like how she claims she doesn't want to sell you on any of these ideas, yet consistently seems to try to do that. I don't have a thing I want to sell you. I want to help people find and have a relationship with their joy and their consciousness. I can't sell you a course because it's individualistic. That's why I take individual calls, right? I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm going to give you tools that help me get exactly the lifestyle. Shout out to Sweetie Pie for the super chat. Appreciate you with the rainbow emoji. I love that. Thank you. All that I wanted. And I'm so grateful that I have like a lot of sort of forms of knowledge in my head and I'm glad that I can help so many people. And while I personally think that Brittany doesn't really have much insight on these ideas that she wants to sell you, the truth is there is a market for it and she knows that market. I know that market so well that no one is currently paying me $250 for a call because I literally want to make content. That's how I make my money is you guys support the content. The calls are to support the content. Okay, that's why I changed even the way I do Patreon. It says support the content, get a call. I don't want to do calls for a living. I thought about it. I don't like it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. But for an actual living, it means less time making content. And I want to make sure I'm making content. And that's what I'm here for. I am a content creator first and foremost. So I changed my business model to make sure that I'm always prioritizing content, even if I took a pay cut. Because genuinely, this is what makes me happy. This is what my joy is. I love my callers and I'm so grateful to have them in my life. But also, I assume one day they will all disappear and I'll be down to one caller a month, right? Because eventually that's probably how it's gonna go. Because I wanna be a content creator. That's important to me. So I just wanna let you guys know as a content creator, that's what I really wanna be known for.
right? And a lot of people might not know what I do. I'm just a person on the internet. I discovered something about myself and I feel as a neurodivergent, queer woman in the world who has relationships from like gender to spirituality to sort of politics to everything. I found myself really confused about my place on this planet. I am older than you and I've spent 20 years of my life wanting to unalive myself. I understand. Honestly, he's like right now, he's showing like me explaining things perfectly and the fact that he's not understanding them I'm not sure if he has a comprehension problem. You know, like I'm not sure. But you don't have to stay there. You can get out of that bubble. You just have to get the tools. As far as I can tell, there are three main reasons why someone might decide to watch a YouTuber who makes serious or thoughtful content. Number one would be expertise. This is reserved for creators who have a professional or educational background that makes them uniquely qualified to talk about the subjects they cover. A good example of this is Dr. K. He has a medical degree and he's- Love Dr. K, shout out Dr. K. Reminder that the guy talking and making a video about me is a doc, is a Mr. Girl Orbiter. So Mr. Girl is the guy who filed a complaint against Dr. K and he just passed the medical board exam, like the medical board, um, I guess dispute. I, I don't know what to call it, but he's fine, you know, but just a reminder that the same guy who went after me, Destiny and Mr. K and Dr. K, this is one of his orbiters. This guy agrees with Dr. Uh, or Mr. Girl's assessment of me being a quote cult leader, right? So I don't even know why he's bringing up Dr. K in this video when he knows for a fact his boy literally just tried to get Dr. K in major trouble. So he's a licensed psychiatrist. Brittany Simon does not belong to this group. Because again, the only thing I'm a professional in is myself. Yeah, good job. I am not a licensed professional. I am a YouTuber. When did, when did you need a license to become a YouTuber? Isn't that interesting? Now, I don't know if YouTube has just become so much of an ecosystem where they expect you to be quote, quote, like qualified, but my dream as a kid was to be a radio host, right? And I grew up conservative as you guys know. And like Rush Limbaugh used to have like a membership program, which I loved. And I definitely model a lot of my stuff after. My dad was a big conservative, obviously. And I've even called into Rush Limbaugh's show. His staff knew who I was because I was like a young person calling in. This is like 15 years ago. It was a very long time ago. And my dad pays, used to pay when Rush was alive for his memberships so he could watch Rush stream his radio show. Like Rush Limbaugh is kind of like the first streamer where he would do a radio show for three hours a day. But if you were a member, you got special commercials during the ad break and you got to watch him in his studio while he was on the radio. Okay, I love that. But Rush Limbaugh was a high school graduate and honestly, he was an idiot and a very bad person in a lot of ways, in my opinion. But also, I'm not going to lie, like there's nothing wrong with a radio host who's already being paid by his radio station to also have extra perks for his members because that's how you make money. Welcome to capitalism. I don't know if you live or if you live in a capitalistic world, um, but you know, here we are. Discord says your work isn't for him to understand because your work is for the people who listen to more traditional presentations of your messages and feel like it doesn't resonate. Mm. Yeah, maybe that's it. Here we go. Self. The second reason you might watch someone like this would be for their perspective. You don't always need qualifications or credentials to be well-informed and good at analyzing information. Destiny's a good example of this one. He doesn't have a background in politics, but he has a strong grasp of the topic. So we just disagree. Destiny is allowed to be a college dropout who reads from Wikipedia, but Brittany can't, even though I've read literally thousands of books. And even though I'm bad at referencing them and all that stuff, and that's not the content I make, what I'm bad at my job. Like I like Destiny in terms of his work. He's obviously good at his job, but why is he good at his job and I'm not good at my job? Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if gender plays a role here. Do guys, do we think it's maybe some misogyny? Why in the world would Destiny be more qualified at his job than me qualified at mine? What? Hmm. What do you think it is? I see covers and he's a great debater. And while I'm sure that some of her audience might value Britney's perspective on things, generally speaking, I cannot imagine that most of her viewers watch her for her takes. Uh, 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 uh. I cannot imagine most of her viewers watch her for her takes. What? Is, I literally have a request line. I literally have no idea. Guys, do you, this man, ma'am, how is this just not misogyny? This is literally misogyny. I couldn't imagine anyone actually watches Brittany Simon for her takes. I couldn't imagine, but Destiny for sure, bro. 
Destiny, for sure. His takes are so good, bro. But God forbid Britney Simon has... What is this take, bro? That's crazy. That's what... Misogyny to the T, bro. Oh, my God. Like, obviously, you guys are here to be a part of the community and to hear my fucking takes. That's why you send me videos to review. That's why you guys sent me this video and you're like, girl, you have got to watch it. It's so funny. Well, here I am watching the misogyny conspiracy theorists say, I can't imagine people watch Britney Simon for her takes, but all these other man YouTubers. Oh, yeah. The man YouTubers for sure, bro. Wow. Great, guys. Super great. Good job. That's cool. I'm offended. I'm offended on behalf of the women's. You know, I just, bro. That's how I think of it. I think of philosophy as the why of me, the consciousness of the world and its consciousness. And then I think of politics as the how that consciousness moves forward in the world and like works as a society. I think most of Britney's audience belongs to the final group. This one will refer to as the parasocial group. Oh, you guys, most of the, my audience is just parasocial. I'm not sure what this means, but let's see, you know, let's see. Parasociality is a one-sided relationship that a media user, the fan, engages in with a media persona, in this case, the streamer. Parasocial relationships are complicated and their impact on fans is pretty controversial and not well understood. Oh, so when people watch Destiny, and other men and vegan gains and all the other people. Oh no, they're not having a parasocial experience. They're only having a parasocial experience with Britney. Bond says bubble on bubble crime. Yo, I'm being bubble on bubble crimed right now. Bubble on bubble crimed. I cannot even believe he is making this argument, except I, of course he is. He's a Mr. Girl Orbiter. Of course he is. Most content creators on YouTube and Twitch engage in some form of parasociality with their yeah. communities. Even something as simple as reading a super chat is sure. an example of a parasocial interaction. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the super chats. But it's commonly understood that much of the parasocial interaction that happens with fans is mostly fine. Who is that guy? I keep seeing this guy on my feed. Who is this guy? This one right here. What's, who's this guy? I keep seeing his face, but I, do, I can't figure out who he is. Who is this? I commonly understood that much of the parasocial interaction that happens with fans is mostly fine, especially when it's out in the open like a super chat. And in some cases, it can even be... <laughs> Ingrid says, Britney is my mom. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Just another weirdo says, Britney is my best friend, guys. Stop. <laughs> Bro, stop. No, Discord says, I have a Britney cushion I sniff at night. Stop it. When are the Britney waifu body pillows gonna be restocked? Guys, please. Okay, the, got, I, got, what? Stop it. The misogyny, the misogyny. Healthy for the viewer. Ah, oh, okay, kid not kin. Okay, I've heard the name, but I just don't know. I keep hearing that name, but I don't know that person, but I do know the name. I gotta figure out, like, it's hard for me to associate faces with names. Okay, this is so funny. But the bad part about parasociality is when the streamer or creator takes advantage of their fans' attachment to them. You're right. That would be bad if I was exploiting my fans. Good news, guys. He literally has no evidence that I'm exploiting my fans in this whole 50-minute video, and it's hilarious. Or when the nature of the relationship is- It's just because I'm a woman, and because a woman has an idea, oh no, not good. Okay. Intentionally made obscure. I'll let Brittany explain. I'm not a big fan of parasocial- uh, encouragement between an audience and a content creator because like that's the danger of parasocial is like you're not having the real relationship so you're having the one in your head but because of parasocial relationships everyone thinks everyone is closer than they are and I'm telling you right now you're not close so who exactly does Brittany try to appeal to who is it that gets drawn to and parasocially attached to her this is where things start to get a little messy I know so many of you in my audience, right? Our, my VC on Discord was just talking about this, how my audience is like borderlines autistics and ADHDers. Half my audience is autistic, my siblings- Oh, get ready for the uh, enableism. Yo, gr gr bros. I forgot, I forgot. Um, ableism, not enableism. He's an ableist. I forgot he's an ableist. Fuck. So he's a misogynist, a conspiracy theory, and an ableist. I'm so sorry. Just trigger warning for all of my people that are so sick of the world fucking ableism spamming them because jesus christ this is so offensive 
is autistic, like I'm probably autistic. First thing I mentioned on a first date is, hey, I'm diagnosed PTSD. I was assaulted. Hey, I was diagnosed borderline. I was a queer kid growing up in a con This, I think I'm talking about my dating history maybe here. I don't know. Conservative home. I'm like in the neurodivergent queer bubble. I formed mental illnesses. I had problems with unaliving myself. Brittany clearly wants certain types of people to relate to her. And the common denominator is they are typically lonely and vulnerable. Oh, he decided that lonely and vulnerable people are the people that I want to join my community because they're queer, autism, BPD. Yes, thank you, Alice. Autism is not a mental illness. Exactly, autism is not a mental illness. Thank you, and neither is BPD. That's the irony. BPD is also not a mental illness. So get your shit together, bros. So he's decided that because my audience is like me, queer and by borderline or whatever we are, who knows? He's decided, oh, that means lonely people. Whoa. Ableist, misogynistic conspiracy theorist, Mr. Girl Orbiter. This is getting too good, girl. Spicy, bro. Spicy. Her content consistently deals with themes of mental illness, depression, loneliness, feeling marginalized. In today's podcast, we're going to explore the idea of how to process being cheated on, staying disciplined when you're neurodivergent or have chronic health issues. I worked so hard to tackle my depression. Ooh, do you guys want to know who suggested these topics? Mm, people who wanted to hear my takes. Thank you. To tackle my borderline. She also talks about being neurodivergent and queer a lot. <laughs> there are even hashtags in her Twitter and YouTube mm -hmm. bio. Interestingly enough, both of these populations have been found to be uniquely susceptible to parasocial attachment. Oh, oh shit, bro. Oh my God, guys, guys, human beings who happen to be a part of a certain population must always be, be exploited by all of the content creators who talk about their lived experience. Is he also going to go after every TikToker that has an autism TikTok or... Um, I don't know, a BPD TikTok, which by the way, I love when my girls and my theys talk about their experiences. I love those TikTok channels that just talk about their lived experience because they're right that our communities can be vulnerable. That's why it's good that I'm not exploiting them. It's probably good that I'm giving people tools to not exploit or be exploited. Good job, buddy. Like he, in order to jump to this, like this conclusion, it's to say that like what every person like who's autistic, every person who's queer, every person who's borderline, like they're always vulnerable. Well, isn't that me? So aren't I vulnerable? <gasps> Maybe my audience is taking advantage of me. Maybe it's borderline on borderline crime. Maybe it's autism on autism crime. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Now, I don't think there's anything definitely wrong with catering your content to a specific group of people, even vulnerable ones, but there's a difference between making content for people and making people rely on you. Not only does Brittany present herself as someone who has tools, who can offer help, who's been through the same journey as you, she also presents herself as a maternal figure to her fans. I just want to be a mom. Oh yeah, thank you. Alice says he's pretending like there aren't a bunch of autistics in Destiny's audience. Like, bro, literally the most neurodivergent communities are primarily online. And yes, for the most part, okay, the reason I love having a girl audience is like girl audiences touch grass more than boy audiences. Boy audiences are some of the most under cared for audiences, which is why I love maintaining a 60 to 70% female audience. So make sure you subscribe if you're a girl because they touch grass. They're very social. They're community builders. They are people that people rely on them in their lives. Like I have a life outside the internet. You have a life outside the internet, right? We spend a lot of time here because some of the best places for neurodivergent or queer people is an online community, right? So he basically, he's making so many... He just doesn't know, right? He doesn't understand that a majority of my audience is literally girls. And the boy audiences are the ones who need so much care. That's why Dr. K's audience, he's trying to help boy streamers and boy gamers because they are suffering. They're having a huge dilemma. And a lot of the girls who try to join Dr. K's community says it's really misogynistic because a lot of the boys who need help, like they are misogynistic because they don't have a life where people depend on them. They are not part of their communities. Women are community builders. They's queers, like we are community builders. Men who are community builders, like we're community builders. And so obviously they would have no idea. By the way, this clip from Papa Gut and me is so outdated. This is the most outdated Brittany. This Brittany still wants to have kids. Guys, it's been like two years, okay? 
Maggie with the super chat says parasociality has been parasociality has been around since cave paintings. Thank you, girl. Appreciate that. Um, I love kids. I grew up raising kids, doing nannying professionally, and now I call myself I call myself Mama Simon. Actually, I get to actually the internet called me Mama Simon first, but thank you. He's gonna make an argument that I'm pedestaling myself as like a mom to you guys, and that's where the like negative association is from, sir. Be a voice in the community that says I might not have children in the sense that I might not raise them but I'm happy to be a sort of mother figure or an auntie figure or a sister figure or a figure that says like, I will care for people who need a moment of care. And I became the mother of, well, the internet, right? Okay, Mama Simon is just my very like compassionate, thoughtful side and Auntie Brittany is like, girl, I don't take no shit from nobody today. Okay, sassy gay side. Like at the end of the day, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Already, Britney is blurring the lines between creator and fan. And she <gasps> Creators and fans. So here's the argument he's going to make that I think boy bubbles don't understand about girl bubbles. Girl bubbles, well, actually all adult bubbles are about networking and turning clients into friends or people into situations in which you build businesses upon, right? And at the same time, there's a barrier. If we all lived in a neighborhood, obviously we would all have clicks, okay? And maybe we do business together, maybe we wouldn't. But women pay each other for our time. It's very important. I would never like, even I had a, my funny enough, a audience member turned friend who's a hairstylist. She helped me with my wedding hair and I did a call with her and I paid her for her time because we pay each other for our time. We're not going to let our friends just randomly. We're not going to call our friends who have a business and be like, Hey, can you talk to me for a second without like honoring their time? Unless, and hear me out. It's not a professional call. If it's not a professional call, like I'm calling my friend to ask her to help me with my hair, which is a professional call, I'm hiring her as a business, then of course we'll talk for free and we're having fun and it's great. But I wouldn't take advantage of my friends by saying like, hey, you know this thing you do for a profession? Can I like take advantage of you and like have you do a hair consultation for free because we're friends? No. So it's this idea that I don't think he understands. Like, just because you're friends doesn't mean there's not an exchange of money, but also there is a line and I'll get into this. Don't worry. I have a lot of receipts for this. There is going to be a line that's confusing to people, right? How do you know when someone's your friend and how do you know when it's appropriate to pay that friend or when money is involved or if you're only having a friendly work relationship and so they're only friends with you because they're buying a house from you or you go to the same real estate events, or you have the same social media networking community, or you're both on the same reality TV show. That's a good question. We'll get into it. Don't worry. But trust me, as somebody who's been in so many adult communities, always drama, always problems because people are drama. It's about harm reduction, not perfection. But more than that, it's about knowing the line between respecting your friend's boundaries, respecting your client's boundaries, and respecting sort of the nuance between that relationship. Because there is a nuance there. Not all clients are friends. Not all friends are clients. Not all friends ask you to do stuff for free. Not all, like there's so much, this is so nuanced. So I'll get into it, don't worry. But it, I just think that's so funny that they just, they can't figure it out. And that's why I say, I don't think these people are relied upon in their communities. I don't think people rely on them. Even when I would babysit my brother's kids and he would ask me to do it once a week, he paid me. Because as much as I would love to be Auntie Brittany and babysit his kids, he also knows I work full time. So I'm taking time away from my business to babysit the kids on a weekly basis for like a long time. That's a big ask, even for a family member, you know? So he would pay me for my time. He would pay me in food and video games, but I still got paid as far as I'm concerned. It's about showing respect. It's about respect for people and their time. Don't take advantage of people, okay? And know the limits, which you'll learn over time and probably by making mistakes. So I'm not a perfect person and I'll go over those mistakes in a second, but I learn from my mistakes and that is the difference. He knows this can cause problems. It works on people. And I hate to say that, but like people are so susceptible because they are so desperate for a good looking, smooth, charismatic person to appeal to their- Is he saying I'm a smooth, charismatic person? Thank you. I was talking about some like literally like bad people, but thank you. Our abilities in, in, in need of validation. And then all of a sudden, boom. And I think with content creators, there's like a parasocial element which confuses people. Even with me, people have a version of me in their head that isn't me. 
Alex says these are extremely basic decency foundational things. I think communities are so different and bubbles are so different that for some people they'd be like, I can't believe you charged family to babysit the kids. Well, it's not like every time, but if we have a negotiation, you're doing it once a week for a long time. It's like a big deal. Kwame says, shit, I didn't think you watch videos about yourself only because you guys highly requested this one. And it's so silly. Uh, Mr. Girl Orbiters are the worst. You know what I mean? It's the worst. Oh, actually, Discord, great point. And this is a point that I want to make to you guys that I think is really important. And again, I think this might be the difference between some people and other people. Discord says, I feel extremely uncomfortable thinking of myself as a fan, uh, 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 as a Britney fan. I'm a consumer. I'm a member of an online community, community member, I guess. I think this is the difference between people who are consuming content from the uh, from other creators, but I'm also not a friend. And I think I feel, um, I think, hold on. I think I feel about this the way I feel about my relationship with my lecturers or other researchers in my field who I do not know personally, but whose work I read regularly. The idea of being exploited in that kind of dynamic is very absurd. I think for some of my viewers, they don't see me as like a person. They do see me as a content creator. They get very flustered. I've definitely had people in the fan bubble in my audience. And that's a really good place to be. And I think it's a very respectable place and I think it's good. Then there are people in my audience that are peers, that are networking, that are women in business, that are men in business, that are interested in becoming a contributor to my work because they wanna build a business networking relationship. And that's beautiful too. And then there are people who are just like grown ups because everybody's 18 plus in my community, like who's on Patreon and paying for stuff. And they're just there to see interest, like a person talk about ideas they think are whatever. Like, it's just neutral. But I also grew up in a family that was connected to sort of like small celebrities in their bubbles. And we were taught not to pedestal people. We were taught when I met Sean Hitty, when I met Glenn Beck, when I've met people along the years, I don't pedestal these people. You look at them as peers, you treat them like people, and you have an opportunity for business, right? That's the idea. But I think some people, they do just have a fan perspective. It's fine. I mean, hell, if 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 Chapel Roan had to take a step back because her fans got crazy, you act like content creators are always malicious and as if we can't be victims as well. Hello, the person who stalked me and I had to go to court for, right, who remains nameless on this channel because I won my case and I never have to bring them up again or give them any kind of attention because that's what they want. They were an alleged fan. They weren't really. They were just a person who creeps in people's audiences and pretends to be a fan. Look, it happens. It happens. The goal is to harm reduce, not be per not be perfect. This illusion from this community is that things need to be perfect and that's never going to happen. Okay? It's never going to happen. And that's the problem. This bubble, whatever it is, I don't think they have communities. I don't think they have, they, they have people who rely on them. Guys, how many of us have drama in the PTA communities, in the teacher communities, in the mom communities, in the family communities, in our own families? And you think it's not going to get weird? Guys, if Destiny literally thought we were closer friends than we were, even though we never explicitly said that, and he just assumed, and everyone asked him, like, why are you being weird about Britney? And then he twisted the narrative into be Britney is her borderline. If he's a content creator who misread the situation and turned it around in a misogynistic way to be like, Brittany misunderstood the situation. I never misunderstood anything. You're the one who assumed so much more. And when people called him out, he just like, he doubled down. He's a content creator. Are you gonna hold him responsible for assuming we were closer than we were when there's no evidence of that? No, because the content creators have a parasocial relationship with him. The other people, the audience members have a parasocial relationship. I'm not blaming him. He's on a journey. That's his, that's his thing. It's just so interesting that they can't see themselves doing it. I never said we were close friends. He's the only one who insinuated that and let his audience believe Brittany betrayed her close friend. If a YouTuber is going to have that problem with each other, you think regular audience members might not have a moment? Destiny's not a bad person. But he's obviously very wrong about how he handled that situation and he knows it. Or maybe he doesn't know it. But if he can cross a, a, like a boundary and a line and then twist it around, that's crazy. And I reviewed this. If you guys want to watch, I literally reviewed everything about that situation. You might not want to sit through it, but I did go through everything. And it's so obvious that misogyny was playing a huge role in that fallout. No matter what I do, I'm the bad guy because I have borderline or because I'm a woman or because I was graped. His community uses that against me. And if you guys can't see that, that's the problem. This community, these people, these men, they think you are like gross if you're an adult worker. 
if you have PTSD, if you have borderline, if you are any kind of like person who's honest about your like journey, they use it, they punish you for it. I'm never gonna punish you for your journey. I personally am not trying to punish destiny. That's not what I want, okay? I'm just saying this is the problem and it happens everywhere. It happens in your families. It happens at work. It happens in politics. It happens in so many places. And if you don't believe me, you can watch the video I made on it because it's good. But playing a parental role and wanting to help her fans is only the beginning of her confusing her audience. Remember, Brit Mimi with the super chat says open with boundaries, kilo selectively deaf. I mean, men, you know what I'm saying? Ugh. Brittany also has an OnlyFans, where apparently before she got married, she had gone on dates with customers. Um, one of them. And also, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with consenting adults going on a date? It was a great date. He was a very nice person. What's the problem with that? See how the insinuation is that adult workers shouldn't find love? That it's wrong to go on a date with somebody who's an adult and who likes your work? Hmm, weird take, bro. Are you saying adults aren't capable of going out with people who do adult work? Are you saying adult workers shouldn't find love? I went on a very nice date with a very nice man who supported my content and liked it. And I thought that's cool because I'm looking for a sex positive partner. We didn't end up going on a second date and it didn't go anywhere. But yeah, do you have a problem with that? Hmm. Weird. And she thinks it's up to the customer to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not. Nope, that's not true. Oh, listen, this is the first place he takes me out of context in a very bad way. I have receipts though. So pay attention, right? I have to rewind it though. You got to hear this. Okay, listen. Remember, Brittany also has an OnlyFans, where apparently before she got married, she had gone on dates with customers. And she thinks it's up to the customer to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not. To say like, oh yeah. Hear that? Do you hear the way he phrases that? I'm so sorry. I'm being very... And she thinks it's up to the customer to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not. He thinks it... Uh, she thinks it's up to the customer to decide if she's really interested or not. Listen to this. To say like, oh yeah, we're going to be together, but it's part of the persona, then it's more on the audience member to be really reasonable with how they're interacting with a persona. So I think there is a very blurred nuanced line and you can't always know what you're dealing with. So, you know, act with caution. And oh, oh, oh. So he is making the claim that I said that about myself, right? Receipt number one, Brittany. Receipt number one. Okay, here we go. Bringing up the receipts, cause my boy's a liar. My boy's a I don't think you're- My boy's a Mr. Girl or Bird or Liar. This is a podcast I did called How to Have a Healthy Relationship as an OF Content Creator. Episode 107 of my podcast. So he makes the claim, okay, that I was talking about myself- Mmm, what a fucking liar, bro. What a Weasley liar, bro. Ready? Receipts. You're actually pro-sex. If you're demonizing sex, if you're saying if you have too much sex, it's bad, you're not sex positive. Now, on a spectrum, people have different relationships with sex positivity, but I'm probably on the more extreme end. I think you should be consent-based, knowledge-based. I think you should be safe. But I think ultimately what you do with your body is your business. As a content creator, I think if you take into consideration how it's impacting society, you can think of it as the content creator to your audience. How is it impacting my audience? I do practice a very specific kind of ethical um, sex positivity where I if I'm a sex worker, I try to be very honest with my audience. I don't pretend that I'm available. Oh, I don't pretend that I'm available. He made the claim that what I said earlier was about myself. I don't pretend that we're ever gonna meet. I don't pretend that I'm ever gonna date you. I don't lie to you about my relationship status. I wear my wedding ring, my engagement ring in my videos. And I still wear my wedding ring. They all know I'm married. I have women and men and theys in my audience on OF, okay? So here is me talking about my career. And then I go on to give an example of how someone else might run their business. And he had the audacity to clip me out of context. Why are we even watching this video if you're going to clip me out of that co that kind of context? Content. I am not trying to trick people into thinking I'm single and could possibly date you. There are some artists, some sex workers. Oh, there are some sex workers, people who aren't me. Do this 
ethically and unethically. Some who do it ethically are putting on a persona and the persona is what you're falling in love with. You're not falling in love with the real person. But I think people with parasocial relationships can forget that and turn it toxic. Then there are content creators who maliciously intend to lie to their customers, who maliciously actually try to almost gaslight and convince their customers like, I'm going to be with you when... I am literally giving the example of a bad, unethical person, and he clipped me out of context to say, that's what I was saying about myself. Fuck you. Misogyny? Clearly. Okay? Conspiracy theorist? Obviously. Mr. Goal Orbiter? 1,000%. What a fucking Weasley little fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar. And then you have the audacity to be like, Brittany's manipulating her viewers. Bitch, what is this? One day. You just wait. I'm going to be with you one day. And I think that's super unethical. Oh, do you think he maybe wanted to include that clip where I say this is super fucking unethical? Listen to me when I say this. There is a boy bubble on this fucking internet that is misogynistic and conspiracy theorist. And at least two of them have already been banned. Thank fucking God for harassment. Mr. Girl is gone and JSTOC is gone. And now a Mr. Girl orbiter who has connections to JSTOC and JSTOC works for Destiny. So pay fucking attention, allegedly, according to the internet. Okay, listen to the trail of loser men on the internet that create content against women who are obviously hustling better than them, obviously making more money than them, obviously more happy than them. And they have the audacity to clip me so fucking out of context and be like, oh, yes, she definitely fucking said something. She absolutely obviously didn't say. I can obviously prove this was out of context so fucking ruthlessly. You're so dumb, bro. So just a reminder of how he framed it in his own fucking video. It's part of... Before she got married, she had gone on dates with customers. And she thinks it's up to the customer to assess whether she's actually interested in them or not to say like, oh yeah, we're gonna be together, but it's part of the persona, oh. then it's more on the audience member to be really reasonable mm. with how they're interacting with a persona. So I think there is a very blurred nuanced line and you can't always know what you're dealing with. So, you know, act with caution. And speaking- Oh, but, uh, 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 and now he's gonna bring up my husband who you're assuming her gender, which is very rude because their gender is none of your business. Okay. Of her husband, he was a fan she met in her Discord community. Oh, he was a person who came into my Discord community. He was a grown adult who wanted to pay for my content because he saw me have a conversation on the internet and thought, hmm, I understand this girl. She's really insightful and interesting. It's a very romantic story. So he found his way into my sphere. We had one single conversation and I was like, oh, this is a very interesting person. It's been over two years since we've been together. His mother fucking loves me. His dad is hilarious. We have a good bond. I literally, and I mean this with the biggest, the biggest just amount of grace. I am so sorry that my joy and happiness is a threat to you. I'm so sorry that you don't trust grown adults to have relationships within reason or support content creators within reason. I obviously didn't marry a fan because that would have been a horrible marriage. I married a grown-up who saw me have a conversation and thought to himself, I get this girl. I bet we'd have really good conversations about philosophy. And guess what, bitch? We do 24-7 because I met the love of my life and somebody who's proud of my work and somebody who watches his partner get on the internet every day and fight losers like you because you obviously are so unhappy. And right now, as we speak, she's literally running out to get me my merch because, guys, I just did a new merch run. We have new merch coming, and I can't wait to see it. It's so cute. I'm so excited. I hope it turned out good. And she is running to the post office to grab it for me right now because she is a fucking good person. And this narrative of, like, she married a fan. I married a grown-up who respects my work and likes philosophy the way that the way that I do. His family loves me. I love his family. My brothers love him. They think he's so great. Fuck you. And you're in capability of seeing a person's life or in any way empathizing with their lived experience or embodying an experience that you could never fucking understand. Good fucking job taking me out of context, 
fucking yourself over by not having the receipts. Oh, and guys, guess what? I have more receipts later. It's going to get good. And on top of that, thank you for letting me tell my love story again because it's really fucking cute. Okay? I wish you the absolute best. But people like this, okay, get a job. person that I married had only seen a few of my videos because they had seen me on the internet, but they didn't watch me. They weren't True. a viewer. Brittany tries to downplay how much her husband was a fan of hers before they got married, but I've- Because it's weird, dude. It's weird to marry like a person who thinks like, oh my God, Brittany Simon. Been told by multiple of her former fans that he was a prominent member of her community and spent a ton of time in her Discord server before they met. Yep, and I, the whole time, do you guys want to hear the lore? Do you want to hear the deepest lore? I'll tell you something I've never told anyone. <laughs> that I was really sick during this time and I thought I was dying. I was so sick. I had lost like so much weight. I was a stick thin person. I was crying every night from whatever my doctors were trying to figure out I had. Autoimmune, this, this. I was doing tests. I spent $16,000 on medical care that year. And while I was sick, still trying to work, a person came into my community that yes, people liked a lot. And then he left that community the moment we started seriously dating because he knew it was inappropriate. Once we got very serious, he basically stopped interacting with the community because we knew it would be appropriate for him to do that. Yeah, now that we're dating, and people didn't know, by the way, a lot of people didn't know we were dating. Just a few people that I thought were good people. I was wrong about some of them, obviously. Some of them actually got banned from the Discord because they were actually Mr. Girl. This is part of the lore I've never told. People from Mr. Girl's world came into my server to try to get to know things and report back to Mr. Girl. They got banned from the Discord. And some of those people, well, it is what it is. Like, they're bad people. What are you going to do? It's their journey. But my person stopped interacting with the Discord the moment we thought it would be inappropriate. Okay? And Ingrid in chat says, he left right away. I can confirm. Thank you, Ingrid. Because we obviously knew it was necessary for that to happen. Okay? But this man came into my life when I was so sick. And he and I had the most respectful, boundary-filled relationship it was so honorable. We courted. We met each other's families. We loved each other. Our families loved each other. It was such a beautiful experience that I connected with this person in this lifetime when maybe I would have went my whole life without running into somebody. Thank God the internet exists. And thank God he saw me do a collab. And thank God he thought to himself, I get this girl. Because now we get to be best friends for life and we get to watch anime every day together. P.S. We're on episode like 700 and something of One Piece. So we're getting there. We're almost done with the Deflamingo arc. Okay, so we're getting there. And I will never, ever feel bad, bad about that. I'll never feel bad about the friends I've made on the internet. I'll never feel bad about the callers who became friends. I'll never feel bad about the networking I've done. I do feel bad that people got their feelings hurt. And I do feel bad that it was kind of messy sometimes. I'm glad that I've learned from those mistakes and I've gotten better. Okay? I will never apologize for doing my job well enough to attract the love of my life into it, into my life. Okay? I'm not sure who would pay monthly to routinely hang out in a Discord server of someone they're not a fan of. And I'm not sure why Brittany would be dodgy about this, considering she's admitted part of the purpose of her channel was to find a husband. Look, I'm a content creator. No, the point of my channel is not to find a husband. The point of the point of me sending out signals was to see if a man, woman, or a they, because I'm pansexual, would come into my life and we could build a life from it. And I'm not going to pretend like I wasn't hoping somebody would come across my work and fall in love with my brain and want to marry me. But the worst aspect of Britney's parasocial irresponsibility- P.S. I've been doing social media like my whole life and I've been taking calls since 2015, before the levels, before any of this. Uh, with peace and love, like these people don't understand Okay, like I didn't like start a channel to like find a partner. That makes no sense. ...is that she makes it confusing for her fans to know whether she is their friend or not. Remember the hour long private calls she sells to her- The ones that nobody has right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fans? These calls are a large portion of Britney's business. And oh, she's zero people are at this call level. You can go check my Patreon unless somebody signed up in the last 10 minutes. I don't have, this is not a big portion of my business. You're so fucking dumb. It says it right there, dum-dum. Limited, two remaining. 
two remaining, which means nobody has a call spot. And there's actually only one remaining. Here, let's check. Hold on. Let's check. Hold on. Unless somebody just signed up. Hold on. New on incognito video. So you guys don't see any <laughs> anything. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Please hold. Okay. So my Patreon, 18 plus. Yes, I'm 18. Accept all. Okay. One remaining. 250 call. One remaining. When he says it's a large part of Brittany's business, um, man, I really suck at my job, bro, because absolutely nobody is paying $250 right now for a call. Nobody. Her Raiders cast says I just signed up. Raiders, don't, te don't tease me, Raiders. Okay, so what is that? What is that? How does he, he even shows a screenshot showing nobody's at that call level. So why does he think anybody is at that call level when he showed it on his own video that nobody was at that call level? What is he doing? Like, is this a joke? Am I being pranked? Is this a joke? He's routinely booked out every month. And then I have calls what? for the rest of the day. I'm routinely so booked out every month. This is old. This is, this is pandemic Britney. Guys, during the pandemic, everybody had money and time to do calls. This is pandemic Britney. We are post pandemic. Post pandemic, I had less time on the discord. I only show up for events now. There's no, almost no calls. This is this is pandemic Britney. Look how short my hair is. This is like a couple years ago. Like, that's what I'm saying. Guys, he, how did you make a whole video and you didn't even add updated stuff? This is misogyny. Everyone else can run a business on YouTube, but when a girl does it, she's manipulating her fans because what? She's an adult worker and a YouTuber. God forbid. Like, God forbid. Do those and I'm so excited for those. They're going to be great. The purpose of these calls seems to be mainly for her self-help services. You should book a call with me because I'm better than even life advice itself. But remember that the purpose of the calls is entirely up to the caller. So many of Britney's fans call her just to hang out. Like literally some, yeah. some of my callers, this is going to blow his brain. Some of my callers just pay for calls and don't even use them every month. <gasps> some of my callers don't even use their calls every month because they're just contributing to the content or they're just sitting there to be like, I'm supporting your work, but like, we'll talk when we can. Yeah. Yup. Yup. True. Shocking. Shocking. I know some people don't even use their call every month. <gasps> oh no. Because they're paying to support me as a content creator. Guys, Patreon is so people can create content. That's the point of it. Ultimately, people are supporting the content and they know content creator AdSense doesn't pay that good unless you're a very big creator. So people supplement that with Patreon and they get excited because it's like, yeah, I subscribe. I personally patron like three, three content creators and I almost never watch their videos. I just like them as people. And one of them is a painter to be fair, but I almost like don't ever watch or consume necessarily. Or sometimes I check in once a month to see what's going on. But like, it's not about being a fan. It's about being a supporter of the content, like not a fan of the person, but a fan of the content. I'm a fan of these people's content and I want to see them keep doing it. So here's $5. Here's $10. Here's whatever dollars. So with peace and love, he has already decided because he's a Mr. Girl Orbiter. He already decided I was a cult leader. He already decided I was a bad person. So he found every piece of content out of context to prove that I was a bad person. And then he came to a bad conclusion. With peace and love, I know it's your journey. And I know you're probably not a horrible person, but this is a horrible video and I think you should take it down. But you're not gonna take it down. Because like, this is the content you wanna be known for, right? Hit pieces or whatever. Mr. Girl Orbiter, uh, standing on some moral high ground of not exploiting your fans, but instead what? You'll smear YouTubers? Sir. Some of my callers, like we play video games. Like sometimes we just talk, like sometimes it's very fun. Personally, I just think her audience of lonely, troubled people paying her $250 to hang out with her for an hour is weird and creepy, but I understand. I just think adults using their money how they want is like weird and creepy. Okay, we'll take it up with your God, bro. Guys, he thinks you're weird and creepy. The person, guys, the invisible you, since no one's paying for that $250 call, 
He thinks you're weird and creepy. The you that doesn't exist. Sir? Some people don't have a problem with this part. The problem comes in when Brittany intentionally blurs the lines around what her relationship with the caller actually is. Bef okay, we'll get into this. Are you ready? Before we finish this chapter, let's briefly learn about one of Brittany's former fans. To keep her identity private, we'll call her Alondra. Okay, so it took me a second to realize who this was. This is a former caller of mine. And I'll let him say his piece first, and then I'll explain to you the situation. Alondra unfortunately suffers from borderline personality disorder and became a frequent caller of Brittany's. She developed a great amount of respect and admiration for Brittany throughout their interactions, partially because of their shared diagnosis. One day, Alondra messaged Brittany. She was upset that she couldn't be provided with a real and meaningful friendship, which she felt like she needed, and she decided to cancel her calls. It's true. We had great calls, and I wish nothing but the best for this human. Okay, so first and foremost, he said it himself. She wanted a closer relationship with me, and I couldn't give it to her, so she went on to go find friends. And I thought that was really beautiful. And I haven't talked to her in two years. I do not want to hear from you with peace and love. I'm open with boundaries and I am not open to re-communicating with you. So you don't need to reach out to me. I hope nothing but the best for you. I really enjoyed the time that this person was in my orbit or in my discord. But honestly, we were meant to no longer be in each other's lives because that wasn't what we were supposed to be. I couldn't offer more to that person than what I could offer. And they didn't think it was enough. And they got upset about it, of course, because it's upsetting. You know, you really like somebody. You want them to like you as much as you like them. And it took them, you know, they were hurt, which is fair. You know, I get it. So I'm not blaming them. I don't think they're a bad person. I just think it was what happened. And I'm a little sad that they decided to like contribute to this video. But I think it speaks volumes that they basically were the only one. And I guess they're still hurt over it, which is sad. But obviously, like, I can't give you more than I can give you. And if it wasn't enough, it wasn't enough. And now, obviously, I can't give you anything. Like, this person can't come back to the, my community. This person can't join a call. It would be so inappropriate at this point to even allow this person back in my community when, obviously, they're still pretty hurt about it, which, in my mind, is a therapy issue. They should go to therapy because it means that they, are, aren't, they aren't respecting my consent, right? They're not respecting my boundary. I put down a very clear boundary and, you know, so here, they're going to show their one singular message. No before or after, of course, but here we go. Let's read Brittany's response. Hey girl. He uses a AI of my voice. So just keep it in mind. Your tone is great, clear and to the point. I am not canceling the $30 level. I'm just limiting it to 10 calls a month eventually. That way I'm still offering discounted calls and regular priced calls. I respect your desire to cancel our call. I know you didn't mean to remove yourself from the call list. So if this month you still want it, we can make it work. But I understand you wanting to move on. Thank you for letting me know your boundaries and desires and friendship. It's true, I can't offer anything more intimate than I can and that's limited. I respect that. To clarify, does this mean you don't want to be friends at all? Or do you just want to give me space or want me to give you more space? We are adults. I'm open to having many friends with whom I see when I can and talk to when I can without needing to be very close. But I also know that might not work for everyone. Please let me know so I can properly interact with you. Okay, now let me go over it with you guys. So you guys know I'm there. I have a lot of weirdness around the word friend. I talk about it openly. We talk about it very openly in this community. Am I friends with Tom Fullery? I don't know. Am I friends with who? Like, obviously we all are confused about what friend means, right? Content creators are confused. We're all confused, but we're all adults. So we figure it out and it's going to be messy. It is what it is, right? This person was a really lovely person. Okay. They weren't a bad person, but they asked me for more intimacy and I said no. And then they decided to be upset about that. I feel like that's a consent violation that was unnecessary, right? I'm not blaming them. Discord says this message is so autistic, which is why I'm getting my evaluation in November. Obviously, you can see that I really need explicit clarification as much as anybody else, right? Like he's trying to pay me as some malicious girl. I'm just like socially awkward like the rest of everybody else. I'm just trying to understand what she wants and I don't get it. So I'm just like making sure. And now, obviously, she she wanted something I couldn't give her. So we we parted ways. And I never thought about it. Right. So I just never thought about it that much. Now, this is what I think happens on in online spaces that is so, sort of so, similar to real life. 
imagine we all live in the same neighborhood and we all attend the same like coffee shop philosophy event. We all become friends. We're all there every Wednesday. We get to know each other. And you notice that I start gravitating towards certain people that I see outside the philosophy event. And then some people are like, hey, I also want to hang out with you outside this philosophy event. I'm like, oh, I'm not really interested in bonding with you more in that way, but I'm happy to see you at the philosophy event and be friends here. That's the difference is like, I'm happy to be in contact with you in this space, but I don't really desire contact with you outside of this space. Not because you're a bad person, but because for some reason I don't see it like a symbiosis. There's nothing more intimate happening here, right? With some people over the years, they've become such good friends, like the best people I've ever known, really good people in my life, like, you know, been to my house, met my family. Like I've met the most amazing humans through the internet. I'm really, really honored by the amount of successful, smart, introspective people I've met through doing calls. And I do my best to harm reduce, obviously. But this is the problem with, I think, communication and also, again, consent boundaries. I'm just trying to figure out their line. And we ended up coming to the conclusion that basically we're we're good. Like we're going to go our separate ways. This is August 10th of 2022. So basically almost two years to the T. Okay. And that's it. Like I never talked to this person. We exchanged like two more messages clarifying and then we never talked again. I don't want to talk to you. That's my boundary. I think we're good. I think this shows that we obviously shouldn't be in contact, but I really do think therapy would help in this situation because as far as I was concerned, like you violated my consent. I'm the one who said I couldn't get closer to you. So for you to be upset with me for not getting closer to you and then participating in this video means that there's not a problem with me. There's a problem with you. And the problem with me is that I don't put down lines that are hard enough. So here's my line. We are grown adults and some of you might end up becoming friends and some of you won't. And I don't know which ones it is. And I am not going to be sorry about that. Too many amazing people, supportive, especially women, especially they, thems, especially queer people come into my sphere who have businesses, who are educated, who are successful, and we bond over the things that we love. And if you want to take that away from me because I'm a content creator, I think that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. And I know this might be hard for people to understand, but in normal adult networking situations, this is what occurs. You go to work, okay? You have clients, you have friends, and sometimes you see those clients outside of work. Sometimes you make friends with people. Sometimes you even invite them to your weddings because not every relationship is what you think it should be, okay? So I do my best to harm reduce. Things I changed in my Discord after situations like this occurred. I banned people the moment they felt dangerous. So we had a lot of people going around. There was one person in particular who would go around to other YouTube content creators and say, oh, Brittany, Brittany said this about you. Then content creators would reach out to me and be like, did you say this about me? I'm like, this person is crazy. I've tried to ban them from my Discord 17 times and they keep trying to come back. I've banned them from my chat. I've banned them all over. They keep trying to come back with different usernames. I never said this about you unless there are screenshots. And even then I never said it about you. This same group of people who are associated in these bubbles, they're just, they are the kind of people that I think they're like projecting onto my community. And I think they infiltrate the community because they want to see what Brittany Simon is up to because they think there's something here. They, I mean, they obviously give views off of me, right? So things I've implemented to help my Discord be a better place. I only show up for events now. During COVID, we all had a lot of time. I wasn't streaming full time. So I spent a lot of time in my Discord and it was great. I had some of the best memories over COVID. Some of the greatest conversations happened in that Discord, but it just it didn't end up making sense past COVID. So after COVID ended, I only show up for events now. I don't hang out in my Discord. I do post cat photos and food photos. I let people just like do their thing. I answer questions when appropriate and I like to post videos and be active in my Discord, but I'm not in the VC like I used to be. Basically, it's my way of saying I'm not always accessible, but I really appreciate you being here, right? Because if people are going to contribute to my content, I also want to say thank you in a different way. So I did my best. Also, um, I am sorry that this person's feelings were hurt. I never want to hurt your feelings. I never, never, never want to hurt your feelings. And if your feelings are hurt, I can't do anything about it except recommend you go to therapy to talk it out with somebody who's a professional because I can't do that emotional labor for you. I'm open, but I have boundaries and this doesn't feel like my responsibility when genuinely I did my best to say, I can't give you what you need. 
And I refuse to be punished for that. I'm not going to be punished for putting down my boundary, but I'm still sorry your feelings were hurt. And I really did think that person was a good person. And I still think she's probably a very good person. I don't know her. Okay. But I have nothing bad to say about her, except that I kind of wish she didn't participate in this video because it kind of indicates like you didn't realize you were breaking my consent as much as you, I don't know what you thought, but I wish you the best truly and with all of my heart. Okay, let's keep going. No, that might not work for everyone. Please let me know so I can properly interact with you. Brittany's response to Alondra is a strange mix of business, intimacy, and offers of different types of friendships that if I were in Alondra's position, I would find completely disorienting. If I was in Alondra's position, I would find it disorienting. But most of you in chat said the message made sense to me. Tom Fuller reviewed the message and thought it made sense. Other people reviewed it and said it made sense. So with peace and love, yes, it probably would be confusing to you, but not to everybody. And the world doesn't revolve around you and your experience with messages. So the fact that he feels like because it would be disorienting for me, it must be disorienting for everybody. That's, that's not how that works. You know? If you are offering a service to your mentally ill fans, you should not be dancing in and out of the label of genuine friendship with them. A friend is somebody who doesn't need to be paid to stick around. Mm -mm. Wrong. Friend is a very subjective term. I watch a lot of real reality TV shows. I don't know if you guys watch them like Selling Sunset and everything. People are always calling people friends all of the time that are clients. Clients become friends. Networking happens. You say you're friends because you are. Like, you're adults in the same sphere. But not all my friends get to be invited to, like, my parents' house. I have boundaries with what kind of friends end up in my house, right? Not all my friends have my phone number. Not all my friends have the same relationship with me. Every single one of my friends has a completely different relationship with me. I mean, I am a nerd virgin queen and I'm pretty like um, introverted. So I like one-on-one -on -one relationships. The relationship I have with you is not gonna be the same or I have a relationship I have with somebody else, right? Everybody has a different relationship with me because everyone's a unique person. My friends aren't cookie cutter machines that I mold into like little copycats. And I say, oh, I'm gonna have the same friendship with every single one of you in the same way. No, okay, absolutely not. You're either offering your fans a service or friendship. It cannot be both. How Brittany treated Alondra here is a mishandling of parasociality. What I'm doing is lazy and selfish, and I'm saying it right now. I chose the easiest path. When I chose the easiest When I say I chose the easiest path, I mean like everyone chooses a path of least resistance. When you choose your joy, you're also choosing the easiest but hardest path. You're choosing the path that's in symbiosis with yourself. Path for me. I don't give a fuck about any of you. Outside of what I can do to help you. Meaning, I don't care what you do with your life. It's not my responsibility. I trust you to do your life. Some people feel like, oh, if my favorite content creator thinks this about me, it must be true. I am just a person. You, I trust to do your life. Go do your life. I trust you. Look, make whatever content you want, Brittany. But if you're going to market yourself towards lonely and vulnerable people because of the help you can offer them, then you need to decide what role you're going to be playing for these people. You cannot sometimes be their teacher, sometimes their mother, sometimes their wife, and sometimes their friend. Why do you say that sometimes their wife? Bitch, it was one person and we're in a monogamous relationship. And also I can do whatever I want because that's what we all do in all of our lives. Has this guy never worked a job in his life? That's what I'm saying, bro. Has nobody ever worked in corporate? Has never anyone ever worked at a grocery shop or in a group of people? Everybody knows your managers play all of the roles. Everyone knows everyone in the group plays different roles for each other. Like, I can't tell. I think I think women, we are community builders. We have a lot of responsibility and responsibilities on our shoulders. And I just don't think this guy is anyone who relies on him. Anybody who's ever looked at him as a person they would have to go to, he probably doesn't have to take care of anybody. So he like spins this narrative that like, I can't do, I can't be different things for different people. Why not? Why not? Why is it assumed all your viewers are lonely? Because they're lonely. Because they're in a lonely group. This is a Mr. Girl orbiter. This is a Mr. Girl fan. And Mr. Girl's audience are lonely little narcissists. And so they're all in their little bubble, cesspooling away. Remember that Mr. Girl accused Destiny of running a cult, me of running a cult, Dr. K of being improper with Wreckful. He literally went around accusing people of all these things that he is probably doing in his own community. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. He got kicked off YouTube. 
So does it really matter what he's doing? But this is a Mr. Girl Orbiter. So, hello? And most of all, you cannot sometimes be their therapist. I'm never their therapist. This is why I think the internet might be just uneducated. I don't do therapy. I wouldn't even know how to do therapy. Assuming that I'm doing therapy with you is like assuming that I'm doing bodybuilding with you when I don't know how to bodybuild. Like sometimes you guys will be like, hey, share your routine. I see your muscles. I don't know how to tell you what I'm doing because I'm following somebody else. Like you wouldn't follow the person who's following somebody else. Like I couldn't teach you therapy. I don't know how to do that. I didn't go to school for it. I don't know anything about therapy. All I know is what I've read. Like I don't know therapy in that way. So when people say, Oh, like you're doing therapy with your, I don't, I wouldn't even know how to do therapy. And the fact that you think I would know that means that I've like studied to me. It's like, Brittany, can you show us how to like get gains? Like, how would I know that? How would I know how to teach you how to get gains? Cause I have gains. Cause I watch somebody else get gains. Like it just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. No, because we cover philosophy and spirituality here and other things people often think i'm like trying to be like the spiritual guru i'm not trying to be anything other than a youtuber okay i like youtube i'm here to make content i'm here to do co like why can't i just be a youtuber what happened to people just making youtube videos why are you pedestaling me and then blaming me for you pedestaling me don't pedestal me like that's the problem they're the ones pedestaling me and then they're like, I can't believe Brittany's pedestaling herself. Um, I'm just literally a content creator. You're the one assigning pedestaling to me. And I don't know why you're doing that. I like literally don't know why you're doing that. Commentary. That's what I'm here to do. Literally, Connor says only people who haven't gone to therapy think it's just talking to somebody is therapy. They literally talk to their moms and they're like, thanks for therapy, mom. They like literally talk to their best friends. And that's why I think it's a boy bubble versus a girl bubble, generally speaking. What if these boy bubbles like never talk to their friends? And so they think like, oh, somebody talk to me. That must be what therapy is. It's like, what? No, the therapy isn't talking to people, guys. So I do I do kind of think my theory is that the reason these boys are doing it is because they don't know. That's why the board, when Do Mr. Girl reported Dr. K, the board looked at him and made sure like, yeah, he's not doing therapy on the internet, guys. So if you guys keep saying Dr. K is doing therapy on the internet, but the medical board said like he's not, who's more right in this situation? Okay. Sweetie Pie said they hate your singing on stream. JSTOC and all those people literally said I my BPD is why I sing on stream. They literally said that. And then Kelly Jean said I'm fibromyalgia is not a real diagnosis. These people are bitter and they're angry. And so they make content about me. Girl, get your money, girl. Well, I sit here loving my life, I guess. I don't even know. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Because they're bitter. They they can't handle that somebody lives differently than them. Talk about a bubble. Talk about a bubble. Vibrancy says, I think they're confusing therapy with therapeutic conversation. I agree. Like you ever talk to your besties? You're like, damn, that was therapeutic. It has nothing to do with therapy. Okay. You girl. But obviously we have like a philosophy spin on things. And look, I could rebrand my whole channel to be this like soft-spoken guru that sells you a narrative only to come out years later being an asshole. And I think that's the problem with these like guru types or these people selling you courses mm -hmm. or it's not like every person who sells you a course is a bad person or every person who's a guru is a bad person, but there's a very specific. Raiders, if you write DGG for life one more time, I will ban you. Okay. I will ban you because that community, okay, I'm so sorry. Don't out yourself, okay? Just don't do it, okay? Just stop, okay? DG for life is not good here. You're basically saying like bullies for life, losers for life. Don't say that here. I don't want DGGers. If you're a hardcore DGGer, like for real, for real, come on. No memeing the DGG in my chat, bro. Nikki type. So she's got her ideas and she knows who her market is. So how exactly does Britney draw people into her community and sell her private calls? We've already covered that a lot of her fans are parasocially attached to her, and some of them might just come into her community through her sex work. But one thing Britney is very good at is avoiding accepting a label for what exactly her services. I'm just a content creator, bros. 
Like, why is that so hard for them? Why is that so hard for them, right? Sociologic in the chat says, Brittany, you're not allowed to share your life experiences online and build a community of people. It is wrong. I know. I know. <sighs> I know. Bizarre. She disagrees that she offers life coaching. So like, I don't see myself as a life coach, but like Destiny does. But then when I think of a life coach, I think of somebody who's like, let me help you through your problems to get from point A to point B, which I can't guarantee because I don't have a business like that. She doesn't think people are paying her for her friendship. I think when you're being paid to be a friend, that's different. So like, I, I wouldn't call Brittany a practitioner, but I would call like a chiropractor a practitioner. It, who's paying to be sense. someone's what about, friend? What about who's doing that? And of course, Brittany maintains that she is not your therapist. I'm not a therapist. Oh my God, how evil of me. <laughs> But I am a person who's gathered tools. <laughs> now, Brittany often says that she tries to maintain clear boundaries and expectations with regard to her not being a therapist. And in fairness to her, I believe she does make an effort. If I do get the vibe that they're coming to me for therapy, then that's the vibe of a, hey, bro, like just to clarify, you know, I'm not a college graduate. You know, I do not have a degree in therapy or psychology or whatever. Like I don't have a license. But this is another instance of Brittany talking out of both sides of her mouth. When it comes to what she says in her content, she flirts a little too closely with the line between therapy services. Oh my God. Okay, wait. People said, did you watch Dr. Kirk Honda talk about Dr. K? I did. And did you see, did you see the, um, oh, where did I put it? Oh, that's funny. Why do I have two tabs open? Did you see the comments on Dr. K's video about it? Oh my God. Did you watch Dr. Sorry, Dr. Kirkonda review Dr. K. Dr. I love Dr. Kirkonda. I've collabed with him. He's great. But he reviewed Dr. K's medical license stuff and he had a very compassionate and reasonable perspective. And the comment section was flooded with losers and it probably confused him so much because they're just like, Dr. K is a horrible person. I don't like the way he talks. It was so funny and whatever it is that she offers. Now, I'm not in therapy. I do philosophy work, right? Oh, and by the way, for people in the past that have over cross boundaries or feel very dangerous to me, I just block them. Sometimes I refund them. Sometimes I don't. It just depends. But yeah, I just block them. That's what I do. And I say, hey, we're not gonna do calls anymore. Sometimes they leave, okay? Sometimes it just goes different ways. We talk about politics. We talk about different things, social commentary in the videos, philosophy. Like I've had so many unique callers over the years and I've changed how I do calls as I've learned, right? Like I've changed how I do calls, obviously. And obviously I'm a content creator first and foremost. I don't want to do calls for a living. That's why there's only one left at the 250 level and no one has it right now. Because it's just there if you want to be like a supporter, like a sponsor of the content. Like, I want to contribute to Brittany Simon's content. Here's $250. Oh, and as a thank you, I get a call. And if that's too hard for you to comprehend, I swear to God, you have never worked a day in your life. You have no business, no training. You've never thought about sponsorships. Like with peace and love, these people are not grownups. They have never worked in a business. Where do you think I get these ideas to do this? From business classes, from other people's business practices, from the way that I see other content to content, content creators like operating. That's how I find out what's the way to do it, the way other people are doing it. I'm not the only person doing it this way. So like knowing yourself, working with the like, who is your consciousness? Like, what are you doing with your life? Like, this is what I do with my callers. And I'm not surprised that some of him my work and his work do overlap since he's on the philosophy train of like self-improvement as well as therapy, which are two different things. They just tend to overlap. See, two different things, but they tend to overlap. Just like yoga has an overlap with spirituality and philosophy and physical health sometimes. And I'd go so far as to say that it really seems sometimes like Brittany wants you to think of her as something of an alternative to therapy. Remember like therapists? That's crazy. Guys, how often do I say in this community, go to therapy? The assumption... The assertion he is making that I think I'm an alternative to therapy when I literally say, how do you become a whole human being? What's my saying, guys? How do you be a whole human being? Mental health, spiritual health. Spiritual philosophy help is different from mental health. Mental health, mental health is therapy. That's the thing I don't provide, okay? That's the thing I don't provide. I cannot help you with that. I'm not a therapist, the idea of taking me out of context so hard and painting me as I am the biggest fan of therapy. I think it saved my life. It literally was amazing. But 
It saved my life because I also had philosophy. I also had a good family background. I also had friends. I also had an ability to work. I had a lot of things that made it work. That's crazy that he's trying to paint me this way. With mental health. Um, and I think when you're going through levels of introspection, you're going <laughs> Hey, it says, it really seems, in quotes, is the level of journalism on YouTube, literally. And through something like more spiritual, more like about the, the humanhood of yourself. And therapists are legally like unable to always help you with that. <laughs> Kay says, um, if we stitched all the times you said go to therapy, it would be at least eight hours, literally. So that's why I recommend the one-on-one -on -one <sighs> calls. Check out Patreon. You might be able to find a spot. And though I am honored that lots of people mistake my channel for a therapy channel or mental health channel, most of my community is <laughs> more in the therapy space. Like we all watch the therapist on YouTube. Like we as a community watch those people, but we are not a therapy channel. Like he's acting like the fact that we watch therapy TikToks or watch people talk about their autism is us being that kind of channel. Like... That's the thing that his brain isn't doing that makes me laugh. Like, have you seen, you've seen a therapy channel, like a channel that isn't a therapist that talks about therapy stuff. We don't do that here. We review therapists, but I, my content is like a variety. I do variety content, obviously, but I don't want, I don't focus on mental health in that way. Like in that particular way, like, I don't know anything about the science of the brain in that way. Like Dr. Gurkanda is a scientist. He does research. Dr. Kate, they do research. Like, they're interested in, you know, they, studies and like, I don't do that. That's like therapy is very serious in my brain. It's like science. It's, you know, like you have to, get to go to school. You have to go to school. You can know things on your own, of course, but I would never try to be an authority figure. It just makes no sense to me. So of course, go to therapy, go to therapy guys. And like Dr. Kirk and stuff. And he's collab, he's come on my channel. And so I think we're all probably in the more progressive like therapy spaces, which is why we all probably, I misuse those words. Like even when we say like shadow work, shadow work is a term that, you know, is associated with Jung, who is associated as a psychologist and a philosopher. And so there's like a question about why do psychologists sometimes also overlap with philosophy? Because there's an overlap, but not all philosophers are therapists you know? And that's the difference is like a lot of therapists aren't philosophers, but some of them are. Jordan Peterson is called a philosopher all the time when he's technically not, but I guess now he is, right? Because anyone can be a philosopher. Not anybody can be a licensed medical therapist. And I am not a medically licensed therapist, nor do I have a desire to be. Thank you. It's too much and people think I'm a therapist, which I'm not. I just like love therapy stuff. But I know what it's like to want to unalive. Yep. And I also now know what it's like to no longer desire to unalive. And it's, shh, guys, I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's the best. So you can't say that Brittany is a life coach or a paid friend or a therapist or anything really, but she does want to be taken seriously. That's why it's always her work and not just her content. I like, well, that's the same thing, guys. Your work is your content. When I call it my work, I'm just saying my content. But when I say my content, I'm specifying a part of my content. So when I talk about like the levels, I think that's like more my special interest work. But when I say my content, I mean everything that I make, including my OnlyFans. But obviously, like if he's going to take an issue with that, you can take an again, you're pedestaling me. I am not pedestaling myself. So if you would like to pedestal me, I recommend you don't do that. I don't think you should pedestal anyone. My work, I love my work. Oh my God. What I love, and then my work also references the fact that like I'm a content creator in general. Like, hey, I'm going to work. I love my work. Like, I just feel like he's reading, they, okay, I'm an optimist that looks at the best in people. He is a pessimist who like, I think he like just sees malice where there isn't malice. Dude, I literally watch anime, hang out with my cat, make out with my wife, and watch like philosophy lectures all day. And then I stream. You can see everything on my Discord. You can see everything on my stream. Like, I'm not trying to hide anything, bro. I'm just trying to make money under this capitalistic hellscape. Okay. I'm just trying to enjoy my life and figure out retirement. Okay. Like, you're just, you're overthinking it. Go to therapy. Um, Soyaddle, thank you for the super chat. Says Kilo Sus pressed me for PV dirt and deleted his DMs. Pressed me for PV. What's PV? P -p -p Private videos? Dirt? No, PV. What's PV, guys? 
and deleted his DMs. Yeah, apparently this guy went around to my community members and like tried to find dirt on me. And like only, oh, this is the tea. He tried to find dirt on me. Okay, are you are you ready for the tea? I'll give you the tea now. I'll give you the tea early because it's so funny. Are you ready for the tea? So he showed up. He showed up on Tom's stream. Shout out to Tom Fullery. And had the audacity to be like, oh, I'll talk to Brittany. I could help her figure out how to brand herself better. Sir, men are so misogynistic. This man is so misogynistic. To come to somebody with a huge channel who makes more money, probably, who like does better in my bubble, and you have the audacity to be like, I can teach Brittany how to be better at her channel. Look at the way he reacts to the situation between Mantis and Tom. Shout out to Mantis and Tom for like handling this. You know, because they've been very critical of me, but I appreciate that they that they handled it really well. Okay. Oh, progressive victory. Sorry, super chat says Kilo Sus pressed me for progressive victory dirt and deleted his DMs. Yeah, because he makes like hit pieces. Okay, listen to the T. Listen to the T. Have you asked Brittany or found out what what she does? The audio is a little low, so she said, "Have you asked Brittany or found out?" say to these people when they call her you here let me rewind services it services and our one hour calls are confined to specifically this thing and you should probably not engage in other like roles or responsibilities outside of those calls with that person have you asked Brittany or found out what what she does say to these people when they call her like if she does delineate their role or if she does lay out the like the situation going in and out of these calls um it's no it's too hard to uh it's it, it first of all it's too hard to actually get people who um ha like are willing to talk about what it is that they talk about with Brittany in their calls to talk about it so he said it was hard to get people to want to talk to him about what we talk about in our calls oh and p.s i wonder if he figured out okay this is i don't know if you guys relay this do you know youtubers also are some of my callers do you understand that like people in corporate are also my callers do you understand that some of my callers literally like they're very successful. They're much older. They're like established. Like, I don't know if people understand, right? Like, I don't think people understand. My callers are grown ups. Okay. And so they're not going to want to talk to you about what happened in our calls because it's like a safe space and I respect their privacy. I'm not going to tell you who my callers are. But like, it's up to them if they want to share. But do you think maybe the only callers that are talking to you are ones who overstep their boundaries or that I had to block? Like, you got one person to talk to you, bro. Good job. Also, Big E, thanks for the super chat, but thanks for my mods for blocking the message. Apparently it was bad. I didn't see it, but thank you. I appreciate you. Got it. And beyond that, it was too hard for me to actually get evidence of the calls going. So he said it was too hard to get any evidence the way that they said they did because people could tell me like so my standard for the video was if two people told me the same thing then i could put it into the video so everything in the video has been okay corroborated to me by two people at least some of it was so everything that's in the video has been corroborated by at least two people wow ninety thousand subscribers a decade long time on youtube doing calls since 2015 and you found two people one of which overset my boundaries and consent and was upset that I put down boundaries and probably somebody else that I'm assuming I've blocked or didn't have any access to because I didn't want to talk to them again. Good job. Three. Um, but the problem so, with the one-on-one -on -one calls so you is you didn't I, find anyone. Quick, stop, stop. The, the problem with the one-on-one -on -one calls is I couldn't quote specifically how any of the calls go because all of them are one-on-ones. So I can't, you know, unless... I just love how you talk to her like a cat who's like barking up your leg. I'm sorry. It's like, stop, stop. Jeez. I'm just All saying, right. yeah. So, so obviously, well, just one calls, how they actually go, what she actually says, I can't corroborate that with more than one person. So, I didn't include any specific. So, he couldn't corroborate it with more than one person. Good job, bro. Except it's in the video. So, you didn't find any um, more than one person who complained about their experience and their confusion no, I did. and like, had some complaints? I did. I, I included Alondra in the video because I had screenshots that I could include in the video. No, I mean, I mean, I know there was one, and I know you you shared one screenshot out of like that didn't provide enough context. Personally, I didn't think it. Well, I don't know what, con what more context know, you want, but I don't know what more context you want, bro. The misogyny, bro. The misogyny. Sure. Um. Well, I mean. Well, so I mentioned that, well, like, I mean, when it came to the part where she says, 
um, obviously I'm not able to be, uh, I'm not able to like, uh, what, what did she say? I obviously we have boundaries on what what it is, uh, how much of a friend I can be. And I'm sorry if I can't like give you more than that. Um, and so my issue was, well, there's inferred like uh, like conversations already that have kind of like said what it means to be a friend. Mm -hmm. And so while she's saying, yes, I'm not going to be somebody's friend, it, it would make sense that outside of there in one on one context, they can actually define what that word means to where it's not going to be a general colloquial tent uh, like expectation that everybody else. OK, so P.S., the guy who made the video, Kilo, is that his name? So Tom wrote down notes on the screen, okay, of things Kilo had a problem with, dates and marries people in her community. It was one person, okay, that I married. I don't know if you know this. I'm monogamous. Blurry lines on friendships with clients. Um, client is like a loose word, but okay. Engages in sex work and advertises that on YouTube. So he's sex negative. So I, as an OnlyFans person, can't also be a YouTuber. She talks to mentally ill people, more risk. Um, you mean everyone on earth? I think everyone on earth has trauma and has mental health problems. Every single person It's just on a spectrum. And then it's a matter of how in recovery you are. And okay. That's the notes from Kilo personally. Okay. Else would expect where our friendship could be as deep as possible and as like boundless as possible where we, where we can talk about anything and it'll be as, uh, you know, as close as we want to be and that sort of thing. Right. I sorry, I don't know what the you kind of lost. I'm saying that I I'm I'm wanting um, that I would want I I feel like you took away that there wasn't enough boundaries on this friendship, and I'm saying there's like implied boundaries even just in the okay. in the Discord so, message. I understand if if you're a person who um t to my understanding um. Alondra enlisted her services specifically for uh, something related to uh, c either companionship or her like philosophy coaching, like her teaching her because they, like I said, they had a shared diagnosis. She thought she could learn from her, you know, what have you. Um, mm -hmm. She had a shared diagnosis because she was going to therapy. I don't know if she was still in therapy when we were talking, but you see how she has a diagnosis, which means she's gone to therapy. I am not therapy. Okay. If you're in that position where someone has... Uh, enrolled in your services for those purposes and they're a fan of yours who looks up to you who listens to you who you have influence over all those all those things the um there's an implied understanding of what it means to be a friend and all this like okay i did my best with what i could to respect her boundaries and deny her a close intimate friendship and she got mad at me over it i did exactly what he wanted me to do which was put to put down a clear boundary of like i can't be closer to you what he wanted me to do was say, I can never do this or I can do this. That's not how I operate. That's not how real life happens. Real life doesn't happen black and white. Wow. For a non-borderline person, you're a very black and white thinker, bro. Okay. I try to operate within reason for what is real life. At the end of the day, this girl can't come back into my life. I wish her the best. She was never a bad person. She just didn't like my boundaries. And the boundaries where I couldn't be as close to you as you wanted to be close to me. And I understand that's hurtful and that's painful. It's been two years and I've done better at creating a boundary with me and my audience, but to insinuate that every single person that signs up for my calls is always a fan who's a vulnerable person is bullshit because that's how networking works. Other YouTubers sign up for my calls to talk to me out of respect for my time or because they want to talk about philosophy with me? Are they my fans? Oh, because they like my work? Yes, I understand what he's saying and I do my best to block the people that I think have unhealthy attachments to me. That's all you can do. The insinuation that I want this to happen is so silly. I want all of my calls to go perfect with no issues. And when issues arise, I do something about it. Okay? Now, I want to take a pause right here really fast to just now that we've had a taste of a boy bubble giving their thoughts and opinions on me, look at how women reply to me and understand that the woman bubble is very interested in philosophy. 
very interested in astrology, spirituality, therapy, knowing people. We're big readers. A lot of us read. Okay. Look at the way podcasters from Do We Know Them? Okay. Larger podcast channel. You guys know them. They're great girls. They reviewed one of my videos on Leo Skeppy. Just listen to the way that they talk about the levels really fast and then understand that there's something about a very toxic boy bubble that exists on the internet that cannot handle that girls are interested in people and we deep dive into people's lives, boys, girls, they, thems. But this is the difference between the bubbles. Listen to the way the girls talk about my levels versus how the boys talk about my levels. So the boys are like, Brittany's manipulating her fans and Brittany's has a, a hierarchical system in which she is doing this thing for the, look at how girls talk about me. Fucking shit. Basically, it was someone commenting saying, hey, not only is this fat phobic thing very problematic, but you might want to look into Brittany Simon, who is a mm -hmm. YouTuber. Cool girl. Love She's her. Very She's smart. very nice. And they were very nice to me. Thank you. Nice to you too, beautiful girls. And she basically does live streams where she'll deep dive into certain things and her audience will kind of like, I don't know, just talk with her while she's looking into different things. It's um, very much focused around like a scale that she's come up with of um, yes. introspection and like self-awareness. Yes. And so I guess people sent her Leo Skeppi, like just told her about Leo Skeppi and were like, hey, I think you'd really like a lot of the stuff that he talks about because I guess on his podcast, is it a podcast? his videos on YouTube, his YouTube channel. He calls it a podcast, I think, but it's just him with a sure mic for like 30 minutes. Yes. So I don't know. Well, so, um, <laughs> and he talks a lot about like coming out of a dark place and like getting to the positive in life and like changing your perspective and how you view things. Correct. But, oh my God. Seriously, guys, what we're about to watch, no one's ready. Okay, right? Look at the differences between how the girls do it and how the boys do it, right? The girls are like, cool, her and her audience does this thing. It's really fun because I do think, I really do think in some girl queer book bubbles, we're like very interested in these things. And yes, sometimes it gets messy and there's drama, but that's, that's just life, right? Kay says it's great. It's wild how they understand it right away. Women are smart. <laughs> I can't tell if women are just smart or if this particular boy bubble is just dumb. Can you really not understand what's happening? Or do you just not read the way we read? Or are you not interested in people? They understood it right away. They summarized it perfectly. They understood the content. There was no confusion. What is so confusing? They watched a five hour live stream of mine, guys. Five hours straight. They watched this live stream I did of Leo Skeppy. Five hours. I talked about the levels. I talked about Leo. I talked about all these things. And their takeaway was, ah, cool girl. I love them. They're so smart. Why are boys so dumb? Not all boys. But this, why is this bubble of boys so dumb? How are they not, how are they not able to understand? Because I'm telling you, they're just uneducated. But instead of thinking, they're the uneducated ones. They go, Brittany girl, Brittany stupid. I boy, I smart. Boy, boy smart, girl stupid. They're misogynists. They're conspiracy theorists, theory, theorists, and they're misogynists, period. Okay, let's continue with his crap video because I have more receipts. My dream job, I love my work. This is where I think I excel in my work. My work is about understanding humans and why they do what they do. So God forbid a woman has work. God forbid a woman has work. God forbid. The original question, how does Britney lure in her vulnerable audience? The answer is by being whatever it is that they want her to be. You see, Britney avoiding having to call herself anything means that she can appeal to as many of these people as she needs to, to earn their money. Oh, Hayda says, I think these boys are committed to misunderstanding you. Oh, 1000%. Whether they need a mother, a friend, a coach, a spiritual guide. Brittany's got it all covered. Cam Cam says I hang out with the boy bubble and yeah, they're dumb, selfish, and don't read. I mean, damn. And the problem with this is that by not having to commit to any of these specific roles, she avoids responsibility for all of them. Maybe you call Brittany for advice and things haven't been going well. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Who fucking cares? They try something, it doesn't work. What does it matter? Maybe you call Brittany for support, like as a mother figure or a friend. Okay, hold on. I shared a very funny meme about this in the discord uh it says giving my bro advice but ending it with but i don't know though in case it ruins his life 
Yep. And if you have a problem with that, grow the fuck up. If you genuinely have a problem with that, grow the fuck up. If you ask another adult for input and you take an action and then you blame them for your actions, you better you better start explaining why you can't be trusted to make your own like actions. And then we can decide if we should put you in a facility. It is one thing to say, oh, this person was a bad influence in my life. And it's another thing to say, oh, if I ask somebody for advice, then they have to give me the right advice at every, not even your therapist can guarantee you that. Nothing can guarantee you the perfect advice or thoughtfulness back or conversation, okay? In my opinion, you should go to therapy. But like, I don't know though, like, you know, whatever, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I'm not your mom and you're not my best friend. And wow, take me out of context more, bro. Maybe in your private call with Brittany, she dissuades you from going to therapy like she allegedly did to Alondra, who suffers from severe BPD. I don't know why Brittany did this, but because she's not a therapist, she can't be held accountable for giving therapy advice to somebody like- I never gave therapy advice. I don't give therapy advice to people. See how he said I couldn't get anyone to talk about what happens in the calls except one person and this person, again- there was boundary issues. Okay, no problem. It happens. Even the best of us. I'm not going to punish her for having a bad day. And I'm not going to punish him for being ill-informed. But I will stand up for myself. With peace and love, you have no idea what you're talking about. If you sign up for a call from, from me and you're like, give me all the answers. Um, I don't have all the answers, but thank you for calling, I guess, and contributing to the content. If you call me and you're like, I want therapy advice. Well, you should have signed up for a therapist. If you call me and say, I'm really using this as therapy, I will block you, refund you, and you can use that money on a therapist. Okay, here's a warning right now. Do not call me and think I am your therapist. Okay, because that wouldn't make any sense for you to do that. And if you do that, I will block you and you will never be able to call me or join my Patreon again. That's why I block people because I don't have to deal with you in the future. Bye. You're the one who crossed the boundary. You're the one who's blocked. Alondra. Brittany lures in her mentally ill and vulnerable fans by being able Stop. See how he makes this assertion? What about all the YouTubers who pay for my calls? What about all the people in corporate? What about all the people that are educated? What about all the literally, like, what about all the successful people? You couldn't even get, out of all the calls I've done for 10 years, nine years, the worst you could pull up on me was a girl who wanted to have more of a relationship with me and I said no, so she got mad at me. That's the worst thing you could bring up, bro. Why do you keep asserting that my audience is vulnerable? Why do you do that? Be able to offer them anything they need at the point in their lives that they come across her content. But she wants it both ways. She wants to play mother, play life coach, and play therapist. But she doesn't want the responsibility of actually being any of these things. This whole... <laughs> No, Amaris says, are people with BPD handicapped now? Are you supposed to interact with somebody? How are you supposed to under, uh, interact with somebody with BPD because they're just humans to me? I have BPD. Was this BPD on BPD crime? Who's more vulnerable? Is the borderline what makes you vulnerable? Or is it maybe your morals? Look, borderline doesn't make you a bad person. Your morals do. Let's be real. Okay. Autism, borderline, cultural differences, all of this make you act weird. You will put so much responsibility on me and none of the boy streamers you actually shouted out. How dare he shout out Destiny in this video as somebody who does a good job at his job and tells me I do a bad job at mine when Destiny is known as the parasocial bridge burner. Even Abba called him on stream and said, why did you burn the bridge with Britney? You met her one time. People ask like, what's your problem with Britney? I don't get it. You've never done that to someone before. Apparently I'm the first person he's ever burned a bridge with like himself. Congratulations to me. I, where's my trophy? I guess. And my theory is because he told me things in private that he's probably never told anybody. And look, I've, I haven't told anybody. It's not on the internet. And even though these sneaky YouTubers try to figure out what it is, go kick rocks. But maybe it's because he did tell me things. And maybe he felt really close to me, but see how he's the one misinterpreting the relationship. Just because you told me stuff about your life doesn't mean we're like very close. I'm trying to see him with the benefit of the doubt. And I'm not going to tell his secrets to the internet because it's not up to them. But the fact that these things happen and this content creator has the right, like the audacity to be like, Destiny's reasonable. Destiny is the one who literally burned a bridge with me over nothing. Okay. Literally. Raiders cat. I don't know why you keep arguing with the story. Did you not watch my nine hour stream on this? Like I literally covered every detail. It is true. My side of the story 
is that I had an opinion I've always had. Destiny burned the bridge out of nowhere. And if any of you can't see that, it's because you're buying into the narrative that he is spinning, that I am simply a borderline girl who got sensitive about a rape conversation when that never happened. It never happened. And if you go back and watch those videos and watch Kyla smother Destiny because of her internalized misogyny, which to shout out to Kyla, we all suffer from, independent women suffer from internalized misogyny. She sits there and says, Destiny's so logical, Britney's in her emotions, when I am literally the one calmly sitting down explaining my side and Destiny's literally burning a bridge. People will watch Myron break a TV on stream and yell and literally say he is logical and women are emotional. This is like fresh and fit making a video about me and being like, women are so emotional. Well, Myron literally throws tantrums on stream. Don't with your misogyny. Don't with your misogyny, please. Yeah, 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 it says he's passionate. Men are passionate and women are crazy. Please with your misogyny. I was calm and fucking collected during all of those breakdowns. So you can kick rocks if you literally think I was the one blowing up when it was literally the men. It was literally the men. Okay, Mingo, thank you for joining memberships. I appreciate, appreciate that a lot. Listen, I'm a woman. It's hard. And I know I'm one of the few women in this particular space who do what I do. Good thing I'm patient and can go through the receipts. And good thing my audience is mostly women. Because the truth is, we sit here and we look for the truth. The men do the laziest research I've ever seen. The laziest research I've ever seen. This is men's contribution to the world. No, thank you. No, thank you. Colleen says your opinions have never changed. He had just never watched your content, so he didn't know your opinions. Literally. Literally. Spooky says Destiny gaslighting himself that you were gaslighting him. Literally. Okay, this fear is ableist and misogynist and they're conspiracy theorists. You need to chill. Okay, you need to chill. So here I am taking my time to go through the content because you obviously didn't. You obviously didn't even try. And don't worry, I'll be talking about more men in this video and how they're constantly taking me out of context because they're too dumb to know what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and keep going because I have receipts. Well, like anyone who's trying to sell you a way to do anything without the responsibility of the action you take, anyone who's trying to sell you anything, any belief system that's trying to guarantee you something, Thank you for joining, uh, or no, thank you memberships for two months. Paradoxical, paradoxical me with the bubble emoji. We'd love to see it. Thank you so much. Hey, is this not proving bubbles right now? This is bubbles, you know, without the responsibility that comes with it. Oh, okay. This is my favorite part. Are you great? Oh my God. The receipts for this are so good. Create a secret language. Chapter four. I'm finding it hard to understand a lot of points you were making. I'm really enjoying the streams, but at the same time, it feels like we are speaking completely different languages. We probably are. You know, there are people that hate when I say we're speaking different languages. It like triggers them. And they're like, what the fuck is she talking about? Nobody speaks different languages. And I'm like, yeah, we do. Even if we speak English, we're absolutely, absolutely using words differently. See how I feel like I know the bubbles make so much sense because in order for us to have this conversation, we have to acknowledge a difference of perception. Are you ready? So acknowledging a difference of perception <laughs> means radically mm -hmm. accepting that we are using language differently, even if we all speak English. So now that Brittany started building her community, her next step is to keep them coming back. After all, $10 a month to access her Discord server is good, but it's even better if she can book out all of her monthly calls. Which are literally, <laughs> he's so, that's what I mean, babes, babes, Habibi. Am I punching down right now? Am I talking to a certified redacted person? What are you doing, bro? Look at his own research. He literally shows I have no calls booked out for 250 a month. He literally goes to keep her calls booked out. Literally no calls are booked out at the 250 level. Rip to research, bro. Okay, hold on. I have, This is so funny. Wait until I show you. Access her Discord server is good, but it's even better if she can book out all of her monthly calls. When you're building a fan base, a good way to keep your members loyal is to make them feel like they belong somewhere. If you can instill a sense of exclusivity, that's even better. I mean, it can be cool to feel like you're part of a club or even a movement, rather than just a viewer of somebody. There are a variety of ways to do this, and usually there's nothing wrong with it. Most creators give their fan base a nickname, they sell merchandise, things like that. But one common method that influencers or groups can use to build shared identity 
is by creating a secret language. A secret language. Dun, 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 a secret language. Dun, 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 dun. These are generally words or phrases that don't really mean anything to people outside of the group, but within the group, they're kind of like a handshake. Ooh. Often these languages consist of reductive thought terms. Oh, I looked so hot in this video. Oh my God, bro, look at my tits. Yo. Phrases that communicate the group's ideas, kind of like slogans. A good example of this in everyday conversation is when people say it is what it is. It doesn't really mean anything. It literally, bro, if you don't know what this means, you might be an idiot. And with, I mean that in the most respect, it is what it is. Who doesn't know what that means? Guys, who doesn't know what that means? What bubble are you in? It is what it is. Who doesn't know what that means? Is he, is he autistic? What is going on here? I know when people don't like it. I know when people have problems with it. What is this? It is what it is. Who doesn't know what that means? He literally just said, that doesn't mean anything. It's not a secret language, bro. Uh-uh. Ryle Rittenhouse? A Ryle Kinhouse? No, no, no. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. All of those Kyle Rittenhouse usernames, block them. Apparently, he's an editor for this guy or, or for JSTOC or somebody. I don't want them in my audience because that Kyle Rittenhouse or Rittenhouse or whatever his name was on Tom's stream. And he was like accusing me of stealing philosophies and like accusing me of all these things, but couldn't prove it. And I was like, shut up, bro. Okay. So he says it is what it is. And it sort of prevents any further critical thinking about the topic. Or a good group example is Donald Trump's favorite. <laughs> Discourse said first time learning about figurative language. <laughs> Literally. Discourse says he doesn't. Wait, hold on. Discourse says he doesn't know how many there are. It just shows how many are remaining. He may be assuming there are 30, 250 calls. Guys, Patreon shows you how many there are based off of the number. There's only one call spot at the 250 level and nobody has it right now. Okay. So Patreon would show you one of five. So I only allow one spot for the 250 call and up to two spots to keep track of my timing. So he probably thinks there's like 30 calls. There's not. There's not. Okay. Mantra. Make America great again. You get to be open, but have boundaries. I'm open, but I have boundaries, right? So we say, he's mad that I have slogans. Yo, this man is outrageous. Often on this channel, I'm open, but I have boundaries. Going back to a classic mantra on this channel. I'm open, but I have boundaries. I'm open, but I have boundaries. And if I've learned anything from my work, it's that humans are gonna human. And again, in order for me to radically accept that humans were gonna human, which is like a big slogan on this channel, I am a radical acceptance person. I think humans are gonna human. I think all of us live in different bubbles and the world is mostly in their bubbles and we're all in bubbles, all of us, even me. I call it like cultural bubbles, ideological bubbles. And then I think about like the individual's bubble. So the philosophy bubble is different, it's global. Okay, bubble. Bubble is the word that triggers all of them, right? Okay, bubble is the word that triggers all of them. Have you seen this video? This is a video where Yale professors basically talk about bubbles really, really well. I'm Catholic. Okay, look at this. So everyone gets mad at bubbles. In my online bubble, everything's wonderful. Inside of these, these blue bubbles where everyone's gone insane. Information bubble. I'm not saying your bubble. How they are, how they live their life, like their bubble. It's an issue because the bubbles have gotten so large and they're encompassing so many people now. And you're expected to have like a similar set of beliefs between all of these different people now that might live in totally different places. That's, I think, a, a big issue. <laughs> bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. So just to clarify, all these people are in my bubble cult. All these people are in my bubble cult because they know the secret Britney bubble language. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm really everywhere. Look at me taking over every bubble. I'm using language that people have used time and time again, but when Britney uses it, it's a conspiracy. Why? But when they use it, it's just what? The difference is I don't think people hear themselves when they talk about it. When I say a bubble, I'm actually literally thinking about it. You're not thinking. You're just talking. You never think about what you're saying. You never think about what you're actually saying. And I take a second to go, what does it mean to use the word bubble? And you guys are like, don't think about it. Just use it. And then you have the audacity to say that I'm the idiot. You don't even know what you're saying. And you use it all the time.
And then I sit there and think, yeah, wait, we're saying something that's pretty profound. Why don't we talk about it? What if we all do live in bubbles? And we do. And then you have the audacity to be like, mm, Brittany's stupid, me smart. You don't even know what you're saying and it's coming out of your own goddamn mouth. What a fucking bubble, bro. And every bubble talks about things differently. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. I could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Ooh, I like that he used the same video I just showed you, but without Destiny saying bubble or Jordan Peterson saying bubble or any of the other YouTubers I showed doing bubbles. I like how we purposely left out his boy saying bubbles. You know? Wow. God, I... Yo. I get it. Oh, God. Boy bubbles are just rip. Vienna with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says love being in the bubble cult. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> bubble cults in the chat, guys. The bubble emoji in the chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. How exhausting are these bubbles, bro? Okay. Brittany is actually pretty good at drilling her messaging into her viewers' heads. Her favorite phrase, humans are going to human, is plastered all over her channel and is on her merchandise. It is. And bubbles is in the title of almost every single one of her live streams. But again, the problem here is that Britney's language is highly reductive and thought terminating. Humans are going to human is essentially synonymous with it is what it is. And she uses bubbles. Discord says you trigger them so much. I just think they're stupid. Like they genuinely can't keep up in the conversation and it makes them mad. They cannot fathom that a girl is smarter than them. And they know that I am because I literally prove them wrong. Time. Oh, just wait. I have more receipts of more boys trying to think they're smarter than me but they don't even understand the conversation. They are on their ABCs. Well, I'm literally, ma'am, please do not contribute to a conversation when you don't understand it, okay? Bubbles to simply mean different walks of life or different environments. This turns into an issue when it comes to evaluating people's behavior and issuing proper criticism of others. As I mentioned earlier in the video, her adherence to these phrases and ideas leave- <laughs> Listen, listen. Leaves her often ineffective at analyzing some of the topics she covers. Just listen to her thoughts on murder, for instance. But you do make some prescriptions, right? You do think that it's wrong to murder people. You think it's wrong <clears throat> to steal from people. You would probably prescribe those things to people. But think about the nuance of murder itself, right? I have four military brothers. Sometimes you have to do things you wouldn't do in civilian life, right? So we discuss murder, the nuance of murders. I'm a progressive. They consider the genocide happening in Palestine a murder. Pro-lifers consider aborting babies murder. What I'm trying to do is get people to understand the words they use don't mean the same thing in every bubble. Pro-lifers literally think you're murdering. That's why they want to imprison women for having abortions. They think it's murder. So when you say you're against murder, right? Well, not if I'm talking to a pro-lifer. Because if I'm talking to a pro-lifer and I say I'm anti-murder, they're like, so you're pro-life. No, I'm pro-choice. But if you're a pro-lifer who thinks abortion is murder, then... This is, I'm trying to get people to understand language isn't what you think it is. Of course, I'm anti-violence and anti-murder. But obviously, if you're a pro-lifer and you think abortion is murder, then there's a question of why do pro-lifers get to go around thinking abortion is murder to such a point that they will kill abortion doctors. OK, remember Taylor, the baby killer? Or they literally are taking away women's rights right now because they think you're murdering babies. You're obviously ending a pregnancy, but you're not a murderer. Obviously, if you're a military soldier, you're not always murdering people if you kill people. Just because you're in war doesn't mean you're murdering people. But God, it feels like it. Connor says people think euthanasia is murder, and then people think that's murder. So obviously, I'm a philosophy person. You can't possibly sit there and think, Brittany's so stupid. You're not even having the conversation you think you're having, bros. How dare you think I'm the idiot when you don't even know how nuanced and complicated these conversations can get because you're dumbing them down. You are literally dumbing down the conversation and being like, Brittany is an idiot. She doesn't know what murder is. Alex says murder is a legal term. Murder is a legal term that we use socially in communities to convey something. All of our terms have context. Murder makes sense within context. It's all context. Words are context. 
So who am I talking to and what do I believe? I, Brittany, think what we're doing in Palestine is evil. I think what we did to Japan is evil. I think most people are in their evil, not in their good, and yet most people are good. I think most people need to be towards their joy. I think a lot of things, that language, it won't make sense if you just hear me saying it. You got to ask what I mean. But the dilemma is, depending on who I'm talking to, and look, I'll get better at this, okay? I'll pledge allegiance to getting better at this. I will try to figure out where you're from and talk to you in your language, but you obviously can't talk to me and mine because you're dumb. I'm sorry. How dare you be such a fucking misogynist and think the girl in the conversation doesn't know what she's talking about because you don't know how words work. Now, I will work hard, I will, to try to figure out where you're coming from and talk to you how I can. But I have to do that emotional labor because you can't figure out what a philosophy conversation is because you keep trying to have a political one. Stop having political conversations, which are about the law. Philosophy and the law have a relationship, but I'm interested in what it means to be a person. And that means you have to explore the nuances. Why do we think destroying human life is bad, but then we justify it in these ways? Okay? Alex says it's easier to attack your character than your argument. I mean, hello. Here we are. Discord said these kinds of guys are why I never felt comfortable with philosophy in academic spaces. Exactly why these kinds of spaces are dope. Literally, the way women do philosophy is like we're really exploring ideas. Men are just trying to be right. Men think philosophy is debate. Yes, philosophy, some of it is about debate, but a lot of people and a lot of men, okay, a lot of Western men, a lot of Eastern styled men, obviously know philosophy is more. That's why they try to attack Dr. K because he's brown and because he does Eastern philosophy and the Western boys are not, are just too stupid to get it. So they get mad at him and they go, he's woo woo. Uh, Dr. K is woo woo. Dr. K doesn't know what he's talking about, but you know who does? My, my, my philosophers like Marcus Aurelius who had little boy slaves. Oh yeah, they're super smart. But shut the fuck up, bro. You're allowed you to mean, take yeah. the life. Well, like, murder that's is the problem. Just killing. Where mm. it's like, I kind of think war is unjust. I tell you right now, I'm getting ready to go murder my family. I hate my kids and my wife and everybody. You're just gonna be like, humans gonna human or what? Well, obviously, again. Well, I belong to a society, right? Like I choose the countries I live in. I try to live in a place that's closest to my values. And I live in countries where like that's not allowed. And I agree with that prescription. But I also would understand if somebody was born into a different country where that's allowed, why people wouldn't understand why that's wrong. Like humans gonna human is like a saying that helps you as an individual not freak out when you see the world doing things that make you feel icky. It's like this is a universal experience. Even Kyla fell into the trap of thinking this had to do with my borderline. This is helpful to all people. But all people feel this anxiety, guys. That's why they don't know what to do with you. That's why they attack your character because they don't understand you. And so you haven't fully accepted that people don't revolve around you. Like the world doesn't revolve around you. Okay. And look, I'm not trying to talk crap on Kyla. I'm just, you know, I get it. But like, even when she asked me during these conversations, like, oh, do you think the levels are about your borderline? Why would that, if I never told you I had borderline, why would you think I would come up with a level system? Do you look at other philosophers who have level systems and you're like, they must have borderline? No, because they're men. And because you don't know if they have borderline. The The fact that everything I do has to, has to be around my borderline is the misogyny and ableism. Misogyny and ableism is riddled in these communities. God forbid a person just accomplish anything. God forbid I just figured out something that worked. Like, God forbid I have a mind of my own instead of just like the borderline girl. Cool. Good job, guys. Like, hold on. They're being very human and they're doing a very human thing. Sin is human, right? Murdering is human. Raping is human. Everything we do is human. Because like, <laughs> Discord says your levels is because of your autism. Uh-uh, I don't have a diagnosis yet. But maybe. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. A lot of philosophers probably are autistic. Let's be real, bro. Humans are what they are. Maybe Brittany is just too enlightened. And I just need to introspect True. more to realize that you shouldn't freak out about normal human things like rape and murder. No, no, no. You can freak out. Never said you can't freak out. I'm just saying freaking out is a decision. That's why That's why Robert Sapolsky, whose book I just finished about determinism, okay, this is a deep conversation. People always think Robert Sapolsky is saying like, you can't be held accountable for your actions because you don't have free will. I'm not saying that. He's not saying that. Neither of us are saying you can't be upset. 
We're saying you shouldn't punish people and torture them because they hurt you. God forbid that I think you should be kind to people even when they hurt you. Be angry. But does your anger justify you harming people and then saying you have the moral higher ground, like the high ground? Defend yourself, but don't stab a bitch in the eye. That's why Gypsy Rose was so controversial. Is Gypsy Rose's murder of her mother self-defense or does she just murder somebody? Well, maybe a little bit of both, but it wasn't right. It doesn't make it right to murder somebody, okay? But that's why I told Rashad during that conversation, if I have to self-defense take someone's life, I'm still gonna honor their life and acknowledge that I took it. It's about being honorable. It's about saying like, wow, nature really just met itself and I'm glad I won, but also how devastating that we couldn't have just talked it out. How devastating that it came to violence. But let's look at one example of this worldview showing up in her content. This is Katie Bugs. Katie is a small Twitch Oh, I've got receipts for this, bro. Streamer, who's most well known for this video from March of 2024, in which she accuses larger Minecraft streamer, George Not Found, of sexual assault. My story is about power and age and consent. The video attracted quite a bit of attention and generated lots of coverage, including a response from George, who defended himself and pointed out some inaccuracies with Katie's story. I was very cautious about it and making sure that she was comfortable throughout the process. So I had Dream reach out to get some clarification on it. So they replied back and essentially just said that it was an accident and that Katie had gotten confused on who said what. One creator who covered the situation was Lyrix, who pointed out some falsehoods that Katie made and defended George's perspective. She's literally just lying through her teeth. She's just lying. She gets caught in a lie. She makes another lie and just keeps compiling lie after lie after lie. Now, I won't give too much of my own opinion on the topic, but there were several holes in Katie's story and Lyrix's coverage was perfectly reasonable. If you want to know more about the situation, there's a link to Lyrix's coverage in the description below. Brittany Simon, however, made this video. In it, she's repeatedly dismissive towards Lyrix and denigrates him because of his age, essentially saying he's too immature to have a valid outlook on the situation. He's a baby boy, can't rent a car, can't do shit he wants, can't run for president. Which, by the way, according to this tweet from Brittany, her birthday is around May of 1989, making her 34 years old at the time of this video, mm -hmm. which means she's also too young to run for president. Whoa, bro, pwned, based, whoa, holy shit, <laughs> holy shit, I mean, damn, son. <laughs> but I digress. So yeah, Brittany was super condescending towards lyrics. Okay, so he's a baby. He doesn't know. Like he doesn't so know. So my biggest crime is that I'm condescending, so I must be running a cult. Bro. Things. It's okay. If he watches my video, maybe he'll learn a lot. But yeah. <laughs> so lyrics and Brittany agreed to debate the situation between Katie and George a few days later. This conversation is a masterclass in how to avoid taking a hard stance on an issue. And you know what's funny? So I reached out to this kid. And I said, hey, I don't want to debate you. I don't debate people, but I'm happy to have a discussion. And he goes, no, I have to put debate in the title because it's better for views. He used me for views. G good for you, bro. But you're not interested in having the conversation, but also you couldn't even have it if you wanted to. But you know what's even worse? The other men in the communities that also couldn't have the conversation because they, they're, I'm sorry, with all of the deepest respect I have, you obviously don't know what you're talking about. And I'll cover that in a second and endlessly excuse poor behavior. She said it was just a typo in her script. That is a provable lie. That's what I just proved. Okay, hold on. Let me think about this. Is it, yeah, my brain is like, and again, this is like, this is why my channel is like a philosophy channel. Because we're like, what do you, what does this mean? What does, a, what does this mean when people say this? I'm okay with, with it being obviously possibly a lie. For sure, 1000%, right? I just don't know if it was internally a lie. But if it would help, I can concede and say that I could see why this could be considered a lie. I'm just, I couldn't gun to my head if they're like, what's Katie lying? Like, I wouldn't know how to answer that question. And I know this might sound like a dismiss, but it, it really is context. Um, not everyone cuddles the same or spoons the same. Well, again, I, I think we, I think the problem is like, we agree Katie did something, Katie miss, well, I think we just don't agree that Katie's being intentional. I don't know that. I can't know that. Like, I know- I was not intentional. Like she knew it was wrong and she let it be continued to be spread. Because it benefited her. But remember, everyone is in their own bubble. Okay. <sighs> Do you see this? Look at this thumbnail from Papa Gut. And Papa Gut, I'm so sorry. With the deepest respect, I don't know what kind of channel you're running or what kind of audience you have. And I know a lot of your members don't like me, so I'm sure you're doing it for money. But Papa Gut and I 
I thought had a good relationship, but I get it. Views. He puts on his thumbnail, Katie Bugs is innocent. Okay, right? Well, I know Lyrics doesn't think Katie Bugs is innocent. And I know Papa Gut definitely doesn't think Katie Bugs is innocent. And I know George said, don't go after Katie Bugs because I understand her perspective. And I know Katie thinks she's innocent. But hmm, who do you think Papa Gut is implying said that Katie Bugs is innocent? Hmm, who is the person that's going to take the brunt of the heat for a quote or a saying that has nothing to do with me. It's me. He made a thumbnail that puts me in a position to take the brunt from his audience because they're going to come in with this idea that I said Katie Bugs was innocent when I never said she was innocent. Right? So that's fine if you want to be like that. Okay. But I think it's interesting that, that that's the decision he decided to make as a YouTuber kind of disappointing. I never said this. And now every comment is about how like, I think Katie Bugs is innocent. Brittany defended Katie Bugs. And then he even titled it, Brittany Simon runs hard defense for Katie Bugs in debate. It's because you want to punish Katie. So these men want to punish this 19 year old girl. Okay. Uh Oh, hold on. I stopped streaming. Hold on. Frames dropped. Am I still here? Chat? Let me know. Uh Oh, Uh Oh, hold on. Says I dropped stream. Hold on. Coming back. Coming back. Hold on. Okay. I should be back. Right? Okay. I'm back. Okay. So I know Papa gets a good person. So I'm not saying he's a bad person. Okay. I am in no way saying this is a bad person. I'm saying interesting, interesting decision you made to do this. And this is the second time he's done a story on me and didn't clarify my position in a way that I thought he understood. But then I wondered... Does Papa Gut even understand what I'm saying? And no offense, you do not. So let me give you an example. And every okay, so, and this is just me proving that the boys in these bubbles with, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, you cannot keep up with the conversation I'm having and you keep thinking Brittany's a girl and she's silly and she's these levels and oh, she's such a little crystal girl with her bubbles. Oh my goodness. You're not getting the conversation, but don't you love the way you put yourself on, on top? Okay. I like you, Papa Gut, but I'm so sorry with peace and love. Okay. You did me dirty with that thumbnail. So I'm about to point out some flaws in your thinking. Okay. Everything seems pretty normal. And she also said they were group cuddling. A lot of people can like said that too. They were group cuddling. On the what the fuck did they, when did they say they were group cuddling? They literally said in the messages that there were multiple people on the couch, all cuddling together. What? Okay. Couch. That's very normal. I've group cuddled with my friends. I've slept in the same bed as my friends. That's fucking, just, that's just bizarre behavior to me. But I That's bizarre behavior to cuddle with your friends. So Papa Gut gets to be the arbiter of what's normal, which proves my bubble theory. Everyone thinks they're the most normal. Everyone thinks they're average. Everyone thinks they're the normal guy next door. So he sees me telling my lived experience and he goes, that's bizarre behavior. But what's your evidence that you're not the one living the bizarre behavior? Right? And remember that I like Papa Gut, but he's a little ableist. He has OCD and, and ADHD, and he's always talking about how YouTube is easy and no one shouldn't complain. And like, if he can do it, you can do it. I'm so sorry that we don't deal with our neurodivergence in the same way, but I think it's really fucked up when other neurodivergent people expect everyone to live at their level because they're not having an embodied experience of somebody else's experience. Look, I get it. You're like a guy and you're like, oh, I'm tough. I got problems, but I figure it out. And I love that. But this is why I talk to girls and boys who are okay saying, fuck, it was really hard for me to organize today. It was really hard for me to take a shower today. It was really hard for me to even focus today. And I really wish I didn't struggle on in this. Instead of saying, well, I can do it. Why can't you do it? Because we're not all the same. Okay. We're not all the same. Okay. And for you to say like, I'm the one who knows in 8 billion people on a planet of 8 billion people, you don't know. So I like him, but he's, he's just that kind of guy, right? He's in that guy bubble where he's kind of a centrist, but a little bit left, but like pro-Israel, but also he's Jewish. I get it. Like it's a whole thing. Okay. I get it. But the way he talks about like making content so easy, I'm so glad it's good for you, bro. Peace and love. Okay. So Here's what he says moving on. And again, I want you to pay attention to how we talk about people and how they talk about people. 
but okay. I've done camping trips with my friends. That is it normal like to normal. is it normal to group cuddle someone you've known for two nights who's the opposite sex? No, it's not. I can understand women like group cuddling with other girls. This is a straight man perspective. So a so a straight bubble perspective is like. Oh, I could imagine a bunch of women cuddling, but not a bunch of men and women cuddling. What about non-binary people? What about queer people? The world doesn't revolve around your heterosexuality in every bubble, bros. I mean, it does literally in some ways, but not in every. So you're talking to a queer woman who's neurodivergent, who's a Syrian, who grew up in a completely different bubble, right? I'm giving my lived experience of the possibility of what Katie, with all these other neurodivergents are going through, who are also queer, the Minecraft community bubble is queer and neurodivergent. And I'm saying, what if they're just group cuddling? What if they're just all hanging out on the couch? <laughs> Alice's heteronormativity is a cult. I said it. There you go. True. Girls and like it being normal. I see jokes that people make about how like, oh, we have to we have to dis dismiss the lesbian allegations because we're too affectionate with each other kind of thing. Like, I get that. But when it comes to another guy, you know what you're doing. There's just no fucking way. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. It comes to some random fucking stranger. You're going to sit there and cuddle. There's no fucking way that you're attracted. Why not? This is so funny. Too. It depends on the cultural bubble. Um, if you're sex positive, sure. If you're like, sex maybe positive. It's probably, and then he laughs at the sex positive because like they don't get it. Love your sex and because they don't get it, they think I'm stupid. Sex positive and you're cuddling a lot. Like, yeah, that would. Okay. Atheist would... probably. So he's thinking sex positive means like horniness or something. And it doesn't, right? Because he's like, well, if you're sex positive and you're cuddling, like, <laughs> right? Like, what's wrong with, like, spooning, right? Is there anything inherently bad about it? Nothing bad about it. But, like, just to be clear, touching skin to skin is, like, an affectionate maneuver, always. In different cultures. Arab men, they are showing affection by kissing double cheek, but they're not making a sexual, they're not making a sexual advance on you. Cut Touching? in a lot of cultures is normal. They're hugging, they touch, they're always hugging. They're not making a sexual advance on you because they're touching. Sometimes a, a sexual advance is indicated by the touch and sometimes it's not. That's all. That's all. So there's, not, there's nothing wrong, but that does give the right. context that they are interested in each other. If you're spooning. It doesn't always give the... Spooning with somebody is not always, I'm interested in you. And that's, that's what I mean by pop the bubble. Stop thinking your lived experience is the only lived experience. It's not. Other people are having different experiences. Maybe. It yeah, no, always. That's what the guy's going to think. Depends. See, that's what the guy is going to think. The guy is going to think you're cuddling or spooning with me. You must be into me. Some guys will think that. Some guys won't think that. I've spooned people I am not interested in, right? People have spooned me. This has got to be like five. This has got to be a very low percent of humanity. We're yeah. A low percentage of 8 billion people on the planet. We, ha we haven't even started to grasp how many people are operating this way. And it's probably not a low percentage, by the way. Yeah. Well, that's the thing we're talking about. I and think I we are talking Katie. about it. Well, we are talking about a very unique part of society, right? Streamers, successful. No. Yes. <laughs> Queer and neurodivergent. This guy's fucking me up. No, I don't. Uh... <laughs> No. But do you think that I don't think that most streamers are cuddling for funsies? I don't know. They're one percenters. They are not normal society. They are kids. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they have like they're that different when it comes to that. Yes, it's it because does. you're a streamer doesn't And you know what? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. It is so common to have like if I if you do cons or VidCon or any of those things, you would be amazed at how much cuddling and canoodling happens at those events. Now, Papa Gut, to be fair, he's been open in the past, but he's monogamous now. He just probably has never gone to these social events. Lyrics definitely probably hasn't. Like, these people have no lived experience, and they're looking at somebody who's like, L like I'm, I'm having a lived experience, and we're telling you it's happening, and you can't handle it. You can't handle it. Tara says cuddling doesn't give a man permission to have sex with you, oh, but in their bubble it does. That's what they're saying. And I'm saying it doesn't. And I'm saying plenty of guys know that. And plenty of guys will also make the mistake of thinking it does. And you just talk about it. Look, like I said with Katie, George probably misunderstood you. You both didn't have the intent to hurt each other, but it happens. Right? It happens. So let's talk it through. And by the way, have you noticed that Katie took down her videos? Have you noticed that Katie's trying to move on with her life? Maybe she saw a video of mine. 
and thought, you know what? I'm going to take down these videos. George said he understood why Katie thought that. He empathized with her experience. And these men decide, no, Katie's the villain. This 19-year-old person in an awkward situation or 18 or freshly, whatever she she was. You know what I mean? So again, she took her videos down. She's trying to mind her fucking business. Leave her alone. George said, leave her alone. So why are you bothered? Why are you taking this stance when everybody involved is telling you, you guys are getting it wrong? Kind of funny, huh? They want to shame women because they're misogynists. Does it mean that you're typically, I don't know, cuddling? <laughs> I don't know if Papa Gut's a misogynist, but I mean a little bit, right? Like a little bit because he's dismissing the perspective because it doesn't fit his narrative. It's kind of misogyny. I don't know. I understand that they're different, but that doesn't make everything about them different. <laughs> well, no way. Kids who were stuck during COVID in their high school years, their kids who are chronically online, they're not normal kids. And allegedly some of them are neurodivergent. They're especially, I know, I know. Uh, uh, is she one of them? What's his name? George dream. dream dream especially is neurodivergent but like and queer in what way and is it meaningful enough to justify this I don't okay. see the problem is is Papa Guts neurodivergent too so he'll use his lived experience and project it onto everyone else and that's the mistake he's making which I think is very common and I'm not calling him bad because he's doing that I just think he's making a huge mistake by assuming because he's neurodivergent everybody's having that neurodivergent experience and that's just not the case right Okay. That's what I mean. I don't think we're talking about average kids. I think we're talking about a very select. Just because somebody might be different in one way doesn't mean that like every boundary and like typical boundary goes away. Um, I just don't believe that. A sure. group of inexperienced, naive, socially awkward people who don't oh, know good. exactly what the rules are. I mean, I hear what you're saying for other contexts, but I feel like you have to reach such a high bar of evidence to dismiss that they were cuddling and spooning to say this isn't inherent. Yeah, I, I really, I feel like this is like along the lines of like, is incest a good or bad conversation on the internet? Like everybody knows that like if you're cuddling like this, that that's- Ooh, everyone knows, all 8 billion people on the planet, everyone knows- if Katie's coming from a very safe girl bubble that's used to cuddling with her friends and something happens differently. Now, again, in my opinion, it was good that Katie took down her videos. But you guys keep attacking this girl as if she should know everything. You're holding her more accountable than you're holding yourself with your judgments because you think you're better. It's generally going to lead to some other behavior. To say that it, I, I, it's a, it's a stretch. That there's a, this is one of the things where it's like, is it possible that these, I mean, streamers aren't that different from regular people? I don't know what to tell you. That's a crazy take. That's, you know, why he thinks that because he has a life outside the internet. He has to remember a lot of these people are just on the internet. Like you and I have a life outside the internet, but I'm also all the time online. But some of these people never leave the internet. That's why they don't have these lived experiences. Streamers who spend all of their time on the internet are absolutely a different kind of person in a different bubble. And the fact that he he doesn't understand that is because he forgets that he has a normal life with family and friends and he sees people on the weekends and he socializes. Um, you know, <sighs> Papa Gut's not a bad person, but this take was not good. <sighs> Um, but is it possible that it's so different? This is so normal in streaming society to cuddle and fucking doing all this. Maybe, but no, I it, I don't think in any meaningful capacity. I just nineteen year old Kitty should know better, but not the thirty year old men who chronically cheat. That's the narrative in this space. Anytime the woman does it, she's at fault. When the men do it, it was probably the woman's fault. That's what I learned from these spaces. It's never, ever the man's responsibility. Cool. Like, you know me, guys. You know how nuanced I'm willing to be to see the guy's side. But you better have a balanced take then. And they're not doing that. Just, I don't think so. Apparently flirtatious. Like, we're talking on a crazy odds right now, you know? Well, you know, based off how they both told the stories, I'm not sure. Because George said, right, that it was, it was comfortable. And he thought it was okay. But he never even, did he use the word sexual? I think he used the word like comfortable. No. Like I thought everything was okay, right? Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe even he was thinking like, oh, I don't know what might happen tonight. And the fact that he didn't. Yeah, he's trying to guess some. That's probably what he's thinking. Like he wants. Maybe. But he didn't because when they were at the elevator, he didn't try to kiss her or anything, which is why Katie's experience of it was over-exaggerated, which is why she's wrong. But also George needs to learn to verbally communicate. 
There's so many things that went wrong with this. So, you know, push and see how far you can get this evil fucker. And she wants. Discord said, I literally remember watching vlogs of VidCon and such and consistently seeing people cuddling. It's so weird that these men have not, haven't seen that at all. Girl, the way we would cuddle at VidCon. The way I've cuddled with some of the most famous YouTubers. You just cuddle. You're just all on the couch together. You're sitting there. You cuddle. You spoon. Might even suck some dick. I don't know. I'm not here to judge, you know. Wants to fuck. Because dudes always have to initiate when it comes. Oh, uh, so he's putting George in a typical boy bubble. And I think it's fair to say that Dream and George and all of those people are not in typical boy bubbles in the way that they're in boy bubbles. They're in some typical boy bubble, like the Minecraft bubble, but also it's different. And these kids are so young. So he's doing this thing where we're, where we're, I'm saying, I'm not sure what it is. And he's saying, I know what it is because they're boys. And I'm like, I guess, but which boy bubble are they in? Comes down to it. So even asked her back to his hotel room after the elevator moment, told me that maybe even he wasn't thinking sexual. Maybe he was thinking, I don't even know. Well, he asked her to hang, to hang out. He was probably thinking sexual a little bit. He just wasn't like a sexual deviant trying to like, predatorize her or something. Thank you, Ticklegum, for the $2 again. Brie feels very disconnected in the combo. I mean, maybe. I, I think, uh, I don't know. I think it's a little, some of it's a little debate brained here. Um, debate brained. Sex. I'm being the debate brained. Or is it maybe lyrics? Okay, now, hold on. Okay, hold on. Second part of the conversation. Okay, are you ready? So same conversation, different timestamp. Okay, D same conversation, different timestamp. With studies, but we're still working on figuring it out. Okay, this is to show you guys, even though Papa Gut's not a bad person, he's a good person. He also is very bubbled and they all live in these bubbles and they all decide what's normal and valid in their own bubbles, right? Look at this deep dive we're doing, girls. Look how good we're being today. Thank you for being here like the stream. Okay, here is Papa Gut coming to a conclusion that I don't agree with based off of studies and data that have been shown about what it means to be like parentified. We talked about this the other day. Look at his take on what a mature person is and why he thinks someone who's 16 could be considered mature. Because this is the definition difference we're struggling with in these in these conversations. Now that a lot of things like COVID or the internet is kind of postponing like a maturity expectation. People are moving out later in life. So yeah, COVID has an impact, but people are moving out later in life, not because of COVID. It's just like the economy is pretty brutal right now. Listen, the people that I have heard from said COVID stunted them so badly in terms of socializing that they are absolutely not leaving the house because of some of those instances that happened during COVID. And you're completely ignoring that. And you think it's just the economy. It's not just the economy. COVID impacted a, ha a whole group of young people who missed out on three key years of socializing. And the fact that people are just like ignoring that as if those weren't key years in our lives, those were very key years in my life. And they didn't get to experience it. So all of those lessons we learned, they didn't learn. They started later, right? So. People are getting independence later in life. So there's going to be sort of a stagnation and social. Yeah, sure. I believe I, I agree that people are maturing slower because of that. Absolutely. So if you want to change the script and make it 20 years old as a new age of consent or something, that's fine. But I, that's not what it is now. So uh, situations. And I think um, 18 feels really young like do they even know anything can they do anything i mean maybe 18 is the new 17 i don't no, know it's not about 18 being the new 17 18 never was anything 18 doesn't mean anything you are not more mature because you just turned 18 that's not how it works age of consent doesn't matter here it doesn't matter i mean it matters but it doesn't matter in the way that he thinks like we don't make 18 the age because we think oh you're magically mature at 18 you could be immature at 50. We just need to put a line in the sand of what is, quote, adult. But it doesn't indicate maturity. No. I don't think that, like, I don't think that people pre-18 are any less mature than they used to be. I think it's people that are 18 and older because now your extended time into school. College is to an extent, depending on your community college especially, but like a 13th grade. You're living with your parents later. You're not necessarily working. Um, or if you are working, you're not working to fully to support yourself. It's really just a little bit of extra money. Maybe pay a bill or two. You're still living with your parents. It's hard to live without. It's hard to do this. You know, you're generally not in like relationships. Right? I understand that. Um, so like and that he just explained is why COVID was so impactful. You were moving out of the house. You weren't socializing. You weren't doing anything. And you were kids. Maybe 18 is the new 17. I don't know. It's not that 18 is the new 17. 18 is just the 18. Always has been. Always will be. But it's it's uh, come on. 
at, at what point the less that the less that you put on somebody, the less that they are going to mature. Right. So this is the thing. P there is there are the less you put on people, the less they will mature to some extent. And then it just ends up becoming abusive and parentifying. You put all the responsibility on the young person. You think you're so mature for your age. You're 16 and you had to pay our mortgage and help pay our bills. Wow. You're so mature. You're not mature. You're traumatized. You're capable, but you're traumatized. And if you were able for one moment to actually be the kid you were supposed to be, you'd crumble under the pressure. It's why so many high masking or masking like autistic or neurodivergent adults will eventually get diagnosed in their thirties and crumble because they actually get to unmask fully and realize all of the bullshit they've dealt with all of their lives, all of the, the strain, all of the coping that got people through their twenties, even for myself, all of the ways I pushed myself, worked three jobs, hustled so hard only to have to deal with things a little bit later in life because I was busy surviving. You're not mature because you're surviving, not mature in the way that he's saying, like capable of making good decisions. Obviously, People have, grown men have full-on jobs. They're whole, Trump is president. Do you think Trump is mature? Like, what does mature even mean? You mean capable of making your own decisions? What does that even mean? It means everyone is different. Everyone is unique. How we say even mature is specific. He's putting the onus on Katie because he thinks she's old enough to make adult decisions. Okay. So what's your excuse for every other boy in the sphere that, makes his decisions. You do not go hard after the men in this space the way you go after Katie. And I think that's the misogyny. You do not dish it out the same way. Ages that people will generally be prepared to be able to handle particular stress. 18, you are at an age to be able to handle the stress of uh, some adult tasks. One of those adult tasks is um, verbal communications, verbal and nonverbal. So why didn't George communicate to Katie? George was how many years older? Like six years older. So he's saying you should be able to handle verbal communication. So why wasn't George able to handle it? And why didn't he ever verbally communicate with Katie? Because they're kids and they're stunted and they're also doing different things. And not everyone uses verbal co confirmation. Verbal communications and verbal and nonverbal boundaries that you set in place in social situations. Katie was fully equipped to be able to make the decision to. What about George? Was George fully equipped to make the decision not to touch her without verbal consent or no? Just Katie was responsible for telling him, no, don't touch me. But he wasn't responsible for saying, hey, can I touch you? Is that what I'm hearing? Walk away from George. There was She was, un, she was under no duress um, in any capacity. She had several outs. She was never in any danger. I don't even think she could. I mean, I agree with him to a large extent that all of these things could be true. And both of them could still have made a huge social mistake. It was a huge social mistake for George not to ask for verbal consent, which Lyrics laughs at me for saying. And it was a huge mistake for Katie not to use her verbal consent and talk about things. Yeah. Communicated that she was in any level of danger. So like she's old enough to be able to make that decision. Okay. So you expect her, you, this is the belief I don't have. I try to meet people where they're at. I don't think your age indicates what you're capable of. I think the law uses that to make a case for you, even though we incarcerate children in this country. Okay. So he's making that decision. Okay, I think all men in their 30s should know what I'm saying and explain it perfectly without any mistakes. Go ahead. I think you're old enough to know. You're a 35-year-old man. Go ahead. Do it. You can't because we don't all have the same tools or the same language or the same expectation of behavior. Okay, so do what I can do. We can't. Because like we're not the same kind of person. The pressure they are putting on this girl and not grown men in the space is outrageous. Um, I don't know if you have parents that are very old. Mine's, mine are in their 60s. And I always say like, oh, they're grown, same. grown. Like they're 65. You know, they're like grown ups. When I look at myself and my husband and we're watching the anime and we have a cat and that's our biggest responsibility. I'm like, man, we kids, bro. But we're not kids. But like we're not grown. I forgot I got to water my lawn tomorrow. Okay. And even my parents, they're like, why aren't you guys growing up like we did? And I'm like, well, we don't have to, girl. We can make money. Does lack of responsibilities really affect your mental maturity that much? People are just uh, man, child, children, not actual children. Yeah, no, lack of responsibilities absolutely affects your maturity 100%. If you had no responsibilities, you would not be a responsible or mature person. Yes, 
But the question is, what are you actually able to handle if nobody gave you that responsibility in the first place? And this is where you learn. The George Katie situation was an opportunity to learn, not an opportunity to already know better because they didn't learn it. You have to learn it. You have to learn the thing to know it. You have to be responsible. You have to know why you have that responsibility, right? The more responsibilities, the more stress that's put onto you, the more mature you're going to get through those experiences. Absolutely. Hopefully. Hopefully. Listen to this and then we're done with this. Absolutely. Like if you drop out of school at 16 and you start working a full-time job, you're going to be more mature than an 18-year-old that's still in high school. Like If you drop out of high school at 16 and get start working, you're going to be more mature than a person who stays in high school until they're 18. Not true. There's no way to know that. You know how many people I know who dropped out of school at, at 16 and they started working and are just as immature as they were at 16 and the 18-year-olds were as mature as 18-year-olds? This is not true. This perspective is a bubble, which is fine, but it is not a universal experience. It gets worse. Wait. God, I Absolutely. Um, responsibility absolutely is going to change the way that your life moves. 1,000. Responsibility might change the way your life moves. 1,000%. 1,000%. That's why we think that people with like kids are more responsible than people without kids because they have, they've gone through life experience of having kids. But that's not true. Plenty of people have children and do not become more mature. We do not think that. This, I know a bubble he's in where they think, oh, once you have kids, you'll mature. That is not true. If you are lucky and you have the responsibility aspect and you do do it, sure. But for him to say, that's why we think when people have kids, they're more mature because they've been through it. Tell that to all the immature parents whose children had to raise them because they parentified them and made them so mature at 16. Look how much you take care of my family. Spooky says, literally giving. You are so mature for your age. Literally. Connor says, what about drug addicts that have kids? What about anybody who has kids? Anybody, you don't have to be a drug addict. What if you're just a fucking Joe Blow who has kids and you don't rise to that responsibility? Again, I'm trying to say we don't know and it depends on which category you fall into. Some people who have kids mature faster, quote, get their shit together, finally. Some people don't. They're pieces of shit who stay pieces of shit. Tara says it's black and white thinking. Isn't that ironic that these men black and white think and then they go, Brittany is such a black and white thinker and look at her levels and this is all black and white thinking. They can't even hear themselves talk and they have the audacity to look at me and be like, Brittany's so cute with her crystals. I don't even have crystals, bitch. I have rocks. Maggie with the super chat. Thank you so much. This freezing is a really common response to essay though. Absolutely. It's a really common response to just being afraid, period. It doesn't even have to be essay. The freeze response is very common with a scary situation. Okay, so that's, we're done with that because it's stupid. But I, you know, shout out to Papa God. I like him and everything. But I'm really sick of these men pretending like they know what the fuck is going on and then they make brain dead statements and then have the audacity to be like, girls, am I right? You don't think that's flirtatious though when you're spooning in bed with someone? Wouldn't you say, like self admit that that's flirtatious? Okay, here's a question for you. Cause like I'm also in the queer bubble. So now we're back in the Mr. Girl Orbiter bubble where the orbiter is accusing me of running a cult because they're too brain dead to understand anything I'm saying. And then blame me because I'm a woman because they're too dumb to understand what I'm saying. I love this. So this is great. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. It's mostly, and I'm with a lot of like gay people. Like, shut out. We kiss and it's not, we're not even going anywhere with it, girl. Like okay. we, you know, we're in a different, and this kid's like, okay, sure. I don't know what to tell you, girl. I'm so sorry. The heteros act like they're not making out at the clubs too, please. Remember, Brittany called Lyrics' coverage the worst. It was. And her obsession with her radical acceptance philosophies had her acting smug and condescending towards him. But when it came time to have the conversation, she had very little to actually say. Well, because he couldn't, every time I tried to make a point, he got overwhelmed and say like, I, I can't follow this part or you're, you're going into the grass or like he literally couldn't keep up with the conversation. He's exactly as like inexperienced as I thought he was going into it. I should never have had this conversation with someone so inexperienced, which is why I put a new rule up that I'm not engaging with people that can't have conversations because I, you can't have it with me. And then you have the audacity to say that it's my problem when you, you're not having like, it's like, I have to hold your hand and explain to you like people. And then you're like, Brittany can't have the conversation. I don't know what to tell you. Look, I'm not a perfect speaker, but damn. 
Her content revolves around hammering home these types of ideas, about bubbles and how humans are just going to do human things, but there is one type of situation in which Brittany is comfortable being critical. You're just very dismissive well, of this, but we can move on. I don't mean to be dismissive. I think what I am is I'm not personally involved. I'm not putting my personal emotions into it. I'm just speaking, like, I'm trying not to make it personal because it's not per it's not about me and it's not personal. For Brittany, humans are just going to human, unless she's personally slighted. No, no, no. He's going to bring up the Destiny Burning Bridge. No, no, no. Humans are still going to human and Destiny's humaning more than anybody. I'm not upset with Destiny for humaning. I'm a, I'm a little annoyed he's making it sound like I'm the one with the mental health problems when it's obviously projection, but okay. Like when she had a falling out with Destiny. Destiny's blocked for being a blocked. shit father and True. a shit partner. Okay, they literally clip chipped me. They saw this podcast and didn't even see the unedited Jay Stock, who's now banned on YouTube for harassment, clip chimped me and made it look like I said something I didn't even fucking say. And then Destiny didn't even do the due diligence of looking it up and researching it. He knows exactly why I'm annoyed with him. And it's because all these men in these bubbles are so traumatized. They tell you about their fucking shit. And then they have the audacity to be like, I have no problems in public. And then go for you for your fucking shit because you shared it. And then they have the audacity to be like, see, it's her borderline. You sure it's not yours? And how Thanks. dare he lecture Daisy over parenting when he doesn't even tuck his kid into the bed every night. So remember, guys, turn off your critical thinking caps. It is what it is. Humans are getting human. Unless they did something to you personally. He's just misunderstanding. You can be upset and annoyed. But Destiny is just humaning, bro. But that doesn't mean I can't use it to prove a point. If this grown man is going to misunderstand our friendship, tell people things about me that aren't true so he can hide his bullshit. That's on him. He literally... Humans, bro. Humans are going to human. You know what it is, girl. Then they're just a piece of... <laughs> trauma boy summer. These boys are so traumatized. And they're just... They don't get it. They're so dumb. They can't even fathom someone else living a different experience. Shit. What, what did that say? I missed it. Introduce hierarchy. Oh, girl. Just get ready. Uh, hold on. Okay, we looked up that one. Okay, I just want to look at my notes. So the levels aren't meant to be prescribed. They're not meant to be a judgment tool. They're meant to be a tool for you, the individual, the person that is going through something and questioning their place in the universe and asking themselves, is there a way to better understand myself and the world? And this is my tool for that, the levels. The levels are an observational philosophy that I created with a co-author who likes to remain anonymous. I've made tons of podcasts on this, like 60 plus. I've made so many videos, individual, like videos on what level people could be. So the levels represent one through five levels of introspection. So the self, the relationship we're having with our- Actually, shout out to Mantis who perfectly explained it on Tom Foolery's um, channel today. She said, basically, she explained to Tom, like, they're just descriptors. And if you follow the description, that's your bubble or that's your level maybe. But they're not like, you can't go, you can go one to five in the same way you could go from like a skier to a snowboarder. But like you figure out what you are and then what level you are. They're descriptions, right? And if you have a call with me, no, I can't make you a level five. That's not what the calls are. If you call me and you're like, I want to be a level five, like, okay, go on a journey, bro. Like, what does that mean? What are you going to, you know, wait until you see the accusations he's about to push at me. And don't worry, I have more receipts. <laughs> Selves. And of course, with the world. But mostly it's about you, right? I need it to be very clear. That the oh my God. Literally, Discord is like, it's not a hierarchy. She said, she, she said, she said I'm a two. Literally the same people that are like, I can't believe Brittany's making it a hierarchy. And also offended, they get called twos. What's the big deal, bro? If it doesn't matter, these people say they don't want my opinion, but then when I give it, they throw tantrums and burn bridges. Girl. Level system is about recognizing your literal meaning and purpose of existence in relation to the universe, not just what it means to be a human. If you've heard of Brittany Simon before watching this video, then you probably know about what she calls the levels. The levels is Brittany's magnum opus. It's her proudest accomplishment. And when she says things like this, My work isn't everything you watch. She's referring to the levels. 
but it's also the part of our work that's been the most heavily scrutinized. And then you've got a level system where you categorize yourself at the top and they probably feel like in, if they talk to you, you'd categorize them lower. Um, I think that harbors a lot of resentment or they would harbor a lot of resentment as a result of that. And then people will attack you for it. Oh, he just told on himself. Now the levels are essentially a system of categorizing people according to their ability or maybe willingness to be introspective. If you look at my levels video, my own philosophy linked in the description, it is very difficult. I think most people are twos on this level system. When you are in a level one, two, three, four, five, you're trying to self-examine your introspection against your extrospection, but you're trying to formulate them together to see where you are in terms of how much you consider the why. In all honesty, I don't really care enough to go into more detail about the level system. And personally, as with most of Britney's content, I just find it all pretty incoherent. But if you'd like to try to decipher it yourself, feel free to check out Britney's video where she explains the whole thing. I don't understand what she's saying, so she must be saying nothing. Cool. I did want to briefly point out that it really feels like Britney lifted a lot of her ideas about the levels from a Polish psychologist named Kazimierz Dabrowski. And while Dabrowski's theories are far more advanced, for those that are interested, Okay, so this is a, uh, I don't know, some guy, what's his name? Kyle Rittenhouse or whatever. Not the real person, the fake person, claimed I stole this philosophy, which I would have to go through it with you guys and see, because I've never read his work, but I know of it because after I put out the levels, everyone's like, oh, is this Spiral Dynamics? Is this Dabrowski's Theory? Is this this? Well, I don't know. I haven't read those things yet, but lots of philosophy, lots of philosophy has levels. That's very normal. Even the Catholic Church has levels. Even Mormonism has levels. Like levels are just very normal. Humans understand leveling, right? Like it's just very normal. So now he's going to accuse me of stealing another philosopher's work instead of saying what I did say, which is that everyone's discovering these things universally because like math is math, guys. Math is math. If two plus two is four, or if you're Terrence Howard, one of one is one, one times one is one, then it doesn't matter who discovers it first. You're just coming across truth. So when I say, of course, other people are doing the same thing, like we're having a, a universal experience or yeah, this is pretty normal. This religion calls it this, this group calls it this. He thinks I'm saying, oh, I stole this philosophy instead of saying like, you can't steal something that's true. You can just have a relationship with it and then put your own spin on it. That's what all philosophers do. You just have an upgraded version. Oh, hey, Marcus really has said this, but I think if he took this idea and this and, oh, Plato said this and like, oh, what about this? And then they don't understand it because they literally don't stand on the shoulders of giants. They don't understand. Like it's, it's, I didn't steal anything. You can't steal math. You can't steal philosophy. You can take it verbatim word by word and claim it's yours, but I'm not doing that. And also, if you guys want, I'm kind of open to going through this and seeing if it relates to my levels at all, but I'm not even sure that it does because I haven't read this. So if you want, we could technically go through it. And also the fact that he hasn't watched my levels video, at least he said, he, I don't know if he watched all two hours of it. And I don't know if he actually like understands it, but if he can't understand it, then how can he compare it to something else? Oh, this level system has numbers and this level system has numbers. It must be the same thing. Okay, dude. Cool. I recommend reading about his work. The similarity. Oh, so you should read about his work, but not watch my video on the levels. I guess he did promote my levels video. Thanks, bro. These to Britney's levels are pretty hard to miss. Britney, of course, already thought of a defense against any allegation that she copied any part of her work. And so we are wondering, is anyone else? What do you mean copied any part of my work? What does that even mean? Uh I don't even think he knows what he's accusing me of. Like, he has no idea what he's accusing me of. And one of his fanboys came onto Tom's stream and Tom was like, okay, well, what is she plagiarizing? And he goes, well, I haven't read it, but somebody else said he's plagiarizing or she's plagiarizing it. And he's like, okay, but what did she plagiarize? Like, you don't, you have no idea what you're talking about. If you can't understand my levels, why would you think it has anything to do with this guy's levels? Cases, this video is embarrassing, bro. This video is so, so just bro <sighs> bro maiden in the chat what's up maiden says there's significant overlap with your work in dabrowski's but dabrowski doesn't give a concept of a one and he focuses on highly gifted people being the only ones who can achieve the highest level ah okay versus i think ones can be fives and everyone can be everything okay cool okay vibrancy says skip through it and their level one is pretty similar to your level two okay okay Cool. Monkey D. Trevi says, Brittany, you're plagiarizing existence. Apparently. Apparently. 
Kay says, I can't imagine making a video where most of it is me saying, I can't understand this person I'm saying is dumb. This is what I'm dealing with on the internet. This is why I say, I peace and love. I'm not talking to these boy bubbles. I'm just not talking to these boy bubbles. They got to be brain dead. Like you're literally saying, I don't understand what you're saying. And even though other people get it and you don't get it, like you don't have to get it. It's, it's like, you don't, you're, it doesn't matter. But like assuming it's malicious because you don't get it is just so funny to me doing this? Is anyone else discovering this? And the, the answer was yes, of course. Other people have definitely gone through the journey of the levels. And that's what's been so cool about this work is that I have come to discover so many other people have things that are similar to this. So remember, even though I am explaining to you the levels, I didn't create the concept of the levels. I'm just recontextualizing philosophy and my relationship with it in a way that makes sense. Just like I didn't come up with math. I didn't come up with enlightenment. I didn't come up with any of it because I'm standing, no, there's no new ideas. I believe there are zero new ideas. There's only recontextualizing perspective. All the ideas and all the answers I believe are out in the universe. Uh-oh, hold on, I cut off again. Oop, uh-oh, hold on, stream pause. Why is the stream pausing so much? Hold on, oh my God, come back stream, bro. Come back stream. Hold on, coming back, coming back. It's the haters, bro, it's the haters. Okay, we're still back, right? Okay, we're back, okay. So obviously, I don't think there's no, I don't think there's any original idea. There's only recontextualizing perspective. So I had a lived experience and I put a name to it and then I started researching it and wondered if there's more thing, like if there's more to it, right? And obviously I found that like, oh yeah, other people are doing other things and that's cool, okay? So he's hearing it as I am stealing from me, from people because he thinks you can like, steal a perspective. I don't, I don't know. Like he's, he doesn't get it. Like saying you believe in one form of philosophy is a bad idea. Like you can't just say I'm, I'm a leveler and then don't do that. Please. For the love of God, I'm a leveler. And then that has all the answers. No, take from all philosophies. All philosophies are perspective. Purple with the super chat. Thank you so much. Says for the content. Thank you so much. Contributing to the cult. Thank you. Okay, let's go to my brain but obviously you can go to any philosopher you can read any book you actually can't accuse britney of plagiarism because she's not copying other people's ideas she's just rewording them great no i'm not rewording other people's ideas i had a lived experience that i put into a system and found out other people were having that same lived experience and we they called it this thing and they leveled it this way and i called it this thing and i leveled it this way this is like having like an autistic experience and being like oh are you having the same experience? I wonder what we should call it. Let's call it autism. And then being like, they're copying their autism. It's like, what? It's like, you're you're saying like your lived experience. Like I'm not copying, I'm not stealing. I'm talking about a real lived experience. Amaris says, did he just debunk his own argument with the clip of you? Well, the problem is, is like when I say, go read somebody else, go look at other philosophers, they can't fathom, the, fathom it. Like he doesn't understand. Alex says he's disputing the fact that you came to these understandings. I came through a lived experience. And obviously I've been reading philosophy this whole time. But like, I like how people think philosophy, guys, you know, philosophers are just like losers in their bedrooms. A lot of them, like Marcus Aurelius literally owns slaves. Are you sure you want to like put these people on a pedestal? They're just people who have ideas and they talk about them. Rand, Rand was like an isolated pick me who had a whole philosophy system. She didn't even write down herself. Her student had to do it. And she believes in objective morality, which is like fine. Okay, but I don't believe in objectivism, but I think it's helpful. Like pick the thing that's helpful to you. But these people are just people. You must understand. How much of history do we have to deconstruct for you to understand? These people are all fucking losers with syphilis who are just figuring out their own ideas. And that's what makes them cool. But at the end of the day, okay. Like, I don't know why people pedestal people they're just people with ideas and that's cool, but they also probably, you know, have problems. Okay, it's just weird. For today though, we don't care that much about that part. What we care about is how could it be exploitative? Just Natalie says a significant amount of Britney's content is presence as online is hidden behind a paywall. That's so untrue. Literally so untrue. 
that's what's ironic. It's like most of my content is literally on streams and clips. And then if you think it's behind a paywall, you could just watch me live while it's happening. I use the same model of business so many streamers use, but when I do it, it's behind a paywall. Okay, but somebody on my Discord asked a really good question. They said, what if this person has trauma related to money? Because when you're successful, and a lot of the people in my audience are successful, when you have money, you just pay for things. Like, I don't know how you think the world works, but like, you just pay for stuff. You want to support a content creator? Pay. You want people's time? You pay. You want a nice dinner? You pay. What if this guy has trauma around money. So he thinks like behind a paywall, that's like $4, which is a good amount of money a month. It is. And I appreciate you contributing. It's like so out of his league that he thinks like I'm trying to hide something. Like Brittany makes it so expensive. I can't get access. You could just watch the stream live for free. I am here for free every day or five days a week or whatever, four days a week it is. You can watch me for free. You don't have to pay for it. So I wonder if he has like trauma. Anyway, Discord brought up that point. I thought it was good. Like, what if he just doesn't know? Like everyone does that. Even Papa Gut does it. Kyla does it. They have streams. A lot of them become members only. Then they clip for the videos. <sighs> you know, Alex says, bro is really missing out on your cooking vlogs. Hey, actually is though. Okay. Thank you guys for supporting the content. I appreciate it. Just like we talked about in chapter four, one way that groups can keep their members involved is through something called affiliation motivation or the need to belong and feel like you're a part of something. Dun, 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 dun. The unique language that Brittany and her community speaks is one good way to cultivate that sense of belonging. And uh, the levels yes. is kind of like another language in and of itself. But another good way to build that affiliation is to create hierarchy. Within oh. the levels, mm. five is the highest mm. and one is obviously mm. the lowest. I'm sure you've already figured out where Brittany ranks herself in the levels. As a consciousness, I'm a five, even though I know I'm a five. I'm when I came up with the levels, I was a four. He's just mad that, you know, you know what they say, guys, before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. If you get it, you get it. I level scale because I know what I know what a five is. And this is how she feels about level ones. Ones, useless people, people can't even figure it out. I mean, with love, I also love the ones. I'm anti-capital punishment and murder, but I believe in the consent to die. So it's very complicated if you don't get it, bro. Sound too dumb to get it. Also, like these people literally after the Trump sh like assassination attempt, Destiny said conservatives like should basically die if you vote for an ins insurrectionist. God forbid I say ones are useless. Okay, you guys all wish Boogie would like literally unalive himself. God forbid I call people useless. Like these people are such fake little pussies, bro. They literally will support people who talk about how people should unalive themselves and get hit with a stray bullet. And God forbid I say ones are useless. Misogyny. This is misogyny. Men can advocate for violence and it's funny. And when I say someone's useless, they're like, holy fuck. Brittany wants ones to kill themselves. I never said that. Danny says they are so unserious. Bro, be serious. They are so unserious. They are so unserious. And that's what I'm saying. I think it's misogyny. I think they're conspiracy theorists. It's literally crazy to accuse me of being a horrible person because I use the word useless. But like, come on, bro. One are useless people who are a burden and drain on society and the world. Uh, oh, this is important. When I did this collaboration with Mr. Girl, I did not know this was coming. I thought he was sex positive and open-minded. And like, I thought he was a free spirit. I did not know he was about to accuse me of being a cult leader. Like I was not emotionally prepared. And I was so confused during this conversation. And I was like, what is happening? So for the record, I was like fun. I came into this conversation being so happy. Like this is crazy. Around them and in your words, so useless, they can't even kill themselves. Which is a very interesting idea. Look at Boogie, always threatening to kill himself, always calling the cops, I'm gonna commit suicide, I'm gonna commit suicide. And even his friends are like, he's not gonna kill himself. And I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm saying. For some reason, they can't kill themselves. Isn't that interesting? Don't you think that's interesting? Monkey D. Trevi says, Brittany, why do you think all these people are so uncomfortable with you and your work? Because they can't get it. People don't wanna feel dumb. And if people feel dumb, they have to assume it's you and so they project. Like they do project. Okay, I was right. Boogie threatened suicide and even his friends are like, you're not gonna kill yourself, dude, because he can't. 
he just can't bring himself to do it, which is good, but also interesting. It's almost interesting that perfectly decent people feel pushed to suicide, but Boogie can't do it. Why? And as somebody who struggled with suicide for 20 years, that's a really interesting question. Why did I feel like I didn't deserve to live when I've never done a quarter of the things Boogie has done? What is up with this? Why does Boogie not, this is such a good question. I wish people who study the brain could answer it. It's really interesting. Shout out to Tom Foolery in the chat. Shout out to Tom Foolery. Okay. Discord said, when a woman have beliefs, is that an obsession? Bro, these boys, okay. So here's, just to set you up. The or, By the way, the guy making the video is a doctor girl orbiter. He's like a doctor girl. Fuck me. He's a Mr. Girl Orbiter, okay? He, okay, so here we go. I know. Which is a... Mm. a Poetic, right? It's one of the cleverest things I've ever said. Again, I don't really care about the levels. And if Brittany wants to arbitrarily assign numbers to people indicating their worth, she should feel free. It's not an indication of their worth. This is where he doesn't get it. It's not an indication of your worth as a consciousness, as a person. You're not worthless if you're a one. Like you're not worthless if you're a one. That's not how that works. But you hear it because you guys are so all about the hierarchies. The same people that accuse me of having a hierarchy only hear in hierarchy because that's how their brains work. Brittany thinks they're useless, so she must want them dead. Okay, do I look like Israel to you? I don't want anybody dead. Okay, do I look like Net and Hot? Net and Hot? Net and Hot? I can't say his name. Net and mm, the Jewish guy, the Israeli. What's his name? Net and Hot? Net. Damn it, I can't think of his name. You know what I'm trying to say, girl. Like, do I look like Israel? It's a joke, by the way. Shout out to Palestinians. Shout out to everybody. My heart's with everybody. Suffering sucks. Look, I know my humor can be edgy, but these men are taking some like higher ground or higher thing. Like, I just, bro, I feel like you're not thinking and you keep accusing me of not thinking, but then I can't tell because you're not engaging. You're not engaging. Thank you. Net in ya nahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you. Him. Ugh, that joke really failed because I can't pronounce things. <laughs> Anyways, I am a bad person for saying ones are useless, but you guys are good people for supporting a genocide. Love it. But what it does to her fame. Look, everybody has to make a decision in politics. Justified evil and all that, you know? Who are attached to her and look up to her is it gives them a social hierarchy. Brittany's at the top, of course. And from what I've been told, it really seems like if Brittany likes you, she assigns you a higher number. Oh, guys, can anyone, does anyone have proof of this? If I really like you, I assign you a higher number. <sighs> Who have I ever fucking done that with? I've missed assigned numbers and I don't assign numbers. I just guess. You have to tell me what number you are, dummy. I can't tell you what number you are, though I can say, I think you're a two, bro, even if you think you're a five because of this, this, and this, and this. But I can't assign you a number. Like, I can't assign you a gender. You tell me what your gender is. You tell me what your level is. And then we can dispute it if that's appropriate. You know? What? Who, who has this lived experience? When did this happen? Who is telling this story? What are you talking about? Ribbit says, Brittany said I'm a six, actually. Girl, please. Kyle says, I never got my number, LOL. I can't, that's what I'm saying. Like, who is, where is he making this? Where did he pull this out of his ass? And if she doesn't, you get a lower number. The co-author of the level- So if I don't like you, get a lower number. Ah, yes. System was also a level five. And Brittany reportedly- What did he say? Wait. I'm told it really seems like if Brittany likes you, she assigns you a higher number. And if she doesn't, you get a lower number. The co-author of the level system was also a level five. He was a level four and he's still a level four. Who are you talking about? My co-author is still a level four and has always been a level four. He is not a level five. So she's like, who, who is this he? Nobody knows. They don't even know if it's a he. It could be a girl. It could be a, anybody. Who? 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 You know what it is? People think they know who my co-author is. They have no idea. He's never been on the internet. He's never been in my community. It is a boy. He's never been involved in my stuff. It's always been the same. Where did he get this fact? Who, what hater joined my audience, thinks they know what they, they're talking about and told this boy this? Who said this? This is not true. This has never been true. I have never said my co-author is a five. Not once. Find me a script where I said that. 
that's what I'm saying. Like, he's just pulling shit out of his ass. My theory is somebody was telling him bad information so he'd look stupid. Do one of you love me enough to give this guy bad information so he looks dumb on this video and I could debunk him? Is that what happened? What is this? Who said that? Like, who said it? I just want to, I just want to know. <laughs> this is, so, this, this has never happened. I have never said my co-author is a level five. I've never said it. Okay. And Brittany reportedly also has an inner circle, which is community members she spends a lot of time with that have also been assigned a higher level. Oh, okay. Okay. So he says Brittany has an inner circle where she has community members she signs a higher level to. Is Smet are you saying Harmony and Genevieve and Arena and Rashad and Smeth are my inner circle? Is that what you're who's who's feeding this guy bad information? Okay, ready for the next receipt? This is embarrassing. This is genuinely um. so embarrassing. Hold on, I gotta lower down the volume. This is so embarrassing. This guy is an idiot. This guy is a pure fucking dame, just brain dead, okay? Four years ago, July 26th, 2020, this is me sitting in my fucking room with no makeup on. Are you ready? This is a reaction to an Abba and Preach video, okay? This is a reaction to an Abba and Preach video where they talked about friendship and how they're not really friends. And that inspired me to make a level system or a friend hierarchy so I could understand what people mean in my life. Very autistic of me, congratulations. Keep my life really categorized simply, okay? There's the inner, inner, inner circle. That's my biological family, okay? They are ride or die. And then there's the three non-related people to me by blood who are chosen family that I've allowed in the inner circle. There's one more space in this inner circle available and it is for the person who will give me 17 babies. Okay, I didn't end up having 17 babies with her, but we did get married. But this was four years ago. Four years ago. And I was right. We didn't have 17 babies, okay? This is pre-diagnosis of fibromyalgia, <laughs> okay? This is what inner circle is. My family, my mom and dad and my, and my brothers and sisters, not to mention my cousins and family members that I have other relationships with, but they're just people that I would wanna see in a zombie ap apocalypse. That's who they are. So I have chosen family and my biological family and this stupid YouTuber, whoever gave him this information is so dead wrong. And these are public, it's not like you can't Google this. I came up with this because of an Abba, Abba and Preach video. Bro. Or who I will give 17 babies. Cause I'm bisexual. Okay, so like that is the last space I have open in my inner inner circle. But then there's like the outer inner circle and those are the people who are like, we're close, we go to each other's weddings, we give each other's gifts, we're wonderful, sometimes we're each other's 2 a.m. calls, but we're not the people you would necessarily necessarily call to bury a body. And I think that's really important. I think it's really important to know the difference between the people you would call to help you bury a body because you don't want to be caught versus the people you go to theaters with or brunch with or dates with or have sex with even. <laughs> like, I'm serious. There is a lot I will do with my inner outer circle that I might, like, you know what I mean? Like my inner outer circle, you get what I'm saying. Okay, that's either gonna make sense or it's not. I'm not tailoring my language to try to explain it to the internet who can't even figure out basic sentences sometimes. So I'm just, I'm gonna leave it there. So the third layer, so that there's inner circle, inner outer circle, and outer outer circle. And outer outer circle is like all of my patrons. They're all people I've talked to personally. They're all people I've sent DMs to. They're all people that like they know parts of me that are really intimate. They're like people who know me more than a stranger would know me, but they're still strangers. And sometimes those strangers become inner outer circle but it's really rare and it almost never happens. And you know what I mean? But most of the time they're just, it's that parasocial relationship that starts at that end where it's like people who know you, like you ever lived in a neighborhood so long that when you go back to visit the same neighbors know you. And it's like when we were kids, we were friends, 
but now we're all adults, so like you were my kid friends. It's like those people are still in your life, but they're not in the inner circle. It's not like you talk to them, but they're still more than a stranger. Yes. Okay, I think I've said everything I want to say to the internet. Oh my god, guys, I had this epiphany the other day because I took like months and months off of YouTube and I thought I was going away forever. And then I realized it. Fuck it, I love it. I'm a whore. What can I say? But like, you know what's so crazy is I was posting a video and I felt that anxiety build up again. And I was like, oh, I remember what it's like. Being a public figure is so strange because every time I post a video, I'm like, is this going to get me another stalker? And I have been severely noticing a huge lack. Okay. Yes, are we good? Did we get the did we get the receipts? All of this bros. Bro. I What? Like what is this? Okay, let's keep going. So he goes inner circle and these are her fans, right? Is it gives them a social hierarchy. Britney's at the top, of course. And from what I've been told, it really seems like if Britney likes you, she assigns you a higher number. And if she doesn't, you get a lower number. The co-author of the level system was also a level five. Nope, and wrong. And Britney reportedly also has an inner circle, which is community- This is not my inner circle, obviously. No offense, I love you guys though. Members she spends a lot of time with that have also been assigned a higher level. So the higher levels get privilege and more time with Britney, and the lower levels get insulted and ostracized. Aside from this all just being weird and potentially toxic, the problem here is that Britney wants you to remember that you can progress through the levels. Ultimately, Britney is the arbiter of what rank you are because she created the ranking system. I'm judging them based <sighs> off of their ability to understand their existence, what they've chosen to do, and the position they are now in. And now to decide within their own values where they should go. And the suggestion from her content is that through the tools she provides you, you may be able to ascend in rank. So I can't- Nope. Like, maybe, but like the rank is just, oh God, I'm getting like my spoons are drained, bro. The Discord says this guy literally has zero receipts. This guy literally has zero receipts. He has no understanding of any of this. Like, it's like talking to a person who he doesn't even understand the basics. Like he can't get, he hasn't gotten one thing correct. The inner circle thing though, come on, that's got to be the funniest one. That has got to be the funniest one. Right? Like, that has got to be the funniest one. My inner circle is literally my family and friends. And he's like, her inner circle is her community. What? I literally have a whole video about it. He doesn't watch the content. People who do not watch my content just assume so much about my intent. They will watch 100 hours of another YouTuber, but God forbid. Like, if you guys just don't get it, then don't comment on it. Like, I, oh my God. Connor says, imagine making a video this long with nothing in it, bro. Bro, and watch, I'm going to make this video now. And they're like, Brittany's obsessed. She made like a six hour live stream explaining this video. Because, bro, you literally, you have no receipts, bro. Oh my God. I can't make you a level five. I can just give you tools. You have to help yourself. You know what I mean? I can just give you the tools. And a big part of her private calls seems to be to help her fans navigate the levels. Kelsey says, when you do calls, do you chat about things like how to go from level three, four, and five? So <clears throat> my level system, yes, I talk about anything you guys want to talk about, really. So Brittany's- Wow, super got me, bro. Super got me. Super got me, bro. This entire branding revolves around this level system where she's at the top and your value in the community is correlated to your level. She bestows levels to her fans and tends to show preference and spend more time with people that are ranked higher. Who's, who's, who spread this rumor? Come on, don't fuck with me. Who, who, which one of you pranked this guy? I feel like y'all must have pranked this little motherfucker. There's no way. Like, there's no way. Who did it, bro? Who told this guy all of, this is all bad information. I'm dying and the funniest part is all the people who already decided they hate me we're in his comment section like oh my god this makes so much sense where who did that when when who <laughs> but you can also pay her 250 dollars a month to try to learn the tools to ascend in your ranking not you're thinking about it. you're being so weird bro you're being so weird like you can pay her 250 dollars a month to ascend in your ranking you can Pay me $250 to help me fund my content. And in return, we can have a call where we can discuss philosophy and the levels. I can't 
give you a tool and guarantee your ascension because there is no thing to ascend to. It's like you're finding yourself in your joy. Your joy might not be a five. You could be happy as a two. It's not about that. Like, this is so silly. This is so silly. So silly. The levels in Britney's community just function as a social hierarchy. And if you're willing to pay for the private- Mantis says, I don't even think he talked to legit people. He honestly either talked to all the Mr. Girl infiltrators that I blocked. He talked to one upset caller, which fair, I know, I get it. Feelings get upset. He, he like, he, he couldn't have talked to anybody. I mean, he kind of implied that he didn't. He obviously had an idea of me in his head from Mr. Girl, right? Because he's a Mr. Girl orbiter. And he decided, oh, I'm going to prove this is true. Instead of asking himself, but is it true? It's called bias and prejudice. <sighs> because you not only can potentially buy social status, but also Britney's attention and approval, which makes the levels just another way of exploiting parasocial attachment for financial gain. Oh, yes. All of my thousands, all of my millions of dollars, all of my millions of dollars off of my zero callers at the 250 level. I currently have zero callers at the $250 level. Like, yes, all of my millions. <laughs> We've covered a lot of ground already, but the best part of Britney's handbook is the last chapter. Britney isn't unaware of any of these criticisms. In fact, she's heard them all before. She just doesn't have to care. Well, because they don't have any, they don't have any foundation. Habibi, please. It feels like I'm talking to a child. Is this a child? Oh my God, is this a child? No, this can't be a child. Come on. Raider says he was asking for Britney fans in Erudite's Discord, so I assume he was desperate for anyone to talk some shit. Bro, rip. Shout out to Kyla. Rip. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone always says, like, Britney's avoiding the criticism. Is this the criticism? all misinformation and you don't even know what my inner circle is when I have a whole video on it. You're mad. I like my mom and dad. Like, what is this? Silly. So I think when people criticize me, they see me as evading and I see them as disrespecting. Exactly. If you want me to be open and vulnerable with you about the fact that I cry, you're not owed that vulnerability. Right. I am resentful at the idea that the internet thinks they get my tears. But congratulations, I just admitted publicly that I do cry about it because I do. Because it's frustrating when you work so fucking hard in your life and you sacrifice and you, you accomplish beating suicide and your borderline's in remission and you're fucking killing it. And the only criticism I get is like, there must be something wrong with her because she seems happy. Fuck off. The difference between girl bubbles and boy bubbles, not all, but a lot of girl bubbles that I'm a part of and queer bubbles, gender fluid bubbles, gender and different bubbles, they don't punish you for struggling. They don't punish you for struggling. I don't want to punish you from struggle for struggling. I'm not mad at this caller that contributed to this video. I understand why you did it. Your feelings were hurt. I get it. I'm not going to punish you for having hurt feelings. I'm, you know, it is what it is. Don't contact me. I will block you. I'll make sure to block your discord later. Like I had to look up my old DMs, obviously, to see our conversation to make sure I knew which person it was contributing to this video. Like, don't contact me. Okay. I get it. But like, bro, come on. It's like they want me to handle criticism that isn't about me. It's made up. I really wish, I am looking forward, okay, again, women bubbles don't punish you for having a bad day. We help you get better, not a big deal. But also more than that, the women who have made videos on me generally are pretty good. The criticism's really good. They're really lovely. They're usually still in the community. They're having fun. Like all of it's pretty nice. Maybe it's just that. Maybe I should like, look, unless you're a girl or a gay or a they or very certain type of man. Like, you got to at least know what I'm saying to some extent. But I get it. Like, you can have an opinion. I just feel like, why are you making things up, though? We're almost done. <sighs> We're almost done. I don't give Brittany Simon credit for much, but Thanks. I will give her credit for this. She is very, very good at avoiding criticism. And she is highly manipulative if you try to corner her into accepting responsibility for anything. They're, They're literally like, why are you a cult leader? That's not criticism. That's an accusation. You're accusing me of something. You're not 
criticizing me or maybe it's a criticism, but it's not a constructive criticism. Like, what are you doing? You're like, why did you, why do you hate, why do you hate gay people? It's like, what? Like you're starting on a premise where I have to deconstruct your accusation to even have the conversation. And then you don't believe me. So <laughs> Alex says they thought that you would just get triggered into an aggressive response to make you seem unhinged. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Well, I mean, that's the problem is like, I am not hit unhinged. If you click me out of context, sure. But like, I'm usually very reasonable with my responses, which is why I think misogyny is playing a role here. In most of my responses to people, I'm pretty fucking normal and level-headed. It's just they clip me in a way that makes me look unhinged, which is, I guess is the internet. But this guy is blocked. I don't want to talk to him. The audacity for this guy on Tom Fullery's stream to be like, oh, if Brittany wants to talk to me, I'll talk to her now and maybe I can help her brand better. What? No. No. Dummy. No. There are two parts. The first one is how good Brittany herself is at talking her way out of situations. For starters, like we covered earlier, how Britney avoids labeling her services anything intentionally to avoid the responsibility of those labels. We're just out here making dumb content, having fun. Literally, I'm just a YouTuber. Say it with me. Britney Simon is a YouTuber. Look, I'm just a person. I'm not an expert in anything. I'm just an expert in my life. She also often tries to put distance between herself and the outcomes of her services by calling herself just a tool and saying she can't guarantee you anything. But like, I don't know how people get to anywhere. I give you tools and if the tools help, great. Remember that I'm just a tool and it might not be me. And that's why when I do core work with people like on my calls or we talk about it and again, like I'm just a person having a conversation, something that worked for me, no guarantee it will work for you. You see, Brittany often tries to just say that she's not doing something to absolve herself of having done it. But some- This has got to be misogyny, right? He's a conspiracy theorist and he's a misogynist. <sighs> Oh my God, stop it, Kilvera. Stop. Brittany, he's got a serious crush and press to get your time. Why are you so obsessed with me? Boy, I want to know. Why are you so obsessed with me? I'm married. Okay, I'm literally married. Stop. Maybe he is, bro. All these boys just mad because I didn't slide into their DMs and I married another girl. They're just mad, bro, because they low-key were like, well, level in my bro. You know you're a two. <laughs> Sometimes she slips up and tells you what she actually means. I can't guarantee your joy. I can't guarantee. <gasps> Mantis says, Kilo is also the same guy who accused Tom of abuse and then admitted publicly he isn't interested in seeing the full context. He's just happy to accuse. I did not know that. Nah, I did not know that. That's wild, bro guarantee a good outcome well good for you getting views on me what he got like 9k views off using my name guys i'm famous <laughs> um i can't guarantee peace i can't guarantee anything but i can guarantee you if you go through the journey that many of us have been through you will reach a point of joy you will reach a point of understanding the self i want to help people i'm not helping people i'm solving problems let me help you through ah life is awful tiny contradictions Thanks for clipping me out of context like you did all those other times. Why would we believe you now, bro, when you literally cut me out of context the first, like, beginning of this video, sir? Your problems to get from point A to point B, which I can't guarantee because I don't have a business like that. I will care for people who need a moment of care. I don't give a fuck about any of you. <sighs> oh, my God. Did my stream go out again? Come back, stream. Come back, stream. Come back stream. Why do I keep going in and out? Oh my gosh. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Come back stream. Okay, we're back. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I have no idea what's going on. Maybe we have a storm coming in. I'm sorry. Okay, let's keep going. I don't know why it's happening. Outside of what I can do to help you. But the most pure form of Britney slipping out of criticism is when she's backed into a corner. She'll use absolutely any defense at her disposal. But it's what humans do. It's like a part of the, it's a part of our, it's just normal. People fall in love with you. They mistake who you are. They put you on a pedestal. So you take them down, you hold them in your arms. You go, that's not how we're doing it. Pat them on a the head and you send them on their you way. You understand the insanity of saying that you don't want people to put you on a pedestal when you, your philosophy is a level system. No, because you don't get it. That's what I mean. You don't get it. 
it wouldn't have mattered, guys. Think about astrology. How many people won't date a person that's a cancer? It doesn't matter what I would call it. You would decide which was the best. We just called it one through five because it's what I could remember. I think they're making fun of my dyscalculia and my dyslexia. They're like, oh, well, okay. Also, I should be careful because this bubble hates self-diagnosis. They like fucking get triggered if somebody identifies something in themselves. God forbid you diagnose yourself with a cold. They'll panic. One through five and you yourself are a level five. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the, the you get the joke. Do you get like I didn't do this You're, on purpose. I really genuinely gave it numbers so I would remember their names. Like they but, don't believe me. They think I'm like playing 40 chess because they're playing 40 chess. All these people are fucked up. So they think I'm fucked up. Listen, I'm gay fucked up in different ways, but I'm not playing no 40 chess. Also, why don't you change it? Well, I can't why would I change it now? What am I saying? I won't remember the names. I just told you I won't remember the names. Guys, I thought about it. I tried it the other day for fun. I was like, okay, blue is one. Red is, nope, I've already forgotten. I'm not going to remember. Like I'm literally the, I, I need a physical remember, like association. Like I'm not going to remember. <sighs> These people literally think I'm playing a game I'm not playing. It's fine. Change it. This is already done. I ain't gonna go back and redo all my work. Like, it's too late. We don't even know what we're doing here on this stupid fucking planet. Okay, I am baked out of my mind. And this is a conversation where I was hanging out with my brothers, really baked playing Smash. Destiny messages, messages me, goes, Brittany, get on stream. Max and Mr. or Matt. Max and Laver are making fun of you. And I was like, nah, bro, I'm high. I don't wanna. He's like, get on stream. They're coming for you. And I was like, oh, I don't wanna. I'm high. And like, at that time, I was like, not trying to take every opportunity, right? And then I come on stream and I'm entertaining as fuck and Destiny's laughing, Dan's laughing. We're all having a good time. Max and Lav are molding because they're the only idiots taking it seriously because they're fucking narcissists. And the rest of us are just laughing. To be fair, honestly, Destiny's going to miss out on a lot of laughing we could have had on stream together because he got offended that I compared his arm to Sneeko's. But we could have had a lot more funny times because this was so much fun. But I was very baked and having a lot of fun. And Destiny was creating drama on purpose. This was done on purpose. He messaged me, said, come fight them on stream. They're talking bad about you. And that's like, it's like reality TV. It's fake, but it's real. But it's fake, but it's real. You know, it's silly. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. I'm trying my best to share the knowledge I learned. Over time, people have decided to come to me. Wow, lessons. I sound so baked. Lessons are really fun. You can call them lessons. I don't give a fuck what you call them, girl. Whatever makes you happy, right? Same with sex work. Whatever, however you want to view it, I don't care. Just let me do. Reminder that Mr. Girl wrote a crazy manifesto about Destiny basically being a co-leader as well. And that was bullshit too. What I want to do. If you're I so worried about what I'm doing, and I know you are, then admit it. Admit that you want to control me and control my life. Am I even responsible if they're an adult and they just don't have to watch the YouTube video or internalize it or care? Like if they think I am- Yo, I really like this hairstyle apparently. Causing harm, why would they listen to me? Well, because in their bubble, they have to listen to people who cause harm so they can stop the people that cause the harm. So it's like this self-fulfilling prophecy of pain where people spend a lot of time in conflicting bubbles trying to convert those people because it hurts their bubble instead of just accepting that people are different and they might need a different path to reach that help. You know what I'm saying, Jellybean? <laughs> but the second part of how Brittany avoids criticism is the more important part. It's very simple. Her content teaches her audience how to not think critically about others. <gasps> so the people that Brittany's... <laughs> Ma'am, what is she saying? What if she said her, her content teaches people not to be, not to think critically of others? Did I, is this not a man problem? Is this not the misogyny of the century? Stop it right. Be for real. Be for real. Be serious. For the love of God, be serious. I love the way you're going off. I love the way you're all going off. Be serious. This whole video is the, I, I love my job. I love my job. This is, is my work not fire, bro? Did he not just confirm in this whole video bubbles and levels? What level is this guy? Definitely a two, bro. Definitely a fucking two. Maybe a one. He sounds kind of useless. Oh my God. The, what? Uh. <laughs> 
Yo, yo, I'm sorry. I'm banging over here. That's crazy, bro. It's exploiting. Her content teaches her audience how to not think critically about others. So the people that Brittany's exploiting are the ones that are the least likely to notice. I can see the issues and I do my best, but people are going to people, Max. I can't live my life and limit myself and how I can impact my community. Uh, keep in mind that Max was almost expelled from his university for sympathizing with school shooters. I have so many things on Max. Max was banned from YouTube. Max did a manifesto about destiny. Max is the one who, who reported Dr. K to the medical board. Fuck Max and his moral high ground. How dare this bitch try to pretend like, oh yes, I have opinions. And allegedly, Max took back what he said about me being a cult leader, allegedly. So tell your little spawn and your submissives to stop fucking making content on me, bro. Hilarious. Because a few people might not interact with me in the way that quote unquote saves them. No judgment, girl. Humans are gonna human. You want me to change okay. my whole fucking life? Because <laughs> people are retarded. And they see how much we're laughing. We were having so much fun. See, me, Dan, and Destiny were having fun. Even in Miami, we had a lot of fun. I mean, they both told me things that made me look at them differently. You know what you told me. You know what you both told me about your lives that made me say, I don't like that about you both. And they went, you're crazy, Brittany. Everyone thinks like this. I was like, I don't think like this. You guys crazy. Both of them told me stuff. Yeah, you too, Dan. They know. They just don't think it should matter. They're just mad about being morally judged. <laughs> but we had fun. Yeah, they're mentally ill and they cling to me. It's life. Grow up. Right? Bubbles. Nothing matters. We're all going to die. It also insinuates a, 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 a type of investment that I have in people that I don't. I don't care. We are nobody. We do our best and sometimes people get hurt. That's life. Grow up. Mm, 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 mm. There is a part of a human mind that for a second lives in all of us that says, yo, this was a Halloween stream and I look good, bro. You know what? Humans are fucking dumb. Oh my God, they're so dumb. They just give their money away. This is me acting. I'm not saying this. I'm acting right now, right? Like I'm I'm not saying this. I'm mimicking. That's why I'm doing the like little play. He's making it sound like that's what I'm saying. He's done this twice now where I am mimicking someone else and he's playing it as if that's what I'm saying. They just give their bodies away. They give their kids away. They're, they're dumb. They're really dumb. I'm going to take advantage of those dumb humans. And then they go about trying to take advantage of those dumb humans. So what have we learned? Brittany Simon has written a very effective handbook for how to exploit a fan base. First, you need a brand. Ideally, this is something that requires no expertise and can't be logically challenged, like something spiritual. So Bryson says Oscar when? <laughs> Uh, discourse is how do people not understand this? I honestly think these people are just like socially inept. Like you're not getting what I'm saying. So you're getting upset. It's, it's literally like talking to a flat earther or a conspiracy theorist or a conservative that thinks all trans people are groomers. It's like they're, they've already made a decision. Okay. You know how many white men have told me, stop talking about white men on your channel, girl, go take it to therapy, girl. If I want to talk about white men being a certain demographic, not all white men, are you happy? Does that fix your feelings? Go to therapy. Stop being mad at me because my videos trigger you. Go to therapy. Can you imagine yelling at me about like, you're just in your emotions. You're not being logical. Stop saying these things. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Go to therapy. Go to therapy or shut the fuck up. So philosophy is about the consciousness, the self. Introspection is about the self. Then you need to understand your market. How are you going to make people relate to you? Lots of people in my audience have been traumatized. I'm like in the neurodivergent queer bubble. And all my life, since I was about eight years old, I had desired to unalive. Yo, I really like my hair right here, bro. These layers be layering myself. After that, you need to find a way to draw them into your community. And you want to talk to somebody who will not judge you, call me. I. It's true. I've had some very interesting callers over the years. Like, they know I won't judge them, but they also know I won't let them like, I will let them know, like, I don't like that behavior. But see, I have, uh, I, yeah, obviously my callers are private. If they want to out themselves, that's their business. But I have just the out, I just, I'm so grateful for my current callers, especially. Like, I appreciate you. And for those wondering, I have no callers at the 250 level as of today, as of right now, that I know of. Unless someone signed up during the stream. I do have people that were grandfathered in on the original calls. The reason I upped my price is because I had such a high demand for my attention. At one point, I was doing so many calls a month, I couldn't breathe. 
And then I realized like, I don't want to do calls for a living. And it took me a long time to come to that point. I want to make content for a living. And if you want to support the content and as a perk, get a call or be on the discord or something great. Some people put your name in the video, but I don't want to do that. It feels like a doxing. It feels weird to put your name in a video, but if you want to do it and join and get like a perk of a call, great but you're ultimately supporting the content. That's why you're giving Patreon any money because I make content, right? TMG and all these people, they make like $100,000 a month on their Patreons allegedly, 75,000 or whatever. That's great. And that's for content. That's what I wanna do. I wanna provide content ultimately, ultimately. So again, when I reference my callers, they are people um, who've been with me for a bit and they're on the lower tier and Shout out to the callers that I have that were at the 250 level and I messaged them and said, hey, I have some openings at the $70 level. If you want to downgrade and keep your hour call, I'll still do calls with you because I don't need to take your money just because. And they did that. It's like I have shown time and time again, I'm trying my hardest to do a business, but I'm also trying my hardest to see where people are at. If you can't afford the 250, I don't want to take it from you. But also, you can't ask me to do a call with you and not pay me for my time. But also, since I had that 70 slot open, I offered it to somebody who had the 250 slot because I I know where their position is. And I said, hey, like, if that's helpful, helpful for you, do that. Because they were going to stay at the 250 level anyways. And I'm like, well, why stay there when you can downgrade and still get your hour call? Because I don't care. Because I'm trying to run a business and live within my values. None of my callers have to out themselves. You don't need to know, but I am grateful to this day that some of those callers have become good friends and you're not gonna make me feel bad about that because these are good fucking people. Not everybody who is a caller gets to be my friend and not everybody who calls me is like a lonely person. A lot of these people have careers and families and responsibilities. They just don't have anyone to talk to about things that their bubble doesn't provide. If you're raised in an environment where there's no queer people around or no people that are into philosophy, then you figure out what community has it. If you don't want to talk to me one-on-one, join the Discord. There's a whole community there. Okay? This video is silly. And it's full of misinformation. And he did it on purpose. And I'm glad we went over it. But watch them weaponize this against me and say... Britney only went over this so her viewers won't see anything suspicious about her behavior. Sir, you had zero receipts. I'm the perfect person to talk to. That's why I think I like doing my calls. It can feel like we're friends. Like a therapist, a sex worker, a priest. And whatever they need. Also, these are old clips and I've upgraded my harm reduction steps since these clips. So I'm doing it all the time. I'm, o- I'm always harm reducing as much as possible. When something goes wrong, I change it so it goes better. You know, period, period. Discord says, I feel like that this was the hardest for Destiny to understand. He couldn't comprehend why Brittany would publicly condemn and criticize his behavior, but still engage with him positively. Yeah, because I think people are complicated. I'm happy to engage with you positively, even when you do things because everyone's on a journey. I never minded that he was on a journey. I minded that he denied he was on a journey and then painted me out to be a bad guy for the same journey that he was on in private. That's what's frustrating. The journey he was projecting onto me is his own issues. It has nothing to do with me. And that's what was frustrating, and that's what was a disappointment. And then the misogyny in the community let them believe that the man having the tantrum was the logical one, and the woman who was staying strong and being, like, comprehensive, like, a very, like, Wow, right now in this one moment, not being very articulate. The woman who was being articulate was the one being emotional. And then he sat there and let that happen. That's what I'm disappointed about. I was disappointed that for a man who says he's so logical, he let everyone believe his tantrums were logical. He's no better than Myron. He's no better than these people who throw tantrums and try to play it up. And that was disappointing. It's not a big deal if he stops now. We can move forward, but you can't. It's not okay to do that. Like, it's really fucked up to do that. And then, of course, who handles the brunt of it? Me and my community. Cool. That's why half of you are blocked. And I will continue to block you. Okay? I will block you. Discord said he also let his community believe he messaged you. Yeah, he never messaged me. He lets his community, that's what he does. See, Destiny doesn't lie. He omits and he lets people believe what they want. So he can say later, I never lied. 
When like Andrew Wilson was asking him, like, did you sleep with Lauren Southern? And he's like, I am not going to answer that. Yeah. So he doesn't have to actually own up to anything he does ever. Right. I don't blame him. He's been very consistent with that. He doesn't talk about who he sleeps with, though. He made it clear we've never done anything, which is good because that's true. Right. Because when I met him, I was already basically engaged. So obviously I would have done that. But like that was the problem. The problem is like he lets people believe things about people that aren't true. And that's what I think is gross. If I make a mistake, I will try to correct it to the best of my ability. I'll even take full videos down, which I've done. And I think that's the difference. Yeah. I need a lover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I get it. I'm a Britney. I'm whatever you need me to be. Now you want to make them feel like they don't belong anywhere else. <sighs> you can start by teaching them your own tribal language. Radically accept. Humans are going to hear Ah, uh, yes. The tribal language of radically accept. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. This is life. Bubbles, 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 bubbles. Radically accept humanity for what it was. Humans are going to human. I am open, but I have boundaries. And it's also a good idea to create Ooh, a social hierarchy. I like this hair. If you don't know my level system, it's called The Levels. I already made an amazing- You can watch the two-hour video on it, girl. Amazing video about it. Yeah, most people are twos and have a two understanding of their consciousness. I'm not bragging when I say I'm a five. And finally, you should shut off your fans' ability to criticize you. But I've definitely gotten messages from the internet saying, I literally have a whole video on my channel called Open to Your Criticism. And you guys literally gave me criticism and we talked about it. But ultimately, like the, the fans or the viewers don't tell me how to make content. I make the content I like and I take you guys into consideration, obviously. Like I love when you request me to cover certain subjects. That's amazing. But like I'm not controlled by my audience, right? I don't have to be. This is a normal struggle with content creators. Like ContraPoint talks about this, how to avoid being controlled by your audience since they pay your bills. It's like, yeah, it's very difficult because people, even audience members, your fans, like Roan, uh, Chapel Roan said, they become the scary ones sometimes. So you got to like have that balance. I think like Brittany's the most evil person who's ever existed. I was like, <laughs> fuck, if I'm evil, what is anyone else? Like you live in one bubble, I live in a bubble. And Bro, hold on. Discord said I saw Destiny say that he tried to give you advice and warn you about moving too fast with your husband and you got weirdly defensive. His words, not mine. Melina and Destiny are sitting with me in Miami. Harry, you want some fucking lore? I'm having fun. I'm hanging out. I'm laughing. And Destiny and Melina are sitting down and they start to give me like marriage advice. And I'm going, oh, oh, no, I don't need marriage advice from you guys, right? Like you're totally heading towards a divorce. Like you guys are literally openly like cheating on each other and having issues and like gaslighting, like don't give me your advice. <laughs> and they were both like, oh my God. And I know they've never dealt with somebody as blunt as me. I don't need two people who are serial cheating on each other and gaslighting each other to give me marriage advice. And they both were shocked. They went like this. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think you were dealing with a 22 year old? I'm a 35 year old fucking woman. Don't come to me with marriage advice when you guys are heading towards a divorce. And yeah, they were offended. I wasn't offended. I was clear. I was clear with my, my boundaries and my openness. I wasn't the one who was offended. I just don't need serial cheaters to be giving me advice. And by the way, how'd that divorce go? Pretty fucking messy, huh? Please my bubble this is how we fuck in your bubble you fuck different girl that's great no judgment but you're judging okay, the way but, i fuck right but, now but and it's annoying me fuck your audience holding you accountable only your morals can no offense to my audience i love you but you can't hold me accountable only my values can so this is out of context you can hold me accountable as like a content creator if i break 2s or rules or youtube can hold me accountable but like you can't hold me accountable to my value. So you can't say, Brittany, I'm a Muslim and I don't think you should eat pork. Or Brittany, I'm a Catholic. I don't think you should do OnlyFans. Like you can't hold me to your values. But if I'm like actually acting out a turn for TOS, if I'm breaking like my own rules, if like, like if you see something about me, for sure, like definitely, you know, but I, that's what I mean by that. You know, girl, if you follow these steps, you've created a perfect exploitative ecosystem. You've made vulnerable people depend on you and you made them feel like you could offer them anything they needed. And you're getting a check from them every month. And the best part- Ah, uh, yes, I'm getting a check from my patrons every month. Mm-hmm.
is your team. Thank you guys. I really do appreciate you. I really do. Things have trained them to accept whatever you do because humans are just going to human. Guys, I've trained you. Mm. Hear that, guys? I've trained you. He basically called you bitch babies, guys. He basically called you bitch babies. But only you. You're the only audience. The audience that's literally 18 plus for sure, bro. But is that all there is? Is there anything else we can learn from the Britney Simon handbook? <laughs> how to read. How to fucking comprehend. How to critically think. That'd be really great. Let's go back and look at our table of contents. <sighs> Does any of this look familiar? Wait. Did I block the wrong Kyle Rittenhouse? Wait, did I block the wrong one? Did I block the wrong... Did I block a real person and not the spammer? Uh-oh. Wait, if I blocked you on YouTube and you're in my Discord and you're not the spammer and you guys just had similar names and my dyslexia got the better of me, like, message me and I will add you back to YouTube. Because I thought you were the... My Discord is saying this name is in the Discord, but I saw you on YouTube and now I'm worried that I blocked a real person and not the troll. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Did I block the real person and not the troll? Or is the troll in my Discord? It's Ryle Kittenhouse that you want to block? Oh, fuck. Did I block the wrong person? I'm so sorry. I will unblock you. Fuck. Now I'm definitely... Wait. They just joined? Wait. Ryle Kittenhouse just joined my Discord? Absolutely not. Nope. Block? No, nope. You should have joined. Why would you join? Why would you join? You know you're a bad person. I saw you on Tom's stream today accusing me of the worst things. You can't come here. Block. But thank you for your $10. Thank you for contributing to the Brittany Simon Fund. Trolls get blocked with no refunds. You, you can't. You can't do this. Think about what you just did. You got on Tom's stream today, said I stole a philosophy system accused me of things that weren't even true. And then you pay $10 to join my Patreon right now. And I don't know if you know this about Patreon. Creators are not obligated to give you refunds. Because you give that money freely, just like with YouTube. Sorry. Thank you for the $10. You cannot try to slander me on the internet and join my Discord and think that'd be funny. I don't care if you give me money. No. You're blocked. What a ridiculous decision to make. Why would you do that? Don't break my consent like that. You blocked him on YouTube, I saw, but I don't know about Discord. Okay, well, he's blocked on Discord now. See how these people are so creepy and then they have the audacity to be like, you're the creepy one. Get out of my Discord, you freak. These people are just degenerate, bro. Oh, yeah, and Discord asked, did that guy do a chargeback? No, YouTube says it's my money and it's mine. This guy, this troll came through my chat and chat tried to warn me and I'm just a boomer, okay? I think good of everybody. This this, this troll came through my, my YouTube and donated like $200 and then tried to charge back or at least he threatened to. It didn't happen. It's my money, thinks though. And then he went on other people's like YouTube channels and was like, Brittany Simon's a grapist and Brittany Simon's pro-murder and Brittany Simon's another boogie. Bro, blocked, okay, blocked. Give me your money, but I'm gonna block you. I've already, I've already set this standard. Can you imagine? Please. Some of you who are studied in psychology might have already guessed Brittany's final lesson. This is how you form a cult. Wow, he just accused me of running a cult? And then he literally had the audacity of saying on Tom's stream, like, it's not exactly, I wasn't exactly accusing her of running a cult. I'm just saying there's red flags. But let's meet. Guys, welcome to the sex cult. Join the Discord. For $10 a month, you can join the sex cult. We talk about philosophy, your mom, and so much more. True. Um, but I embrace the meme because I think it's funny. Now, of course, some people are going to be like, oh my God, Brittany Simon has a cult. And those people were never going to be in my audience anyways. Because you don't know what a cult is, you dummy. Like, if you don't know what a cult is, you were never going to be in my audience.
Wow. Good job, buddy. Welcome to Sad Boys, uh, a podcast. Sad Boys, not right now, but shout out, okay? We did it, boys. We did it, girls. What a silly video, bro. Look, with peace and love, there's a difference between disagreeing with me and actually thinking something so outrageous. Good job on making the most useless video with zero receipts, okay? Just so silly, guys. So silly. But thanks for watching the journey. That's it. There you go. Misogyny, conspiracy theory. These are just silly people. I don't know if they're bad people, but they're definitely just loser. Just loser, okay? Uh, anyways, he had the audacity to say on Tom's stream, like, I'm not accusing her of exactly running a cult, but I feel like there's a lot of red flags. Um, What was that ending? What was that ending? Come on, bro. Come on, grow up. Silly. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Did I miss anything? Did I confuse anything? Do you guys want clarification on anything? I'm here. I'm here. Tell me what it is. Okay, what do you have questions about? What have you been thinking? What didn't I cover that you thought I should cover? Okay, I'm just trying to find that person on my Patreon so I can block them. What What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Or no, did I own him? Okay, better than his mom ever did. That's why he feels abandoned. That's probably why he's a bitch, you know? Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Any, like anyone? Anything? Do we have any problems? Oh, yeah. He accused you of running a cult, but then told people not to send hate. Bro, he literally has a pinned comment on his video where it's like, don't send hate to Brittany Simon or her viewers. Um, After he literally called me a cult leader. And I'm like, thanks. I, I guess. Like, thanks. Ridiculous. <sighs> Discord says, I'm curious, Brittany, it feels like the people who don't like you are mostly operating on ego. Is there day two? Is there day two experiences? What language would you use for someone not operating in the ego? I use the phrase higher self. Well, yeah, to some extent. I mean, just like there's a level of thought thoughtfulness that isn't going into the content. I think there's all kinds of ways to describe like the experience that people are having. Obviously the defensiveness is the first thing you need to check. Like, why are you defensive? You know, why does this make you feel this way? And instead of making a video, maybe you should have asked yourself or dug a little deeper, been more curious. Here's my theory. And this has been my theory for a long time. I just like, don't think people are curious I just don't think people are actually very curious. And I think because of that, hold on, I got to ban this fucking person from my chat who's now claiming like, oh, I'm just, I'm just a Tom, I'm just a troll on Tom's stream. I don't mean anything. I'm actually a Brittany Simon fan. Okay, well, you can take your fandom somewhere else, bro. bro. I think everyone's having an experience with everything. Your higher self, your lower self is just yourself having a different perspective on a situation. So like my trauma self has a different perspective than my higher self has a different perspective. When I haven't slept, I have a different perspective because you're having an embodied experience, a mental experience. Dr. K talks about this, how when you're having a convert, like when you're figuring out like how you think or feel about things, you can think about it completely logically in the brain, within your body. You can have experiences that are only from one perspective. It's like that famous picture the art piece of all these blind men touching an elephant is because they're blind. They're touching one part and then think that's the whole thing. That's the whole picture. The whole picture is the whole picture and not everyone has access to it at all times. So higher self, lower self, whatever it ends up being, it's just like, are you introspective enough to allow your prejudice and bias to take a moment? Because bias and prejudice is the issue. I meet people all the time. I'm not biased. So I'm not prejudiced. Sure. And the sun and the moon are the same thing. You know, it's like, you think bias and prejudice is about good, bad person. Everybody has bias and prejudice, good and bad. But people don't want to take the responsibility on themselves, so they blame something else. I didn't sleep with the 15-year-old girl. She seduced me. Shout out to Cody Ko, who actually slept with Tana when she was 16, not 17. It's Cody Ko's responsibility. In the same way, it's everyone's responsibility in all situations and no one's responsibility. Because, like, 
we're all just living a life that's messy. I believe in rehabilitation. And I think those kinds of situations need therapy, right? But do you think his higher self was having sex with a 16-year-old? Or do you think he probably wasn't thinking very much? And if he was thinking very much, then that would be grounds for a predator. And then the implication is like he should have been thinking he was 25. I don't know. I mean, 25-year-olds all the time who don't wipe their butts. Show me a man and I'll show you boxers with a streak on it. You know, that's why I married a woman. You know? Okay, hold on. I got to block this guy because it's driving me crazy. I got to block this guy with no refund because I'm an asshole. Bye. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Mayu says, how does this video make you feel personally? Well, at first it was, it was kind of a lot of stimulation. Like in some ways I'm not built for fame. I don't really like it. You know how much I don't seek out fame. I don't really like this much attention or being perceived. Um, but then when I watched the video, I was like, oh, not only does he make me sound good, but he also just lied about me. So it's like, oh, silly. But I was pretty stressed at first because I was like, what is this? Because I just think I'd like to think that I make better content than this, that even though I'm very critical on people, I really try to be better. Also, shout out to Film Cooper, whose name I literally thought was Film because I'm stupid and I thought that was a cool name. And also shout out to his viewers that told me he's actually a really nice guy. I'll be open to it. He was just very enthusiastical about the grooming allegation. So shout out to Film Cooper. You know, I'll try moving forward not to be so fucking harsh. But also the idea that I'm too harsh and these guys aren't. You literally made a whole video saying I'm a cult leader, bro. I don't make videos calling people groomers unless I have a lot more evidence. I certainly don't make videos calling people cult leaders. Like, God, I try at least to have some like line in the sand. And the fact that people have the like the audacity to step on, like, it's just silly, bro. So I guess how do I feel about it? Now I, I think, I mean, I think it's kind of funny now. But at first I was like, whoa, why would you say that? Because like, I'm a person, I have hurt feelings. Uh, but then I realized, you know, it's a stupid video. So it's kind of funny. So that's why we did the stream. Because it became this thing that always ends up being a nothing burger. All these people always end up making a nothing burger. You know, but I, I, I was pretty stressed this weekend. Sure. <sighs> <clears throat> Lauren says we don't need to attack or defend Destiny for being good or bad. That's called missing the point. And like, we don't. That's the thing is like Destiny is just traumatized. The only thing is like it's hard to see men make misogynistic and ableist jokes towards women that they themselves are suffering from. Like, you're obviously the one projecting, but women are supposed to do the emotional labor for you, which is why it's difficult with, like, a destiny. Because he gets away with being the logical one the same way Myron does because of the way they brand and their audience, like, actually pedestals them. So that's the irony, right? I do think a lot of female creators in a lot of spaces are trying much harder than the men in these spaces to have healthier relationships with their audiences. And I think we suffer for it more look, we're not perfect and we're going to make mistakes and life is going to be so messy. But I do think because the men can admit they have problems, the men can admit they're in their feelings, the men can't admit things without looking weak. It just, you know what I mean? They, they end up projecting onto the women and the women have to do the emotional labor. Luna, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. I so appreciate it. Let's go, guys, gifted memberships. Do you guys remember when I was on that panel with Merck? And that girl came in who I'm good with now, but that girl came in and she's like, you're making this space worse for women. I don't want to be in the space. Kyla just made a video saying that she's super in the boy bubble and there's a lot of confusion about whether men respect her or just think she's pretty. It's because you're in the boy bubble. Sounds stressful, girl. I wish you the best. It's because you're in a boy bubble. Like, that's why I have a female audience. That's why I surround myself with as many women or men who are very comfortable with themselves. Because, yeah, when you're in those boy bubbles, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of, like, in very specific boy bubbles, obviously, right? Like, not the gay boy bubble, but 
there is something to that. Amara says, do you think it's because you're a commentator? That's not on his side of the internet. So that makes the enemy that makes uh, the enemy to take down. So this is YouTuber team sports. Maybe, you know, I was at Disneyland. I was in the bathroom. I came out to wash my hands and a girl came up to me and said, are you Brittany Simon? And I said, yes, I am. And this happened just before I came here to Europe. So a little over a year and a half ago. And she said something to the effect. Thank you for being in the commentary to space because not a lot of, not a lot of women are there. And you're one of the only women that are actually like representing basically like women in this space. And I hold on to that all the time because it is rough being one of the only girls in the space who's really saying like, hey, I think you're being misogynistic. And everyone's like, no, don't do that. You're making girls look bad. There was another woman who was on Wix panel and was like, all these women are obsessed with the body keeps the score. I bet Brittany Simon loves that book. That's misandry or mis that's, a, that's misogyny. That's internalized misogyny. Yes, there are some people that get very culty about the body keeps the score. It's also just a good book. And if you don't like it, you don't have to, but it's just a book. So for a woman to get into the space on these panels and be like, I bet Brittany Simon has crystals and I bet she likes the body keeps the score. I get it, girl. We're all on a journey. You know, we're all on a journey. Look, when Destiny first burned the bridge with me, lots of women DM'd me, lots of YouTubers, lots of people. And they were like, don't let them gaslight you. You obviously are like right. And I was like, I think I'm right, but I can't handle this pressure. And it took me a very long time to be able to talk about it because I just didn't understand what was happening. And now that it's clear, now that I go back and watch the content, it was disappointing to myself that I couldn't have been that girl that would have been really great for the female audience that feels so beat up in this space. But to be honest with you, like, I also can't be your champion because I'm a person too and I, my feelings get hurt and I'm confused about why people would say things that aren't true or why he would do those things or why he would do that. But also it makes sense because when you're a misogynist, okay, when you're an ableist, when you aren't honest with your life, it's easy to feel defensive when someone says something so blatantly true and you just go, you're fat, you're stupid, you're a girl. Okay. So I'm getting better at it. You know, this is good practice for me. And look, I always come out on top when I review this content. I literally always show that I'm right. And when I'm wrong, I admit it and I retract statements and I upgrade, you know, I update videos. And that's the one thing I have going for me is that I swear to God, if I am wrong, I will make a correction. But I can't be wrong because you think I am. And that's really important. My head in real life on bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 